Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome everybody. My name is Yanni Bomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable? A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Okay, so let's send the challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You are looking how it can be the most painful. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. As a kid, I spent hours every day reading about chess. About openings, chess history, and games played between world champions, grandmasters, all of them. My apps make learning much easier. Everything I know, you can find in my apps. Magnus Trainer, Tactics Frenzy, and Play Magnus. You can learn the basic rules of chess, train with our 400 lessons, and even play against my digital self. Download and try my apps for free.
John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hi there, it's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or me chess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, thick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... But it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just... Come on, literally, why not? Alright, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. Alright? Jesus Christ. Chessen, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world. With hundreds of titles, ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. The Black King is definitely in trouble. Did you see checkmate here? Let's start with the most forcing move, Queen F8. Now, only move, King H5. Full credit if you got the next one. Fantastic move. The sacrifice clears the key squares. If H takes, Queen H8 is mate. So King takes is the more difficult line. Always trim the branches that are shorter first. Queen F6 check, followed by Queen G5 with an elegant checkmate. is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 knight of. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. No, it's just to move.
Hello and welcome everyone. This is day six of the 44th Olympiad in Chennai, India and importantly, final day before the rest day, which is excellent news for everyone. I'm Peter Svidler, with me is Peter Leko and we'll be continuing our coverage of this very exciting tournament with uh, today marking the, the watershed. This will be midway through the round. They will pass, you know, the, 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 the midway of the tournament will be around the time control today, somewhere around two and a half hours in. So uh, very important uh, day today. And uh, clearly there's a match of the round, but still, what, what is catching your eye, Peter? Yeah, hello, Peter. Hello, everyone. Well, so many things. Yeah, we, the, the action is heating up. We have, of course, uh, the young Indian team versus Armenia, a very, very important clash. I mean, you mentioned that tomorrow is a rest day and this is always a very special run because whoever loses has to carry all the negative emotions uh, with, with him on the rest day. It's, uh, it's a very, very unpleasant uh, situation to, to lose before a rest day. So <clears throat> I'm expecting here an incredible clash. The, these are the only two teams who have won all their matches so far. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the Indian youngsters had been crushing the field. However, yesterday, Prague has lost his very, very first game. And uh, we also see that he does not play today. Yeah, and uh, this perhaps is a nice, nice segue for us to introduce a kind of a new concept we are trying out today, where we randomly assign each other a team to captain. And we talk from, from that perspective. I've never re actually captained anything in my life so there will be it will be an interesting an interesting new experience so for one match of the day we chose obviously uh peter with his connection to to armenia he chose he chose armenia for his team and then i will be quote unquote captaining the uh the indian youngsters and as a captain of the indian youngsters i want to say you know clearly you know you lose one game you're out Prague will never play again uh you know, no, no forgiveness. We are very strict here. Uh, you, you, you can't. I mean, somebody might end up having to give a simul around run eleven because we will be just. You know, if they continue losing, you know, we might run out of players in this team. But we have very strict rules, and uh, uh, as you can see, uh, Prague lost yesterday, and. Uh, uh, well, no then, la, then let me counter it. As, as an Armenian captain, I, I feel like, you know, despite Plug loss yesterday, I still believed and I told my team that I'm pretty sure that Plug going to play tomorrow. I mean, the, on the, today in the sixth mm -hmm. round because he lost with the black pieces yeah. and, and I want to give him the white to, to, to bounce back. Yeah, I mean, I'm expecting the, the Indian captain to give him white and to bounce back. I know that he's very dangerous. So I, I was telling my team that, yes, you know, in, in the preparation at night, we have to focus on, on Prague's presence. Of course, this is, this is then the trick next morning. Yeah. When suddenly mm -hmm. I wake up and I see Prague not being on the, in the team composition, then maybe I feel a bit guilty that I was putting so much, uh, uh, feeling about this, that, that Prague will continue. Uh, however, Adiban, now we have to deal with Adiban because yesterday Adiban has won with, with the white pieces and he's very dangerous. So, I'm telling Tessa Akiania that please pay attention because you have to stop his initiative. You have to stop his initiative, try to get a strategical long game, and then we take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. And I was, of course, kidding, uh, kidding about the, the, the benching of people who lost. I'm, I'm actually, as somebody who is not an actual captain of this Indian team, I'm a little bit surprised he is not playing because I think giving him white and giving him a chance to bounce back uh, straight away would have been... Uh, a very natural thing to do, but obviously it's not just the captain's decision. Let's say if Prague feels kind of well, bad about not just having lost the game, but like doesn't feel like he's playing at his best and doesn't really feel that uh, generally his form justifies him playing today. Of course, you give uh, you give him a rest day and you tell him, you know, it's actually not one rest day, but two. Uh, he's not playing today and he will have an additional day tomorrow. So there is plenty of time for him to recover and plenty of time for him to uh, to get back into the saddle. But yeah, uh, I honestly, I was a bit surprised. I looked through the boards in the morning when I uh, we knew Armenia will be playing India too. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was a, not a shock as such, but I was 
somewhat surprised that they chose to go with this. And I think what Peter mentioned there about Adiban playing white was a large reason for why Prague is not playing because, uh, I mean, Adiban is, uh, is a very dangerous player with any color, but he is, I think, still uh, clearly uh, a much bigger threat when he has uh, when he has the white pieces because he has a very very fighting repertoire, and uh, they're clearly maximizing uh, you know the chance for uh, for him being uh, being a striking force uh, in, in this contest. Um, so if we if we kind of look at this as a as an overview, India has white in in two games in this match. Kukesh is uh, is white uh, against Gabi. Uh, Kukesh so far is. Uh, I've seen some tweets. It's actually not just them, of course, but the two most prominent people who are on five out of five are Gukesh and Abdusatorov so far. Uh, and he's been playing really, really well. He won a very important game with Black against Shirov yesterday. So as a captain of this team, as a kind of a fake captain of this team, I'm very happy about him having white against Gabi. Uh, Gabriel Sargisian is a very strong player, uh, but uh, Gukesh right now seems to be on a like really on a roll, playing really well, playing very confidently. Uh, is I think up to twenty seven fourteen on the live list. The live list, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think I saw somewhere that he is currently already India's number three chess player on the live list, overtaking I guess Vidit. Uh, so yeah, he is in he is in tremendous shape, playing playing well and. Uh, like I'm hopeful about this board, and I think Adiban with White uh, against Terasakan is uh, also an interesting board for us. Obviously, with the white pieces, and we have two solid players on uh, on black boards who I think, as usual, will be trying to equalize and then look how things stand. Yeah, that's uh, that's perfectly understandable. Well, for for me, just to give a very easy hint to, to Gabi, yeah, Gukesh is on fire, five out of five. Well, just stop him. I mean, that is that is a very, very clear target to to play very classical. I have noticed that Gukesh is playing d4, so I'm expecting some kind of a opening debate, maybe a Ragozi and maybe Queen's Gambit uh, declined. I mean, I think Gabi is an expert in, in both of this. <clears throat> it will be very interesting to see if, if Team India will be able to come up with some uh, real opening surprises. Otherwise, I really believe that, that Gabi, with his experience, should be able to neutralize Gukesh. On board two, I'm hoping about Rant Melkumian because yesterday he won a very important game against Luke McShane. He, he is playing very, very convincingly. And Niha Sarin is an incredible fighter. However, he doesn't have a very, very uh, clear repertoire with the black pieces. He likes to shuffle, he likes to surprise the opponent. And in this case, I feel like Malcolm Yan, who has been working so much with Levon Aronian uh, back in the days, has a very, very good repertoire. And uh, he might be the right person to take on, on Nihal. And we have liftoff. Yeah, and we have moves. So... In terms of openings, uh, this idea about captaining teams has only really, Peter mentioned it like 10, 10 minutes before the show, so I couldn't do any proper research on like what opening advice I would give to people. Uh, but uh, the Indian kids in particular, like I feel very, very nice about this because it looks like uh, for both of, for most of these kids, at least my impression is that, that they, you know, they sleep, they eat, and then they do chess related stuff. Uh, so I would expect most of them, despite being very, very young, to actually be able to play almost anything they want. Uh, so, you know, the opening phase doesn't really uh, worry me unduly, despite, you know, all the experience the Armenian team has. And as you said, <clears throat> yeah, that you want to be very, very solid in, uh, in the two blackboards. And there we go. Nihal Sarin after c4 goes e6, knight c3, d5, so indicates a very, very solid, probably queen's gambit. I'm expecting, of course, now from white side to play d4. Ah, and no, he goes for this c5, surprising kind yeah, the, of... The, the Tarash, and potentially maybe even this... Uh, this uh, Pawn sacrifice. Ashara gaining line, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how, uh, how that uh, uh, goes on. Exactly, and, and Sadwani goes for... For the Berlin, I mean, I don't, 
Okay, I played with him in 2019 and he he played the Karokan. I didn't know what to expect back then and since then I have seen him playing the Petrov and I have seen him playing something. I feel like he has done incredible amount of of work because recently he is uh, having a very nice repertoire. This is I, what I noticed because he plays the Ragozin which I'm also kind of always following. It's it's my opening and I see that he's very well prepared. Yeah, uh I'm not really in love with the idea of having the watch a Berlin, but luckily for us this is not a round robin so we can always just kind of pretend this board four doesn't exist or I could just let Peter speak about it for 25 minutes and without ever <laughs> repeating himself because you know one of us actually knows something about that opening and you know can be trusted to provide reliable information just not me. And uh on board one uh Things are coming, you know, compared to some other boards, this is kind of a very slow development. I think Gukesh is uh, one of those people who actually thinks about move one. I've noticed actually some of the Indian players uh, doing this habitually, like taking a pause before making the first move, which clearly, I mean, he knows what he's going to play, but it's probably like an additional minute to uh, get properly collected. Uh, and uh, uh, just to make sure that you're in the right frame of mind to play a very important game. Uh, we'll yeah, see. and also here there is a lot of mind games going on, yeah, because after the move d4, Gabi actually opted for d5. I was telling you that I'm expecting some, some Ragozi in, some Queen's Gambit declined. Does he really want maybe to, to play e6, knight c3, bishop e7? I don't know exactly why. Yeah, that's what, that's what the old school Armenians would do, right? Like... Rafi, yeah, Vaganyan, yeah, yeah, Arshak. Yeah, all the all the the, the people like I I was growing up, uh, you know, watching watching and reading about those those guys. They all played the, the, the very very old school QGD. But these days, I mean, it still exists, but it's done much less often. Uh we'll see, we'll see, and uh, we we don't probably don't really want to uh, just talk about you know opening choices on move two so much in depth because obviously this can take this can take forever so let's take a look at uh, another very important match which is uh india one or india a whichever way you want to call it playing uh against uh uzbekistan uzbekistan nine out of ten uh, match points so far and the draw they made they made against the pre-tournament favorites uh the united states and uh, they were basically winning in that match they were one final precision uh precise <coughs> sorry precise decision in the end game uh on board four between uh Vahidov and sam shankland they were one move away there uh from from winning uh two and a half one and a half uh so yeah hugely important uh, hugely impressive performance by by the youngsters so far uh, just a very very quick update you have been talking about the berlin it feels like even the technique does not, you know, tolerate too much because I see that we have yeah. some PGN, PGN error. I also have kind of the, the answer for it because all these kind of things, probably the players have blitzed out too quickly and uh, maybe the board was suddenly, so we, we might well, need I, some time to, to clarify. Yeah, it will, it will adjust itself. But I, I'm guessing what happened here is, and we've, we've also had confirmation of sorts uh, uh, from Satiris on this topic, is they're using the very, very sensitive boards for this tournament. And if uh, Robert Ovanesian took on d8, and while taking on d8, like briefly touched any square on the d file, it registers as like queen d4. And then uh, Raunak played king e8 takes d8, and with white not taking the queen on d8 for the board, the board doesn't think queen takes d8 has been played. And then king takes d8 is completely impossible. <laughs> yes. So the board is just completely, uh, completely screwed by that point and, and, and can't really process what's going on. We've seen quite a bit of this during this tournament, but it does get resolved. Maybe just not immediately, but it does get, uh, it does get resolved. Yeah, I just wanted to to update our, our viewers with this, that yeah, there might be some technical issue at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are having a very, very exciting and very sharp uh, line in the Abdul Sattel of Hare Krishna game. To be yeah, honest, this one is... yes, sorry, I just wanted to say that whenever the bishop goes to, to H4 too quickly, I'm, you know, slightly worried for white. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so happy with the black pieces. Uh, so I'm maybe not the right guy to, to talk about white's chances here. I mean, that was always my impression as well. Like, 
as a kid growing up, I thought like you just can't do this, right? In particular, when Black hasn't castled yet even, uh, because like G5 will come and then something will happen on the king side and you will get uh, you will get uh, under a very, very crushing attack. And the sacrifices on G5, of course, only work when there is a king on G8. Uh, so, uh, but practice shows, and I've, I've grown to accept it, you know, regrettably and kind of with, with, with sadness in my heart, I've grown to accept that this is very playable for white. And in fact, uh, if white knows what they're doing, uh, it's very challenging for black to play these types of positions because your attack on the king side is nowhere near as fast as I always thought it should be. And white starts things in the center quite quickly. Uh, so let's say if you play g5, I mean, after bishop a7, I think the temptation to play knight a3 has to be quite strong. So let's just, for for example, put knight a3 on the board. You play g5, white goes bishop g3. And the issue is, if you play h5, I think it's pretty much always quite nicely met by h2, h4 in these types of positions, and your attack kind of uh, stops. So they often actually try doing very slow looking things like maybe knight h7, knight f8, knight g6, just to prepare to play h6, h5 and not to have to meet uh, the move h2, h4 in response. And when you see black spending like three tempi on this, you can start understanding why, uh, why it's not, you know, as, as obvious that white will get mated on the king side here because white gets a lot of time to do something in the center. Um, but I think Harry has been playing these systems for a while and you just expect, you know, the kids of which Nodger Beck is one of the prime, prime uh, examples right now, you know, the top kids, they just know everything or so it seems to me. They just seem to have a very, very informed opinion about most opening questions of the day. Yeah, however, here there is a very interesting small detail that how they reach to this position. <clears throat> it's not the most traditional way, yeah. So bishop c4, bishop c5, dc, knight f6. Ah, yeah. He just went bishop g5 here. Exactly, yeah. Before black committed his pawn to a6 or to a5. That is actually, yeah, that is actually quite surprising. And and also it's a telling thing because, I mean, the, the Harry's reply here, because one part of the equation here is that if you play bishop g5 before black even played d7, d6, there is at least an option of just returning with the bishop to e7 and saying, this is no longer a pin, I will just trade those bishops whenever I want by playing knight h5 or knight h7, something you know later in the game, the bishops will get traded. And I am actually with black quite happy to have those two bishops off the board. But Harry says, no, I, I mean, this is some kind of a, interesting new move order, but I'm not going to spend any time, you know, trying to figure out what the difference is. I will just play my normal moves and it's up to you to show me why you think this is any good. Yeah, and, and Harry played with a5, cc bishop a7, a move order which I absolutely believe that it signals a lot of confidence because, as you said, now the most tempting option is like knight a3 from white side and we see that Nodirbeck has slowed down because if if you play the move bishop g5 so early, then basically you you have to be ready for the a6 setup and you have to be ready for the a5 setup. Yeah, there are certain people maybe who would consider going bishop g5 once they uh, I like to play bishop g5 against a6 setup or I like to play bishop g5 against a5 setup. Yeah, that's how I kind of have it in my mind. But that black had a choice and Harry immediately opted without even any hesitation for. A5, bishop a7, I think this is the reason why Abdul Satorov has slowed down. Yeah. Uh, and the choice for white, I guess, is still between knight a3, perhaps rook e1 or knight bd2. There's really not very much else you can play in this. No, position. actually, he opted for a4. Wow. Wow. Well, okay. I, I mean, that would be like my fourth choice simply because you are kind of running out of moves by that point. But it's a bit surprising because. I'm I'm not sure that you necessarily need this later in the game. My biggest my biggest question about a4 is uh, uh, with the black pawn on a5. I'm I'm not sure what we're achieving, and what we're definitely not achieving is you know making some kind of a forceful move, and not perhaps wasting a tempo. I mean it's a very harsh thing to say about this move. It's clearly not a waste, and he clearly has some idea. But comparing it to let's say to to rookie one or knight a3. 
it seems much less necessary for future play to have this pawn on a4. Black weren't really threatening to play b5 or weren't really threatening to play a5, a4, I don't think. So yeah, I'm not sure why. why well, I, I think the explanation can be that he tries to be as flexible as possible. Yeah, he's still waiting that, please show me you're going to cancel short or you're going to go for these g5 ideas. And yeah. then depending mm -hmm. on the situation, he did not want to commit his knight yet from b1. Uh, and maybe for some reason, he did not want to move his look yet from F1 as well. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just trying to make sense of, of all yeah, of it. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's a it's a waiting move more than anything else. But specifically in the Bishop G5 lines, I, I don't know how much waiting you can do. You know, <laughs> I'm a bit worried that you, you, you might regret having spent a, a full tempo on something that does pretty much nothing. Yeah, and you have already mentioned, yeah, that basically one of your concerns with Black is that all this plan, which is very, very nice strategically, costs three, three tempies. Yeah. But but now White has given one already back, yeah? Yeah, we've 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 gotten one back, yeah. And and we can definitely maybe consider once again going for something like this. We'll see. Let's briefly show the other yeah. three boards in this match and then uh, move somewhere else. Um this is a nice looking Sicilian for Vigit or Sicilian, uh, King's Indian, sorry, I don't know why I said uh, Sicilian. Um, kind of a, a offbeat choice by uh, uh, Yaku, Yaku Boy. If they have two very strong Nodjebeks on the same team, so you have to uh, be more. Yeah, and specific. it's like knight a6 and bishop g4 together. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, seen those are. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how well they go together, but um, once again, I mean, he's on one thirty-five on the clock, so <laughs> he knows. He knows it's not. It's not the position he's never seen before. Clearly. It still looks kind of nice. He went rook e8 here. We did all play f3. And uh, the big question in these types of positions is where do you take your counterplay from? Apart from the plan of playing c6 and d5, which I think white is reasonably well prepared for, I don't quite know where you're supposed to look for, for counterplay. It, the position is solid, but white, you know, like if white stabilizes, if white gets to play like a rook a1, queen d2, Perhaps, I don't know, b3 and then move the knight from d4 somewhere. Put some pressure on the d6 pawn. Clearly, white is at least a little bit better. Uh, but considering the fact that all of this has been blitzed out by uh, Yakuboyev, he, he must have uh, some kind of an idea. Uh, yeah, I also... think in this, this moment we should also mention that uh, maybe it's also showing a lot of respect for Vidit's uh, opening skills because we know that Vidit is always very, very well prepared. And maybe Yakuboev is trying to get him out of book at all costs as quickly as possible, trying to play some, some uh, very special move order. On the other hand, as an opening specialist myself, I can tell you that I'm very, very happy when uh, opponents are surprising me with some, something slightly dubious. Because usually if you are good at openings, it means also that you know exactly that um, no matter how much you know, if opponent plays well, there is no advantage, right? And then, mm -hmm. and then the opponent plays something like this, and then your heart is, all right, thank you very much. I know how to play chess. I don't have any opening problems. The only, only thing that you, you mentioned, yeah, that Black is blitzing all these ideas out, and you have to deal with this d6, d5 option. Mm -hmm. But I think we can play rook a d1 for now, and I don't think d6, d5 will work straight away, or at least it has to be very carefully cal calculated, because like takes, takes, knight db5 or knight b3, I don't know which one is stronger. Exactly, yeah. And uh, like if, if this backfires, you just end up losing the d5 pawn for not very much, and that's not ideal, but of course the game maybe continues. Maybe you play like queen a5 here, and you claim that everything is somehow still under control. But without knowing exactly what you're doing, this is quite quite risky yeah definitely yeah <laughs> on board three we have uh, a kind of a a little bit of a sad development for me because uh, uh, queens are about to I mean not necessarily you can definitely play bishop p3 here if you want but seems like maybe the queens will come off and white is always a little bit better in these types of positions but it's not the most exciting position in the world so far yeah, and it's a rock solid system from Black. Yeah, it's the Karokan with Knight F6. Again, we see that so many players, modern players, are playing this because it, it brings all these double H positions. However, yeah, Bishop C4 and Bishop D6, Queen E2 check is a very, very solid choice. Basically, when you have a lot of respect for this system and you feel like, all right, I don't want to know too much because 
I did not expect it. And uh, my opponent is probably a big expert and he has tons of ideas in the main lines. Then this is a very, very nice exit from white side that, okay, after queen e7, maybe I'm not, not much better and maybe I'm not even better at all. But I'm the, I'm the one who is having the, the pawn majority on the queen side. And I definitely not going to get mated on the king side with, with those typical counterplays. Mm -hmm. So a practical choice. And board four, yeah, this is a line that we have been seeing quite a lot in uh, the Matt Water Champions chess tour. Do that what yeah, but, uh, on white side. I, I remember when I saw it for the first time and I thought, uh, you know, imagine trying to explain this to somebody. <laughs> uh, I mean, not even necessarily like from the 19th century, but even like... I, a kind of a scenario I can actually sort of imagine, imagine happening to myself. Like, I, I come to one of the sessions of the Batvinik school, and I'm sure, you know, they invite me to the demonstration board to show some of my games, and I say, okay, here I played bishop b5, check, knight d7, bishop a4. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I probably just kind of get sent home without ever getting the chance to show the rest of the game. <laughs> I perfectly understand, yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's risky, you know? Uh, it, it's, it's very risky to show this to, to, to old school players, but there's definitely a point here. Yeah, the, the point is basically that you are trying to, to wait for a6, then you're going to go c4, yeah? Because if you start with, with c4, then black will actually never include the move a6. Yeah, that's one of the, the tricks. Mm -hmm. Another justification is that after bishop a4, knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4, actually you are not supposed to protect this pawn. You can just castle. And, and taking the poison pawn is just uh, terrible because after knight e4, something like rook e1, knight goes back d4. Yeah, this is risky. Yeah, this Actually, is risky. white is mostly crushing. Yeah, you, you have to be very, very careful to actually get out of the opening here because you're very undeveloped and white has a lot of very dangerous jumps. Uh, but yeah, this this pawn generally doesn't get taken, and uh, yeah, Vahirov played the six. Slightly surprising to me that White opted to play g three here because I think the expected move in this position is still rook e one because I think your plan generally is to play uh, c four and then d four, uh, and by playing g three, you're I mean maybe you will still get to play d four later in the game, but I think ideal scenario is you do it in one tempo. Yeah, uh, Peter, I can tell you that welcome to this position. When, when in the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour, I noticed that people started to play DC. I was also like, what? I mean, how on yeah. earth is DC a move here? But yeah, this is how chess develops. And, uh, and yeah, I, I started to, okay, if they play DC, they should know what they are doing. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yes. This is still sort of normal, but uh, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. But it's a kind of a slow, uh, slow way of, of playing these type of, types of positions. I'm guessing maybe we are kind of, we're shifting away from the idea of pushing d4 and trying to get some kind of a Maritza setup. Maybe we're playing slower with like a3 and b4 perhaps, or something along those lines. Uh, we'll see. It's a, it's a fun position to discuss. And uh, the next match on our menu is uh, the US are playing uh, uh, against Iran uh, on board one Fabi. And they, Fabi just plays every game. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's really not, not been doing well. He lost a bunch of rating already. He is currently on uh, one and a half out of four, three draws, and he lost that game to uh, Nojebek uh, uh, Abdul Satorov. But yeah, you, you can't really, uh, you know, force Fabi not to be prepared for everything. And he is showing once again just uh, how ready he is to play all the sharpest positions. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, I, I really feel like because uh, I'm, I'm feeling very sorry for, for Fabi and everything that happened basically in the last uh, one and a half well, basically almost last months because he started the candidates wonderfully and he was like mm -hmm. 2790 before the event. And uh, after the first part of the event, he was plus three. Yeah, I mean, it looked like he will be the main uh, <clears throat> main concurrent of, of Jan fighting for the first place. And suddenly, suddenly, yeah, that came yeah, this, this terrible collapse, uh, terrible yeah. meltdown, which was clearly connected with nerves. Yeah, and with the clear intention that Fabi was thinking that only... Uh, the first place counts in the tournament and he was burning bridges and he was uh, just going, I mean, suiciding himself many, many times uh, in order to fight for, for the maximum. And then 
afterwards, you know, the, hearing that that Magnus actually gave up on mm -hmm. the idea of defending the world championship title, I think this is uh, the the real loser is is Fabiano because if he would have known for sure, guaranteed that second place is a match. After the plus three and the performance he has done in the first half of the tournament, I'm pretty sure that he could have just very easily, really very easily guarantee his second place. So I'm, I'm feeling very, very sorry for him. Yeah, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a fair argument. You never know exactly how it goes. I mean, he was playing against the very, very strong players. And uh, also, I think it's not really in his nature not to try. I think he is one of the most ambitious, like, quiet, maybe not even quietly, just straight up most ambitious players in world chess. Uh, so I don't think it's very easy for him to just uh, just say, okay, I'm I'm now you know putting the brakes on and kind of not even playing the second half properly. But of course, the equation changes dramatically if he thinks seriously that uh, second place is likely uh, going to be enough for, for for a title match. And I think once again, I I don't I, I worry I will be misquoting the chickens. But I think the chickens on, on the podcast uh, were, were saying that during the Bundesliga weekend, one, one of the Bundesliga weekends, uh, the Baden team had a long discussion on that topic before Magnus announced his decision. And I think uh, Fabi was very much of the opinion, even after the candidates finished, that Magnus will definitely play. So it clearly, from what I understand, he just felt that there is no way there is no way second place is anything uh, in the grand scheme of things. And uh, yeah, he, he went absolutely all in in the second half and it uh, very much backfired. Yes, and, and here he is uh, not, not playing well so far, or at least the result is, is not good. But he is doing everything for his team because many times yeah. uh, on board one, it's not necessary for, for a team that you perform brilliantly and yeah? that just your presence and your readiness to play all games under any conditions give, you, give your team a big boost. Yeah? This is uh, very, very important. They understand that they can rely on you. You are ready. And I'm pretty sure that it's just a matter of time till Fabi will get, get going. And if he starts to win his first game, then I think another one comes much, much more easier. Yeah, he, he. It's now kind of very, very important for him to actually get a good game under his belt, and and then we can expect to a, a return to good form. And just briefly, we don't have to go through the entire history of Bishop Three Nidorf, but this is a very topical line. Has been a very topical line for uh, for quite some time. I think this is what this is the line that that happened in the uh, Nipomnishi Firoja match uh, game, right? But Jan, yes. went 90, Jan went 92 here, which is, I, I still think 92 is the main move in this position. But G takes F6 is, uh, has been known for a while to be a very valid uh, alternative. And then you almost by force get exactly the position that they're playing right now. Knight A5 is very important here, otherwise the idea makes no sense. But this way you get to trade that knight for the bishop on A7. Black can't really stop it, so they, they play something like what uh, Parham did. Uh, then you get the trade, you play queen a5. And uh, the move rook g1 here is not really an attacking move as such. This rook very often then goes to g2 and then goes to d2. It's much more uh, a, a move in preparation for, you know, connecting your pieces for, for the future. You're just doing it. I mean, it's useful on the g-file, but very, very often it goes to g2 in, uh, in the future. Rook c8, king b1 also played. Yeah, and, and Parham clearly surprised by this choice yeah i also wondered at how much uh neither of did parham play i mean i don't really recall him as a big expert and i wonder that maybe he was part of ali reza's team preparing for the candidates because ali possibly, reza has yeah. played a lot of night and also this specific variation possibly yeah it's uh, uh it would stand to reason that uh they could have done some work some work prior to the candidates. The pawn on c2 looks like it's hanging, but I'm guessing if you take on c2 here, bishop takes a6 is just very strong. So it doesn't look very attractive to, to take it since you just start losing a lot of time. And also the pawn on a6 is quite important for all the future end games and so on. Um, I've looked at this position at some point, but not recently. I, it felt to me that the engines, when I was looking at it, seemed to suggest that white is a bit better, but it's nothing dramatic. But 
uh, you know, at Fabi's level, this is not the kind of a conclusion that 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 you want. You want a, a kind of a deeper understanding of the, the dynamics here. In more general terms, if Black achieves the D six D five break, as is often, I think, the case in in all kinds of Nidorfs, Black, I think, will immediately stand very well. But White is quite clearly going to try not to allow that at all. Currently, there is not enough control over the d5 square to do it. We'll see. Yeah, very intriguing position. I, I also have the same thoughts like some 10 years ago, I definitely looked at this. It was very fashionable around 2011, 12 or something like this. But, but yeah, lately, you just don't have time for everything. We also have a very, very interesting and exciting position in Tabataba against Levon Aronian, because this is an uncompromising fight from white side. Mm -hmm. C4, knight f6, g3, c5, bishop g2, knight c6, knight fc, d5. I'm gu guessing that both of us are playing this from the black side. G6. Yeah, I played a decent amount of this. Yeah. And, and basically, h4 is the, the biggest challenge, yeah? Yeah. Uh, to the whole system. Yeah, I, I think uh, my idea has been to just play h6 here. When, when I, I definitely had some serious work done on this prior to uh, the London and then the Hunter candidates. And uh, h6 is playable, but bishop g7, of course, if you can play bishop g7, you, of course, want to continue developing without spending any time on... Unless, I remember you had the game against Rajabov. Yeah, that was, yeah? A, that, that was me actually for once showing some very, very good preparation, yeah. And, yes, uh, yes, that, uh, that's what I recall. Yeah, the, and uh, Bishop G7 was the move that I, I was uh, advocating in many, many of my games. Uh, first against uh, Jan in, in some sport accord blitz, and, uh, and then later against MVL in uh, Bilbao European Club Cup 2014. H5, yeah. Bishop F5. Yeah, this is the key move of the position. Yeah, that you does allow H6 or you do allow all this Queen B3 business and so on. But but those lines are quite good for black, all the force lines. And yeah, recently I think this h6 had been the latest development. h6, bishop f6, castles. Yeah. They reached all of this quite quickly, and knight h2 was also played quite quickly. And uh, knight b6, I think, is the first move that Levon uh, spent any serious time on. Uh, I think the choice here is between knight b6 and knight c7. Uh, you, you do want to. Uh, move that knight away from from threats, but yeah, choosing between those two squares is difficult. You never know exactly which one is. Well, in this particular, I actually like this knight b6, yeah, because maybe this c5 c. Now that the knight moved away, yeah, from the center, this mm -hmm. c5 c4 move might be important at some point. Yeah, for instance, even g2 g3, I think, can be met by c5 c4. This you can consider playing c5 c4 here and just trying to open up the the center and the queen side. Uh, for your pieces. Yeah, very, a very intricate position with uh, plenty to play for. On board three there, uh, we have a kind of a Carl's bot from the e takes d5 Karo. Uh, yeah, a very solid position for both yeah. sides. <clears throat> I think Wesley will be quite happy with this because he just gets to play chess and uh, uh, he probably also is a little bit better here. I would assume these types of positions are, I think, Generally, at, at least a, 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 a tiny bit better. You play 92, knight of three, and you just kind of shuffle. And uh, eventually, if black is not careful, some kind of an attack on the king side could materialize. But it's not. But very on the other much. hand, also black gains something. Yeah, by giving up his bishop, white white's queen on b is slightly yeah. misplaced. Yeah, you you definitely want bishop to d3 and queen to e2. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the that's the ideal setup. But obviously, you know, plenty to play for, and it's only move eight, so we don't need to talk about it too much. And then there is, yeah, do we? Do you know what this is? Because for me, this is kind of new. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's a very solid uh, line from white side, and it's definitely a possibility. I I have seen it, yeah. And uh, if we consider that uh, board four is basically the under, I mean, uh, the lower rated player from from Iran, and uh, Lenny is clear rating favorite, then. I believe that the captain of Iranian team uh, did very well to suggest that actually White should try to get as solid and, and stable position as possible in this game. Yeah, not to let uh, Lenny uh, show his class. Yeah, and in this regard, I feel like what White has been doing is is a very clever choice. Yeah, he's he's clearly playing uh, playing about 
as solidly and uh, uh, as risk-free as possible against these types of Rogozin uh, setups. Uh, and I actually quite like this last move, Queen B4, uh, that he played. Um, I suspect the reply probably should be Queen B6, right? But then we just wait, right? We go like Rook C1 and we wait. And it might be kind of awkward for Black not to trade on before eventually. But if you do take on before, I actually quite like this for White, to be honest. Yeah, this would be a big achievement, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm kind of overstating just how pleasant this is, but in general, opening up the A file, completely killing off any potential for any kind of C C7, C5 counterplay, having sort of two ways of the minority attack. Yeah, right. If, if the pawn appears on C6, we can play B5, and we have one more B pawn in reserve if we need to do it again later in the game. Uh, all of this looks like, uh, you know, very, very pleasant prospects for white and... Uh, the structure in general with uh, white having uh, or, or with the majority of their pawn structure is on, is on the dark squares and the light square bishop is exactly what you want. Yeah, that is why we don't even look at the move like queen takes before. We would like to find a different yeah. alternative. I also have a move, for example, knight c6. What do you think about a move like this? I'm destroying my pawn structure, but I'm trying to get counterplay. I think it becomes very, very concrete, actually. Yeah, like queen d6, uh, c takes d6. If I could play knight g1, c3 here, I would be very happy. But if I go knight g1, I think you go, uh, sorry, if I go knight d2, I think you go knight a5, right? Yes. And I have to start calculating. But maybe I'm still okay. Like I will go rook c1 here. You castle, or king d7, I don't know which one is stronger. Basically, my worry for white here is that. The counterplay along the C file connected with some knight b3 jumps. Yeah, this is, no, this is a problem. Knight b3 just wins the exchange, right? Ah, uh, yes, is, yes. This I is agree. my problem. Yeah. This is why I didn't play knight c3 immediately, because knight b3 followed by bishop c2 just actually captures this rook. Um, and yeah, this, this is what is worrying me here with white, because if I manage to finish development, connect my rooks and put the knight on c3, those positions are genuinely dangerous for black, I think. But... Tactically, move by move, it might work out, uh, and then and then black is doing completely fine. Yeah, Plus, and then also a big question: if you are really worried of knight e5, you can maybe g get give an argument for b4, but it's slightly weakening. Yeah. Yeah. And you, then black has, for example, ideas like e5, b5, knight e7, and then the knight can exactly. Get yeah, to you, you never really want to you yeah. know expand expand your structure like this without severe provocation. It's still playable. Yeah, and it definitely solves you know, the one big tactical issue that is worrying us right now. But yeah, it's a very committal decision to play before so early. Exactly, because then, then in fact, White will have uh, problems with, with the squares. The bishop on f1 is kind of doomed, and the knight on b6 will beautifully protect the d5 pawn, plus get access to, to the c4 square and so on. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight that, yeah, yeah. One, one could argue that why not b4 if you are afraid of knight a5, but as usual, if you try to... To stop something, you allow something else. Yeah, a very, very interesting position. Okay, we have to we have to move on. Yeah, and also chat has been, uh, you, since there is plenty of stuff to, well, there is a pawn on g7 in one position. What is what? I was about to say, let's take a look at what Magnus is doing, because apparently Magnus is having a lot of fun today. But then I saw this and I thought, okay, this is also fun. <laughs> uh, what happened here? Where is my piece? Why am I a piece down with white? <laughs> Well, I mean, okay, this is this uh, Blitzkrieg idea yeah, that uh, Gelfand used against Rugger, I believe, in, in their match. There, there was a, quite a shocking development, but that was against the E5 uh, setup. And even here, White was trying the same idea. So E6, D3. I mean, okay, let's just very quickly show that. I mean, I think we both have been playing E6, and then the reason why E6 little bit disappeared, that White started some... Castle is 97 d4 business. And uh, it's actually slightly more precise, I think, to play d4 first. I think I, I actually covered this for my uh, for my course. And I think Castle's knight g7 d4 also exists, but it's a bit simpler for black. This is the critical line here. Yeah, d4, cd4, knight b5 here. Yes, exactly. And, yeah. And you have a lot of choices here with black. I actually believe this is fine, uh, but you do need to know what you're doing. I, I actually I think I ended up giving this. Uh, as my first choice uh, in the course. And uh, 
um, I think it holds, but you definitely need to spend some time uh, looking at this to, to make sure you know where, where stuff is going. Yeah, and what I wanted to highlight that basically if with black, right now you choose the ESIC setup, then you make sure that you are perfectly prepared against D4. But knowing that D4 is the real danger, you can very easily neglect the old other options. Yeah, and, and this is what White is trying to achieve, that he comes up with a surprise from a completely different angle, DC 97H4. And I have been playing this position for like 15, 20 years. It was my repertoire. And exactly in this move order, this piece sacrifice, I can't recall at all. This is completely new. Yeah. I mean, H4 exists in every single position these days. But after H6, you kind of give up and you continue playing. You know, like you've done, you've done your stuff and uh, H5, G5 generally just improves Black's situation because everything gets closed down. And yeah. And apparently you can just justify it by giving, starting to give stuff away. This is very And, and the, here, here comes what I said, that I think with the pawn on e5, exactly this position, this peace sacrifice happened in the Gelfand uh, Raga game. Yeah, but this I can believe a little bit more with the pawn exactly. on e5, right? Like there's a lot more weak squares for you to exploit later. But yeah, let's, let's just get to what they have. So uh, Santo Hatasa played f6, and he also is playing, like he seems to be kind of unsurprised by this. Uh, so h6, uh, black is forced to trade, black is basically forced to trade on h1, king f7, e3, he's taken on g7, and white played queen h5. And, uh, yeah, I mean, currently we have only one pawn for the piece, but I assume we meet pretty much any knight move with knight e4, and then... Uh, we try to pick up the pawn on g5, and then we definitely have some compensation. And we're also very happy uh, uh, to be ready to be castling queenside whenever we want. Yeah, exactly. I mean, okay, yeah, it's uh, very tricky. We also see the evaluation bar that it shows zero zeros, yeah? Dynamic equality. Now, the big question is, it's dynamic equality because of uh, some very precise lines from black, or in general, if black just makes any natural kind of moves, uh, the position is just uh, balanced. It's, it's, you, you never know. Definitely very interesting. And the very classical, very, very old school business from, uh, from Almeida Quintana on the last board with the black pieces. Yeah. I think like some 30, 40, 50 years ago, people were playing like this, that, okay, I'm going to go to, to berserk mode with, with closing the center and then try to trade the black's bishops. However, I believe that nowadays computers are not impressed at all. And they say that no matter what you trade the dark square bishops, it's uh, with all this space advantage, actually, the computers love white. All yeah, the exactly. White my, my, problem would be, my problem would be that we've allowed c5 here. If the yeah. black knight was already on d7, I would be a lot happier with this. But the, the, yeah, like knight a6 or knight d7, yeah, whichever choose, square you choose, probably a6. Uh, but stopping c4 c5 here would be a huge big deal in my in, in my mind because the biggest problem for black isn't really the lack of space right now i mean that also is important but you're also severely underdeveloped and uh connecting this with the fact that the c file is about to get opened is potentially incredibly dangerous for uh for black yeah, very naive or very provocative uh, play from from Black. I mean, how yeah. did we get this? Ah, wow. So actually, Black has already lost the tempo on, for Bishop G7. Yeah, he's he's he really yeah rubbing his opponent's face into <laughs> into this idea. Like he's just saying, I trust this is fine. I don't care how much time I spend on this. It's it's really is yeah. The, 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 those are two very good words you've chosen. Yeah, it's either provocative or naive, or maybe both. Yeah, like, it's, <laughs> it's maybe a combination. Why not both, as the as the meme says? Uh, yes, and yeah. and already, if you are talking about this match, uh, just one very very important remark, which we we noticed both uh, before the the match, that Paco Vallejo is not playing, and he's not playing again for for a second uh, game in a row. Yesterday. I was already heavily missing him against the Indian youngsters and actually Spain went on to lose. We don't know exactly what happened to, to Paco. We are just speculating. I mean, seeing that he was very, very confidently winning his games in the first rounds, 
we are a little bit worried that not like he got some stomach problems or, or whatever, but as we said, we are just uh, worrying for him. We, we don't have any information. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you, you do have to you do have to wonder because it's not like he played well in the first couple of rounds. He, uh, there were no issues with the you know, quality of his play. And I, I actually went on to check uh, to check his Twitter and he tweeted a couple of uh, his usual cheerful things uh, two days ago after uh, the, 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 the match they uh, they played on August 1 and has been quiet since. And I mean, not choosing him to play yesterday. I mean, yesterday was a very, very important match. It was a bit surprising, but you know, team strategy. We don't really know what's going on. It's one one game is not really telling you very much. But when you know they lose yesterday and he still doesn't get selected today, uh, yeah, that is kind of worrying. We we hope everything is fine with Paco. Exactly. Yes. So, all right. Lot, lot to play for in this match. Ah, by the way, we jumped immediately to to board number three, so we haven't even looked at the mm -hmm. top board. Yeah, this is what we have been discussing. That lately, after Bishop C4, now many, many modern players uh, switch to Knight F6, just to avoid the line that we are witnessing here now after Bishop C5. Mm -hmm. But uh, also the, the classical guys, like yesterday we have seen, I think, Sargisian played bishop c5, Alexei is playing bishop c5. I think any of the older generations does not want to, to bother with all this new knight f6 business. Yeah, and we are seeing this very, very forced line. Yeah, this is arguably the central line of, uh, of the entire variation. This queen b3, knight a7, or at least it used to be before they started doing some other stuff. Castle c6, bishop d3. Uh, I think I had this with white against Wesley uh, in one of the Singfield Cups, and Wesley played knight f5 in that position. But this also very much exists. I've had, I definitely watched some games in very close proximity starting from this position. I think uh, Nikita Vitugov had this on the black side uh, against Evgeny Nair in one of the uh, Russian club championships some years back. I think he ended up. I think he ended up losing that game and it wasn't much fun. It looks like, I think, if this is the first time you see this position, you think, how could black not be completely fine? There's this fantastic bishop on d3, you have a bishop pair, you have a very solid structure, the knight from e7 is coming to uh, f5. Uh, but then, if, if you don't succeed with creating something immediately, why just goes knight a4? And this creates, like, Let's put something on the board. Let's say we go knight f5. Why that should I think might go knight f4 even knight a4 even there? Rook e3. Sorry, knight e3, rook e3. Let's say the bishop goes all the way back to g6 or f5 after the trade on e3. And we go knight f3. But hang on, here I can also take on this. Yeah, you can take on d3. I'm just ignoring tactics. Yeah, yeah. Show, okay, just to show, show yeah, the position, strategical yeah. ideas. Yeah. So so we get we get a kind of position like this, and we go knight f3 here, for instance, where this bishop on b6, somewhat weirdly, is sort of completely dominated by the knight on a4, because uh white can basically choose to take at any moment. If you play bishop c7, the knight lands on c5. And it's going to be very, very annoying on c5 because you almost never want to play b7, b6 because it weakens your structure. And if you don't play b7, b6, there's really no good way of uh, getting rid of that piece. And yeah, uh, I've seen very, very strong players struggle in this structure despite seemingly, you know, an advantage of two bishops over two knights. Uh, we'll see what uh, what Alexei has here. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I'm very worried for Alexei because look at this. Uh, first of all, he lost yesterday a very, very painful game. Now he's surprised and has already spent like 40 minutes. Yeah. And and the opponent is in the in book. And maybe Alexei even is not exactly familiar with all the dangers of the position. Yeah, that uh, he, he might... I also noticed those games that you mentioned that actually White often just wins these games very, very easily. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. very risky. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this goes on. But yeah, he this position definitely is not without uh, is not without its venom and uh, not so easy to play. And then we have uh, uh, Nino on board too. Anton David playing against uh, Albornoz Cabrera. 
everything is to play for here. I'm probably choosing white if I have to choose because the night on b4 is a bit misplaced. e4, e5 could become quite a serious topic after a castle, but... Yeah, this Not is one much. of those very, very modern Ragozins, yeah, because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is Queen A4 check, Knight C6 easily castles Queen C2 move order, and Black is uh, opting for this Rook E8, Bishop D2, Bishop F8 business, which is, which has entered the scene in the last uh, one, two years, before people exclusively has played A6, Bishop D6 setup here. That, that, that was the typical natural way of retreating, mm -hmm. but Black was saying that, you know what, I don't want to lose this tempo on a6, the bishop has to retreat, and Black is trying some very, very quick knight before dc c5 ideas, but it's still, <clears throat> you, you have to be very precise. I mean, I don't know exactly if Black was really doing everything perfectly or not. Take, take c5, dc, bishop, c5, all right, okay, this is a slow play. I would prefer white a bit, but yeah. It's uh, it's uh, still still obviously everything to play for, and because you know people people always want to to, to watch his his games. Let's briefly show uh, show Magnus who was uh, you know trying to be very inventive today, but uh, his opponent is not really obliging. Yeah, this is the the Magnus game. Uh, Norway's playing against Australia uh, Australia today, and Magnus went e4 knight c6. The Tony of, Miles setup, yeah. yeah. Trying to invite his opponent into some kind of, uh, you know, you know, interesting and non-standard structures. D4, D5, probably, or D4, E5. I don't know which one he would have chosen. I think Magnus probably goes D5 here. I think it's more more to his style. But instead, uh, Anton Smirnov played very solidly with Knight of Three and uh, yeah, now inviting I'm... back to correct your mistake. Yeah, yeah? So... yeah let's uh, <laughs> let's go play a Spanish Magnus. But Magnus says no and. Uh, it, ended, it ends up being just more or less a classical Pierce, uh with Black choosing to play G6, G6 move 4. And uh, uh, right now by move 10, uh, it's a very, very quiet position. I mean, it's, it just got a little bit less quiet because uh, Anton chose to castle queenside. But I still feel like uh, it's, it's going to be uh, not that easy for Magnus actually to, to generate any particular excitement it's a bit like i'm actually very happy uh seeing the move uh, long castles here from from anton because it means that uh, he is not just entirely concentrated on on having no problems and on you know having a boring game with very very solid structures if black doesn't doesn't play precisely here you can actually imagine white being a bit better i would start by playing b7 b5 not because I'm planning any kind of an attack on the queen side. I just very badly want to prevent bishop c4 from happening. Because that bishop really needs to be on c4 for white, for white to be quite happy about things. It uh, stands well there on c4 on its own, plus it stops bishop b6. Uh, so I think from a positional viewpoint, it's kind of important to... Uh, but then please tell us that why you don't want to start with bishop e6. I think queen e2 is strong. I think mm -hmm. this is the problem. I think queen e2, and now b5, unfortunately for you, loses a pawn because I can play, I can just take on b5 and the queen is hanging. And I'm very happily, after let's say queen e7, I'm very happily playing bishop c4. I'm not claiming white has an advantage here, but these types of positions just, I think, end in a draw all the time because everything gets traded along the d-file. Uh, so in order for Magnus to preserve the double-edged character of the position at least a little bit, I'm very much expecting him to just go b5 here without even much thought, uh, just trying to, uh, you know, preserve the the material on the board. Uh, bishop c5, rook e8, I don't think I'm worried about that all that much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, definitely interesting. And we, we see that, yeah, Magnus is also trying everything for his country. I mean, yeah. uh, one could argue that Okay, Magnus could take the easy way. Yeah, like, okay, I'm going to play against the top guys, plus I will play when it's comfortable, give me some white against the lower-rated opponents, and I'm going to crush them. And no, Magnus says, you know what? My team hasn't been so super convincing in the very early stage of the tournament. I want to support them as much as I can, and I don't mind risking my rating whatsoever. I mean, yeah. respect, huge respect for, for Magnus's approach because yesterday he played against Zambia also. 
Mm -hmm. And and today he's again willing to take over with the black pieces against. Yeah, he's playing a second black in a row, and uh, yeah, to kind of put in perspective his stated goal of you know row to 2900, he is on three and a half out of four in this tournament so far, gaining one raging point. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy being twenty six uh, the twenty eight sixty four. Uh, and and trying to gain rating while playing in a in a in an open field like this. Um, so far, he's been. I mean, the one game he didn't win with black. Actually, hang on a second. He this is his fifth game, and it's his. Uh, yeah, okay. He started with uh, the white. Yeah, I thought he was maybe playing his fourth game out of five with black, but no, it's three out of five. Um, but yeah, he he drew against Vocaturo with black. Uh, that's the one draw he made, and he, yeah, just very happily continues playing black pieces and uh, uh, fighting, uh, fighting for his team. Uh, yeah, the, the same can basically be said about uh, Shakri Amamadjelo as well. Shak, Shak as well, yeah. Yeah, Shak is uh, also trying everything for his team. We have been seeing yesterday uh, Azerbaijan lost to Turkey. This. Uh, no, no, Azerbaijan lost to Cuba, pardon me, against Turkey, they drew the, the day before. I mean, he just feels that, yeah, he, his presence is very important. He wants to, to get his team, team going. We already talked about this, that Rajabov is, is not playing in the, in the national team in this tournament, in this Olympiad. So he definitely wants to motivate uh, the teammates. And, uh, okay, playing with, and this is a very interesting pairing because uh, I would say, you know, that that Pehak or Pehach, I always have problem uh, pronouncing his name exactly, uh, is a very, very dangerous player with the white pieces. And I was certainly, and a very ambitious young player with, with 21 years old, would play against Mamedyadov. But for some reason, the captain said, no, uh, you should probably rest. And it's now Viktor Gajic who, who plays uh, on the white board. Against Shakri Amaradyadov. Okay, this is a big surprise for me, but Captain probably knows what he's doing. Yeah, you, you have to assume that there is some kind of an internal dynamic where, yeah, it's 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 easier for the Captain to judge than than for us to, from the outside. Uh, people are very excited about some positions in the uh, in the top boards. Like I've seen mentioned that Fabi is winning and also Hari is winning. Uh, wow, so quick. I mean, okay, Hari, yeah, let, let's go back to this. We, yeah. we told you guys that, I mean, whenever we see Bishop G5, Bishop H4, Bishop G3, if you don't know exactly with what, what, what you are doing, and no matter how strong you are, and this is why I'm really worried for the white player, and now it's Abdus Satorov, who, who is with the white pieces, because if you play Bishop G5, Bishop H4, and it backfires, then, then it doesn't matter how strong you are, you just lose. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, honestly... You know, I gave this whole speech about this not being not being clear at all. But if you start making this kind of weird moves, which don't do very much at all, like he played a four, uh, Harry responded very logically with g five and then knight e seven. I mentioned that you know the knight often goes to g six, and putting the other knight on g six is also very logical. You don't have to spend three tempi putting the f six knight on g six. And now uh, Nordic Beck also spent a tempo on Queen B3, which I really don't like because Black really doesn't mind having to castle here. The king side structure is not going to get challenged anyway. Black will be the one side playing on the king side, so you are just completely misplacing your queen to force Black to make a move. Black probably will make anyway. And now after D4, Knight H5, I mean, winning is a very strong word. Nobody is winning yet here, but I definitely don't like this for White. I think this is very risky. I think compared to what you would like to be by move 13 in these lines, you want to have some kind of an initiative in the center, or you perhaps want to already, uh, like the very useful plan in these types of positions for white is to have the rook already on e1, and at least some way along knight of one, knight e3 idea. Yeah, ideally it's already there, but that's probably a little bit too much to hope for. But you want to at least aim it towards the e3 square but as things are uh black is already i think threatening g5 g4 quite seriously uh and white has done nothing of any substance uh so yeah i understand why the engine already likes black for uh for fahari here I, I think even optically this looks very promising for for black 
Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if if you get this, then this this is the absolute dream. I mean, basically, I can I can reveal the big secret that that's why I'm playing e4 e5 to <laughs> to to provoke this position yeah, because yeah, people yeah. think like I want to be very solid with e4 e5. Well, that's true. I I like to be solid, but I also like to get winning chances for free. And and here I feel like you know it's uh, th these are the strategical dangers that I would never be able to tolerate from the white side i i can i cannot play like this yeah it's a this just doesn't look right to me yeah, it's a, it's very very scary i don't even know how to react to all of this like d takes e5 you can play but it gives black a one uh, a number of very pleasant choices uh, sometimes they just like allow g4 and give up the pawn on d4 at least to open something in the center but first of all black will not be obliged to take on d4 if you play g4 and secondly White is really not that well positioned to start an attack in the center if you give up a central pawn. So yeah, I'm I'm very confused uh, by Nordic's choices so far today. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I feel like uh, Uzbekistan is running a big, big risk because they can just lose uh, with the white pieces on board. One and Hadi is playing very, very nicely during the whole Olympiad so far, and he just crushed the field in Prague with with the very very clear plus four undefeated score yeah i i feel like uh, harry got very very motivated for for this olympiad and i'm also pretty sure that he has done tremendous work yeah and uh also somehow you know we blinked and in the game between uh, robert ovanesian and uh ronak sadwani there are no pieces left on the board somehow I, I don't know what happened there, but we can maybe... Well, play. it's a Berlin, yeah, and finally yeah. the electric board uh, stabilized. Yeah, so we have the connection and yeah, this is a very, very Jewish position. I mean, I told you, Sadwan is incredibly well prepared. He had impressed me. I mean, I'm following the games of the youngsters and uh, I'm also very happy for him because uh, I know that he's very talented. He's, he's very good and now uh, he's working very hard. In this case, he has a very, very bright future ahead of him. Yeah, so... Yeah, this bishop, this, I mean, this is the craziness. And that's why Peter told, told you guys that I can talk for 25 minutes. I can talk for 25 hours. And even after 25 hour, hours, I can guarantee you guys that you will still get totally confused that what is Peter <laughs> trying to tell you? Because this, this Berlin is the biggest headache in, in modern chess because all the million move orders and every small detail if you do this bishop d7 move order with a6 included or without included, with bishop e7 included, with knight e7, should white play h3, should white play knight c3, I mean, you can analyze it all, all your life for 25 years and still not, not know the answers. Yeah, uh, I, I absolutely agree, which is, but, but this is where we differ with you and me, because we agree on this. And your approach is to actually analyze it all your, <laughs> all your life. And my approach is just to stop playing money for basically. <laughs> this is this is what the big difference is. But well, uh, I have to tell you in this moment that I envy your choice because I feel like I wasted, you know, 20 years of my life for, for just no reason whatsoever. Because I analyzed it, but I still don't want to play it not with white and not with black. I just hate this. Yeah. No, I I, I understand. But briefly, once again, there's really no point because we, we're already on move 24. There's really no point to go too much into details. But the plan that uh, uh, Sadwani went for, c5, uh, yeah, I guess like I would probably just play rook d1 here because I wouldn't want to allow knight d4. But uh, Robert chose not to Well, bother. sorry, Peter, but wasn't this your game against Pono in uh, Astrahan 2010? Very close, yeah, very close. I, I was I was thinking about that myself, but I, I don't remember exactly. Like, I tried to, you know, push the thoughts about those two Berlin games in Astrahan. One was against you, one was against, one was against Pono. I'm trying to push them away from my mind. It's not a very pleasant memory, you know? Yeah, and especially because you you even mentioned in an interview that you really did a lot of work before the tournament on, yeah, on yeah. the Berlin, right? Yeah, I told this story before, but I briefly can tell it again. Uh, that was basically the last time when I seriously looked uh, at the Berlin. Me and my my good friend, my childhood friend, uh, Vasily Emelin, we prepared for like we had a two two week session just looking at the Berlin because the entire field could play the Berlin, and then I ended up having two Berlins in the tournament. I played a very interesting new idea against my, my co-host today, against Peter. Peter made the draw, I think he spent like five minutes on the entire game. And then after the game, he complimented my choice and said, yeah, this is a very interesting new idea, Peter. I'm, you know, I, 
good good on you that you found it but obviously don't play this against me because i will know <laughs> and that game didn't really happen and then i actually got a big advantage against ruslan ponomaryov and somehow in the berlin managed to blunder so much in one move that from a very nice position i had to resign on move 20. and after that tournament i just told myself okay life clearly is trying to tell me something here <laughs> i will just not play this opening anymore and i haven't played it since well i can now reveal the big secret that just before that astrahan tournament we also had a 10 days of training camp with berkesh and with chava balog uh, checking all the setups of the burly that's why i also knew your idea very well and you know what? We also felt like I just don't want to travel to the tournament because <laughs> I, I hate chess, you know? Yeah. And I my know. tournament wasn't any, any successful at all in, in Astrahan. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. So this is the position I assume is reasonably, reasonably comfortable for Black. White does have this passer on the six, but it's completely well blockaded. Black controls both the e-file and the c-file, so you can't get your rook to e7 or c7. I assume this will be a draw. Uh, I think chat correctly is telling us that maybe, you know, one hour in, it's time to maybe take a, a bit of a look at the top uh, top women's uh, matches. We've talked about the, the men's tournament. Uh, but maybe we should just very quickly go through this first match and then we're going to move yeah, yeah. them. Sure. Because I see that the Gukash game against San oh, yeah. got very, very double-edged and very complicated. And there's a captain of Armenian team. I'm really worried because look at the clock situation. I'm not liking this that Gabi spent so much time so far and, and Gukesh is much ahead and the position is also not to my liking. What happened here? What on earth has happened? Ah, finally, actually, by move order issue, they got to got to the Ragozin. Anyway, Queen A4 check. Yeah, the, the main line, everybody plays this. And the move bishop d2, all right, but d takes c4, this is, yeah, d takes c4, bishop c4, bishop d6, that is the surprise, this is all known to be fairly harmless, queen c2, e5, takes, 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 ah, no, bishop e2 is the small little, exactly, you, you hear me, I mm -hmm. told you, takes, 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 yes, so oh, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was expecting 95, bishop e5, and then white can choose between going for short castle, or white can also try to go for long castle, two different setups. And all of a sudden, there is no take, take, takes. After knight e5, Gukesh retreated the bishop to e2. And after knight f3, spice things up with gf3, and now we are getting this very double h position. Wow, I'm, I'm worried. This is not what, you know, a captain yeah, wants he, to uh, see. Yeah, it, it might not be so bad, but connected with the timing situation i think it's kind of worrying times for 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 sure for for our team armenia uh the rest of the boards are seemingly okay for for your guys uh Hrant is a, a tiny bit better maybe i'm i assume black is sort of fine but i mean white has the extra pawn white i don't think white can ever risk anything here and on board three actually adiban also got a position which i think should suit him quite quite well in spirit, but maybe something like the immediate knight c6 just equalizes. Very much depends on move-by-move -move evaluations here, because if you give white some time, you can start doing things in the center and on the king side, but... Yeah, I'm not trying to recall, because there was this very, very famous game, uh, Magnus Karsnagel, Sergei Karyakin from Norway Chess 2017, I believe that it was the moment when suddenly Magnus invent, I mean, uh, invented or reinvented this... Uh, whole idea with bringing the queen to f3 and and after that the setup with bishop f8 actually disappeared because it was mm. the old classical way that you know against this line you can just go rook e8 you go back bishop f8 you're gonna go b6 bishop b7 c5 and black is perfectly fine and and suddenly after that game because magnus was targeting this d5 pawn with some rook fd1 as well Sergei was suffering and ever since this is considered to be some kind of an achievement for white yeah I'm, yeah, I'm not so. sure if the rook was on c1 first or the rook was on d1. That, that's why I'm a little bit confused. I can't tell you that it's exactly move per move the same, but I feel like it's almost, no, definitely almost the same. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Close I mean, thing. unfortunately, I have to tell you that I feel that uh, India 2 has the initiative because for now, my, yeah. on my two whiteboards, I, I don't feel that we have anything. I mean, in Hovanesian, 
Sadvanya, I feel that we got neutralized uh, in Merkumian, Sadin. Well, maybe some very tiny little something, but but not really. And on my two blackboards, I'm feeling myself under under pressure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, so far I'm feeling quite optimistic about this. Uh, and people are very excited. Well, let's briefly go back to the to the Abdus Satorov game because. Uh, the, the, Nozibek actually ended up taking only five on move 14 and Chad got very, very excited because the evaluation there is actually, like, I don't know how deep the, the, the engine goes, but the evaluation after DE5 is minus three. Uh, but Harry, I think, I still like his position, but the engines were very much more in favor of including G4 and taking only five with the knight, which I thought was a very logical continuation as well. Just And you could have even done it immediately after d5 to even not let you play knight h2 so like d5 g4 here you cannot really play knight d4 because d5 you actually lose material the knight on d2 is hanging so you have you have to either just sacrifice that piece altogether which is probably what he was intending by this point or you can go knight e1 and then knight g3 hg knight e5 followed by simply like h5 h4 and you just start a mating attack and yeah this is sort of exactly the kind of a position which you absolutely have nightmares about when you play bishop h5 bishop g5 bishop h4 bishop g3 when you have nothing in the center you have no attack you have no initiative and black is about to just go straight at your king and the bishop on a7 is so strong that it's very difficult to imagine what will even be your counterplay but uh, uh, Harry instead just took on g3, took on e5. Probably still very good for black, but maybe slightly more hopeful for white. Yeah, still the same idea as you mentioned. Yeah, this g4, h5, h4 looks like it's coming and uh, yeah. it, it's wonderful. And black can put the queen on f6 as well. So putting pressure on the f2 pawn. In this case, the rook from f1 also cannot really leave. I mean, one really gets the feeling that this position can be simply won by hand. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't even... Yeah, if you, yeah. Very, very much so. Yeah, if, if White doesn't find something to do, more or less right now, somehow, like if you don't manage to play, I don't know, Rook FD1, Knight F1, Knight F3 or something, and to at least put something in the way of the Bishop on A7, you just get completely steamrolled on the king's side. Yeah, and here I, have to, here I have to mention one very important thing, because usually spectators, uh, analysts, journalists, they are statisticians, uh, look at the results. Yeah? And then you see like, okay, Andrew Satorov has five out of five. Okay, brilliant. Uh, it's very dangerous to play against him. I, I can tell you, I can reveal a big secret that as a player, if I'm playing against someone who has five out of five, I'm not worried at all. First of all, there is no pressure. He has already crushed everyone. So I, I don't feel like if I'm going to lose... I, you know, I've, I have to feel myself very bad. But at the same time, I know exactly that, I mean, uh, if, if I'm going to play well, then it does not really matter if the guy has won five games or not, because it's just a new game. And, yeah. uh, and now he, we also see that there is just no guarantee that Abdus Satlo 5 out of 5 and ends up getting almost a lost position after 10, 12 moves with the white pieces. In modern chess, anything can happen. Absolutely. And, you know, if, if there can be... I mean, it feels extremely strange to even mention this, but uh, the, this new generation of kids, they're absolutely brilliant. Like, we've been watching them. I mean, Nodjebek beat Fabio on demand, basically, because his team at that moment wasn't doing so great. Wesley was completely winning out of the opening in that match, if you remember. Uh, and he just played a very, very interesting, very uh, good game against Fabio and, and beat him. He clearly is going to be a star for the future. Already is a huge star. You know, he won the world, uh, the world blitz, and uh, and everything. But there is still some sort of stability slightly lacking. I think mainly through you know lack of experience. It's not. I'm not really criticizing his chess as such, but because everything is so new to him, uh, things like what we're watching today can still happen where. Uh, you, you know, he very understandably chooses something very, very ambitious from the white side. Like, this is arguably the most ambitious way you can play the Joko Piano right now. Uh, but, he, you know, he does it without really, seemingly from what we're watching, he does it without having a proper idea of what he wants to, what he wants to achieve and ends up 
uh, in a lot of trouble by move 15 and a very, very important match for, for his team. Yeah, and also we talked about that fearless. Yeah, this uh, being fearless is, is, of course, incredibly important. But at the same time, you know, because uh, you can also get a bit careless. Yeah, that you think yeah. like, okay, I'm, I'm doing fantastically. I'm very dangerous. Uh, give me some double H position and I will be uh, fantastic. But, I mean, uh, it's, it's not so easy. This, this modern chess with all these finesses, all these uh, subtleties, you have to know every single small detail. And uh, and Hadi basically just by doing absolutely nothing, just by knowing his stuff. You, you remember, guys, I told you after e5, bishop a7, that Abdus Satorov started thinking. We, 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 I kind of got worried then when Nodia back finally played a4, then, then Peter got very alarmed that, okay, what is this? Yeah. I mean, if you play like this, then you, you can't uh, think for 10 minutes and go a4. We, we immediately felt that there is something in the air here. Absolutely. But I think we, uh, by this point, we really should uh, move on to something else. Let's take a look at, uh, at the women's section for, yeah, for yeah, the, let's, there's plenty let's of stuff on. going on there. But interestingly, I, I decided that maybe I will be, you know, a professional broadcaster at least a little bit today and start making some handwritten notes. And I mentioned, I think, during one of the previous shows that uh, there will be more teams in the, in the women's section uh, on 100%. But there is also a much sharper drop-off, uh, which is what I noticed today, that looks like some kind of a separation is already happening uh, in, in that section with uh, uh, India, India uh, Georgia, and Romania on 100%. And then only three teams on 9 out of 10. And already after that, uh, you get to a huge, huge tie on on eight out of ten uh, match points and yeah the, the the top clashes today are india versus georgia of course to uh to very very strong team with a, a lot of history and romania is playing uh against ukraine so what's yeah, happening and and also i feel like you know this uh, india versus georgia is almost one of the big decisive matchups because uh after russia and uh, and china dropping out of the olympics these these two teams are definitely the the two main favorites with ukraine i mean basically yeah. i feel that these three are clearly stronger than the rest and we are having this very very direct clash there is also this psychological effect that i mentioned before that georgia beat uh, india three two days ago yesterday beat india two and suddenly on the third day in a row suddenly playing against india one a very very special uh, match situation yeah, and on board one here we see a kind of a classical-ish looking uh, Benoni um, with uh, white opting for the bishop of 4e3 kind of a setup. The pawn on b5 just got there and was not taken, which is what I'm slightly interested in. Uh, I guess if you take your pieces will get very pinned on the b, like a, b, a, b, and whatever you take with, I guess knight c7, bishop d7 comes very quickly, right? Yeah, and you might end up losing your piece, yeah, because yeah, you might you might not yeah. not be able to to save the piece. Yeah, but on the other hand, if Black got B five in for free, then then I think that Black is actually definitely slightly better already. Yeah, it seems like uh, it's a huge achievement in all of these structures. Even though, like, you would like to play C five C four, and if that pawn would survive, that would be you know a huge big achievement. But currently, you can't really do it because White can take with the rook on B eight being uh, unprotected. But you can start with, let's say, ah, hang on, but white wants to play f2, f4, right? I was going to say you can play yes. bishop d7, but if you play bishop d7, you take away the very last square from that, uh, from that knight. I still feel that you should be right. I, I feel that uh, this, this has to be quite, <clears throat> quite decent for black, but uh, because of that idea of f2, f4, maybe we are slightly overselling just how happy uh, Nana, Nana is here. On board two, we have the game between uh, Nino Batsayashvili and uh, uh, Harika. This is strange for me, right? Because I don't think you're supposed to allow C4 and B4 so easily. Yeah, I feel like uh, this is the Karlsbad that Harika was dreaming about. Because you remember against, uh, against Huska, Jovan Kauska, it backfired. Uh, because she mixed up uh, something there in the mm -hmm. very early stages, but now she gets the dream of all dreams. And yeah, this is... 
I mean, there still will be something happening on the king side. Let's say you play c4, white goes bishop b1, right? You play b4, white has to play knight c2, I assume. You play, I don't know, a5 or bishop f8, yeah. And yeah, bishop f8 is very clever here because I would like to play knight f5 and I would immediately after that want to play g4. Or I would, yeah, e3, e4 is also very central to white's plans. But black is extremely solid and if you get this much of a foothold on the queen side, eventually something will start happening on the queen side, like a5, bishop a6, and eventually c4, c3 starts becoming a threat. And also white has to pay so much attention to it all the time that creating your attack on the king side might be quite difficult. Yeah, well, yeah, looking, like at the, looking at the match, to be honest, I'm loving the black pieces uh, on the first board. I'm definitely fully in love with black's position on the second board. And on board for Tanya is already doing the dream of all uh, anti, anti martials or, or uh, classical mm -hmm. small Spanishes. But okay, before we jump there, let's take a look at board three. This is maybe the only position where white is in control. We don't know how much, but at least white is not running any risk. Yeah, there's there's no risk, but it's still, uh, you know, from a rookie one anti Berlin, which it obviously is, um, this is about as sharp as maybe you can get with pieces on very weird, weird squares. And uh, white played, you know, for some reason, white has a4, c4, and knight a3 as a kind of a development, but black also has pieces on some some very questionable squares. I don't know. The more I look at this, the more I think that, you know, if I had to choose right away, I would probably choose black even here. Yeah. I Like, just go knight f5 and, and say... Uh, knight f5. My, my other instinct was something like queen, queen f8. Yeah. Or queen f8. My problem about queen, of, with queen f8 was I couldn't really work out if I'm blundering a piece, but I don't think I am, right? After c5 yeah. or yes, c5. Uh, straight away c5 is maybe very strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's the that's the trick. Yeah, yeah. bishop f1, bishop takes d6. <clears throat> that's how a hand move, a bullet move can can cost mm -hmm. the game. But this is classical chess, so you have time to adjust. Yeah, so I think we go knight f5, and uh, I think we are reasonably okay with how things are going here for black. Uh, bishop on f6 is very good. Bishop on a6. I assume we should be able to just trade it for the bishop on f1 if we want. Knight on f5 should be better than the knight on a3. I don't see why we should be worried here with black. And briefly, Tanya's position is... Yeah, this looks, this looks pretty decent. Um, nothing really, you know, groundbreaking yet. White can play knight g3 and completely ignore... Like, uh, one thing you don't want to do with white here is to take on c4, but we just go knight g3, we go bishop g5, maybe next move, and we, we continue playing. But I like Tanya's position for sure. I think it's uh, uh, it's very, very playable. Yeah, probably bishop g... Maybe even you don't want to put the knight too early to g3, right? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, you maybe bishop... to have... mm -hmm. yeah, maybe knight is in knight d2, putting the pressure on the c4 pawn with bishop g5. That's that's maybe the way to put pair because I see that according to computer, actually white might hope for an advantage here. I mean, my very first view was like, oh my god, I mean, if, if black gets this and the uh, white bishop gets shut out on, on a2, then usually this is just fantastic for, for black. Oh. But maybe that the pawn is not yet on h6. This is a very, very important critical moment that white can play bishop g5 and then fight for the light squares. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, everything's still to play for. If we had to, if we had to assess, I Yes, I am. It's very difficult because, yeah. It's a very double edged situation. Very yeah? double edged. And it seems mm -hmm. like Black is kind of doing quite nicely everywhere because the playable position. And there's a really, really strange looking position. But then I saw uh, and I, I realized where it's coming from and I was no longer so surprised. Yeah. Uh, we all know where this is coming from. Uh, and uh, clearly, both. Both players here are quite well prepared. In particular, I think uh, Irina Bulmaga is uh, still very much in book, and she just played rook takes d6 here. This is a very topical line of the um, knight of 6 knight six, e6, six, Sicilian. Um, and uh, lots of developments. We actually, I think... We we played. We were one of the first people to play this. Yeah, at some point. Yeah, exactly. Because I was the one who who did some very interesting job from the from the black side. Yeah, I, I was the one who who came up with the new ideas. You were thinking for forty minutes, 
And then you played this move of King D1 with uh, that Amador was uh, playing against me in the in the analysis. And I was telling that no way somebody will play King D1. <laughs> I was walking, I was praying during the game. And then after 40 minutes, you were King D1 and, and you went on to beat me. Yeah, but that, the theory very much moved on. And yeah, this was 21 years ago. So we are, you know, we've been doing this for a while, guys. <laughs> for those for those of you watching who are wondering what we're talking about, this is Yeri One World Teams 2. 2001. Exactly. And th this was the position and it was already uh, back then the, my idea that after bishop b7 this pawn sacrifice with c5 is interesting. And I think exactly here you played king d1. Yeah, I, play, I, I think these days king d1 is not really a very serious move anymore. And what you're supposed to do is exactly what Irina Bulmaga is, uh, is doing. Uh, and this is, yeah, I've, I've Took a brief look at what the score sheet says. It's just amazing what they're doing. Uh, and yeah, the opening theory has really moved on quite a bit. All of this, I think, is still very much hardcore theory. Queen c7, g5. Let me check where it ends, because I definitely have seen uh, g4, c5, rook g1 before. Yeah, yeah, of maybe, course. But maybe there even, was also maybe this even... very famous game in Isle of Man when the two, yeah. two players had the same board. I think uh, it was Yu Yanji. Uh, and, and Shido was also involved. Yeah. Uh, up to G5, we're still following a game between Valakitin and Eliana from 2019. Uh, but yeah, at some point it deviates. Uh, actually, whoa. We're still following that game. It's quite amazing. <laughs> we're still following. All of this has been played in a game between... Uh, uh, Andrei Valakitin and Pavel Elyanov in the uh, Ukrainian Championship in 2019, including GH, including H8, uh, Queen check. Uh, so we're not giving too much commentary here because clearly both players uh, still are very much aware uh, of what's going on. Rook G6, Rook C7. Now your Queen on G7 no longer has any good squares and allowing Queen takes B2 here would of course be disastrous. But you do have the tactic that uh, Irina just played, rook d6, knight d6, queen of 6 check. The king should go to c8, I guess, because king 7 bishop h3 check would be a bit of a problem. So you go king c8, white goes rook takes d6. And Pavel played queen b4 here, while the engine seems to suggest rook c6 might be a bit stronger. But <laughs> sort of the important thing is, this is move 29, it is still theory. And I'm pretty sure both players actually know this is still theory. Uh, yeah, well, here what I'm really worried for Maria is that, uh, look, look at her clock situation. She has already spent one hour. Yeah. And, and Irina just like 10 minutes. It's, uh, yeah, she plays King C8. Of course, she plays King C8. But, uh, I mean, first of all, the reason why I hate such lines with black, yeah, that there is so much theory. There is so much to know. And finally, after all, you're ending up with positions like this that you have to know all the way till the end how to draw because okay, white is risking nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be it should be completely safe for white for you know yeah. as far as I can tell, uh, shouldn't be horrible for black, but yeah, it's a, it's a not ideal when you play this kind of a, you know very adventurous, very double edged variation like the one that. Uh, Maria is playing and you are playing against somebody who by move 30 has basically I think spent eight minutes on walking around I would I would assume that she basically burned eight minutes just by looking at other boards and you have zero winning chances as far as uh, as far as I can tell but we'll see uh, in other games uh, in this match uh, Anna Muzichuk on board too has a pleasant position against uh, Mihaela Sandu yeah, again, now we see Black's bishop on g6. Uh, we are always very skeptical. I mean, white is setting knight h4. <clears throat> total nightmare. In my view, this, this kind of things are total nightmares. Yeah, you, you, need to, you need to somehow do something straight away or you could get completely, completely blown, blown apart here. Uh, on board three, uh, uh, Yelena Kosma is playing white against uh, Natalia Buxa. Seems okay-ish, I guess, for black, right? It's a bit better for white, but nothing spectacular. And we are again seeing this uh, narrative that, I mean, Natalia Buxa is a very, very strong player. We, we see she's 2400 and everything, and she has been suffering. Now she moved up to, to third board and now also having some, some trouble. I mean, 
Mm, I'm, I'm not liking this because usually a strong team like Ukraine should get a lot of comfort that we have a very strong first two boards and we also have incredibly powerful third and four boards. Yeah? And, and suddenly mm -hmm. they are a little bit shaky. Mm -hmm. I'm, this, is the, this is the thing that I'm not liking for the moment yet in, in Ukraine's uh, team. Otherwise, I would say that they are also one of the favorites to, to win the Olympics. But this shows me some, some kind of a weakness. Yeah, uh, and on board four in that match, we, we get one another, one more uh, very similar Benoni to the one we have in the, uh, in the match between India and Georgia. Uh, but here, White, I think, managed to very easily contain all the counterplay on the queen side. As you can see, there was a trade on a6, the light square bishop got traded for a knight. And uh, Black seems to be prepared to play a 5 or 4 at any moment, but it probably just doesn't do very much. The, the, the problem for uh, for the <clears throat> uh, Romanian player here is that he play a four. Why probably just takes plays like f two f three, and that's the full extent of your attack. Uh, and then White proceeds to put a knight on e four, and and just have complete control over the proceedings. I'm not entirely sure how we are like if we talk about plans for the White side. I guess you want to push before at some point to open up the Queen side, so you prepare b three before somehow, but. It's just a nice position for white. Yeah, I guess that black has the headache, yeah? Because, okay, with, with a knight on e8, you're not going to get a real strong attack, but protecting the d6 pawn is kind of important. You really have to go f5, f4 at some point just to close this bishop. I'm not even planning any attack with f5, f4. I just want to lock down this bishop and then try to play a slow positional game by developing the bishop, maybe. But as you said, after f5, f4, white will get the e4 square for his knight. That's the that's the big drawback. So a lot to play for, but definitely these two top two boards of the move and section are very, very important uh, matches because, because, okay, Georgia versus India, super important. Mm -hmm. Super important, which can actually even almost seal the fate. I mean, I feel like whoever wins that, that duel will make an incredible step forward of eventually winning the Olympics. It's, it's clear we talked about it that it's just halfway through exactly, probably now we are halfway through the Olympics, but knowing that this is a very, very big clash and uh, both teams are so strong that can actually maybe dominate the other teams. Uh, th that's why the, the match between each other is yeah, so it crucial. Absolutely, counts, counts double, as they say, because uh, not only are you, like, if you win that match, not only you have won the match, you've also beaten your, your biggest competitor. So the uh, it's it's a huge big deal, of course. Uh, once again, I don't know exactly whether to trust chat on this or not, but uh, the, the game that you know a lot of people are very excited for today, in particular, I saw Mr. Dodgy reposting some of his stellar stellar work on the on the trailers for the 2020, 2021 international. Today, Anish is playing against Bador Jababa. Wow. And, okay. And chat is saying Anish is already winning, not better winning. Uh, which would be well, an important result because uh, I mean the Netherlands Netherlands versus uh, Georgia. Oh my God! We can confirm knight on d5. Yeah. Yeah, on this e6. looks yeah. this looks winning. Yeah, this does look this does look very very winning. Uh, and the first time I saw people asking to see this game was like maybe seven moves ago, and I thought, okay, Anish is better, but this is not anything special but since then yeah things have gone things yeah, have gone it's down. also yeah. some kind of a king's indian benoni mm -hmm. takes takes bishop g4 h it takes takes yeah one could argue that yeah this is a slow play and uh, and we will be seeing a big maneuvering game however things heated up bishop f4 98 queen d2 95 still everything fairly standard i would say yeah so far so good but yeah, yeah then uh yeah, knight f7, rook a b1, and in this position, for some unidentified reason, uh, Badur decided that he needs to include g6, g5. I guess he was fighting against the pawn appearing on f4. Bishop h2, bishop e5, and you can play bishop e5 immediately, but then after white takes on e5, you take with the knight, white will have f2, f4, and I guess he didn't like that. That would be my explanation. Um, Honestly, but, I mean, uh, for example, just a question. What do you think if Bishop takes e5? Can we take d5? I was about to ask you the same question. Yeah, I guess Anish specifically for that reason played rook a b1 and you just played before straight away here. Mm 
Yeah, but, but I'm still not, on the C5 pawn, yeah. I'm still not sure this is unplayable. Like I will take and play b6, and then I will try to put one knight on d6, rook on c8, and maybe push e4. I, and in particular, if you compare it with what he got, you probably prefer this because he played g5, bishop b5, Anish played bishop h5, which is very logical. Capture on h2 on h2 seems. Uh, sort of logical as well, knight g7. I guess Badur thought this was sort of under control. And then he got very, very cold shower here. Oof. Yeah. And he's played rook e6. And it's a kind of an unpleasant situation because, I mean, knight takes e6, he is now losing three moves later. But you can't also, like, you can't tolerate this rook on e6 for very long either. Like, if you allow rook b1, like, how do you live with that rook on e6? Um, yeah, and the question, the question in chat also, do you have to take it? No, you don't, but you don't like your position if you don't take either. Yeah, because and actually also the queen can't move because the g5 yeah. pawn is hanging, so you are running out of moves. Yeah. Yeah, no, this, this is a total so, disaster. Basically, rook e6 is a winning move. I yeah. was uh, honestly a little bit shocked by the move knight g7. I It, it did not come natural to me at all because... Yeah, just go knight e5 or something. Yeah, just yeah I mean, no, first it. take on h2 with check and then go knight e5 here. No, I mean, okay, keep keep, keep this. Uh, I mean, the whole yeah. point why he played g5 to fight for the e5 square. Yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely, yeah, now that I look at this, in particular because of, like, you really aren't supposed to blunder rook e6. Bador is an incredibly strong player. He knows this idea. He has seen it before. Uh, so... Yeah, it's a, it's a bit mystifying to me. That yeah, but look at this. I mean, what I don't like when somebody has a losing position and basically is still like having one hour on the clock. I feel like he, he, he just felt too quick. I mean, he played too quickly. And, yeah, uh, I, and I, I he don't was disagree. Careless. And, and, and this is, I think, once again, it will sound maybe a little bit harsh, but, uh, uh, you know, this is why he is now 2585 when he was at some point 2700 very solidly and was a very, you know, deservedly a 2700 player. Uh, because when he's not having a good day, he, you know, switches to this mode of just playing very, very quickly and kind of trusting his hand and, you know, trusting, uh, trusting into the, the, the sort of the higher powers a little bit too much. I guess, like, if we if we if we are to continue actually talking about the position, I guess you play Queen H four here and hope that somehow this doesn't lose on the spot. Um, and I want to at least put the other rook on the eight to you know prepare for for the worst. But I guess this must just lose to something by force. Yeah, well, there is also a question like, for example, if I play queen f4 and you play g3 check, yeah, because... Yeah, I, I, this is what I was going to do for sure, yeah, g3. Yes, yeah, you are kind of happy to, to trade the queens, but how happy you are because I have this g4 f5 idea as well, yeah? Probably still completely lost, yeah, this is yeah. my problem. <laughs> yeah, because honestly, I was planning to play rook e8 here and I now realize knight f6 check exists, which I did not... <laughs> and I'm even not sure if I want to play in high yeah, and, and it might not be the best move in the position. Yeah, maybe g4 is stronger, actually. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, oh, it's just, just a horrible. horrible position. Yeah. It's just horrible for, for Badur. I, I think our chat already knows also that we are always very, very careful whenever chat screams that it's, it's winning and then we can't, we try to calm everyone down that no, no, this is humanly speaking by far not so clear and a lot to play for. But, but this one is humanly really winning. I mean, this is, just total control. I mean, okay, look at this knight on d5, pony e6, mm -hmm. rook e1. Oops. I mean, pardon me, rook e1, knight d5, pony e6. I mean, this structure also that black has committed his pawn already to g4. This uh, gives even the f4 square as well. I mean, uh, complete tragedy. Yeah, and uh, Jake is telling us that queen h4, g3 is very strong in reply. I had a suspicion it might be true, but well, yeah, I just like allowing queen takes h3 check feels a bit unnecessary. But yeah, I had a feeling this might be quite strong because <laughs> yes. like, like we'll never be able to support this queen. It's actually just completely stuck. And and then we win in the center with like e7 and knight f6 checks. So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good point. Yeah, this is if, yeah. if you are calculating, uh, then then you definitely spot, spot g3. Wow, okay. So this is very big news for, for the Dutch fans because... Uh, 
I mean, okay, beating Jobava and winning a three point, I mean, getting a three point on board one is, is definitely huge. What do we have? Okay, Chad Lishvili against Jordan Fanforest is at least very double aged. It's, uh, it's a position which the Georgian fans can also hope for something. Definitely. Yeah, this is a very unclear position where. Uh, yeah, white white gained a lot of space on on the queen side here, and uh, because of that, black is a bit cramped. And you know, this will be a very very interesting position to watch. Uh, and then we have the kind of a classical queens queens Indian in uh, Bok against Pai Chadze. And uh, Gelashvili Varmerdam also quite a classical closed position. Yeah, but this one I think is quite okay for black. I, I, despite the bishop on g7 being very passive, I mean, the, the knights on e6 and c5 will be so solid that. But on the other hand, knight d5 is forever, right? Yeah, it is. It is a, yeah, this is going to be there forever. Yeah, I'm not touching this piece. I'm trying to sort of play around it. I'm, I'm trying to pretend that I can just completely ignore it for the rest of the game. Actually, despite uh, Anish being completely winning on board one, this could be quite an unclear match. Uh, looking at other boards. And since we already got here uh, a game that you probably have some eye on, uh, a little bit of an eye on, uh, the, the game between Ke uh, Keimer and uh, Moroni, Vincent actually is just winning here, I think we were told by chat. And also, it should be possible to find because the move is very logical, but we should take F7 wins a lot of material here. Oh, wow. Okay. But it's not the most natural one, yeah? I mean, you look at it, right? Because creating a possibility to play ninety six check is no. I, I think that if you spot it, you play it on the spot. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then it's after, a... and of course, the big point is that after queen takes f seven, we don't give a check on g six. We can just go d takes e five, and the black position just kind of collapses because we still have ninety six in reserve. And if you take only five, we just pick up that bishop and we are not only a pawn up, we also want a kind of a very important pawn which supports the, the, the black king side. So this is, I think, just more or less completely winning. Um, you do need to spot bishop, bishop takes f7 though, because importantly, if you want to start in the other order, and if you go d takes e5 right now, uh, black can take with the queen, creating a third of mate in one, and if you play a four, the queen will go back, and then after bishop f7, queen f7, there is no bishop on e5 for you to exploit. Maybe maybe white is still doing fine, but it's a whole different story. It's just a just a game. Yeah, bishop. I mean, I have to say that this is a fight of the captains. Yeah, because Jan Gustafsson versus King Luke, uh, yeah. a very very interesting. Uh, encounter but to be honest i was shocked when i woke up and i saw that daniel avocaturo is not playing on on board one because i simply cannot imagine the italian team without daniel on on board one he is such an experienced such a stable player i have i already mentioned i've been playing with him in padova for many many years together mm -hmm. i know that he's incredibly reliable and with already all this experience on board one for the last 10 years in in the italian team I think he got used to any kind of challenges and, and not seeing him play was, was a big surprise. Maybe, maybe it was connected also with my presence that uh, King Luke was afraid of maybe Peter is involved in the night preparation and, and he knows my schedule that I basically go to sleep at like two o'clock. Maybe I'm working all night to, to find the weaknesses in Daniela's uh, repertoire. Well, let's keep it a secret if it happened or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think most likely, as far as I can remember, I, I, I'm not paying as much attention to the Italian uh, in Italian uh, lineups as I could be, but I think maybe he played all five games and they just decided that at some point he needs a rest. But I mean, today against Germany, it's a big match for, for the Italians and yeah, it would be logical for him to play, but maybe he just feels very tired and decided that he just absolutely needed to, uh, to have a break there. Yeah, so we see that it was actually a very modern kind of uh, meta. This bishop e2 short castle is not the most natural. Usually, white puts the bishop on d3. There are small differences. Uh, castles, castles, a4. Yeah, this is one of the ideas to include this a4 move. a4, a5, queen c2. So we are almost getting the classical stuff, uh, but with, with these two moves included. And if you don't know the, the finesses, then good luck trying to figure it out over the board. 
Mm, Absolutely. And, yeah. and I feel like, you know, this DTX C4 is a uh, is little bit in the wrong direction because I do recall that White anyway needed a pawn move to A4 in order to get the bishop back to A2. But I'm not sure that Black really needed to, to give this uh, tempo then. I think it's more logical to play something like B6 here with yeah, Black. Yeah, I, I think so. But once again, this is all now in the past. And uh, yeah, what you're saying about, about the A2 square is very, very important. Just briefly, uh, in order for this to be a kind of a you know, teachable moment, this is very much why White often moves the A pawn in the structures, because keeping that, pawn on, uh, keeping that bishop on this diagonal just allows White uh, to do what we're watching Vincent doing in today's game, where connected with knight h4, white just has potentially on ig5 in some positions, it has a lot of sudden play on the king side, which is quite dangerous. And already the fact that yeah, uh, Luca had to you know make a very awkward looking move, uh, uh, king h8 is a is a good indication. And yeah, yes, and this is this is how we reached here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so thinking. all all lies on Vincent. Yeah, now he has to spot bishop f7, but I'm also way too nervous to, to wait for this moment. So we, we can easily move. Okay, yeah, just very quickly go. then. Yeah, very quickly to, to cover the, the match. Okay, on board two, it's a very, very still classic. Theory, uh, still Queen, theory. Queen's Gambit, yeah. Also, I suspect maybe something has gone wrong with the board because this is move 12 and we are an hour and a half into the broadcast and... Uh, I mean, both of them should know some theory. I think it's their main opening for both of them. So, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit surprised by this, but uh, who knows? Yeah, Dieter is back in the German squad. He hasn't been playing the last two games, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is the the lineup and the stability of the German team that they have five very very strong players. So basically, they can always rest. And today, Matthias Blubaum is the one who is resting. Yeah. I'm and not sure. Board four. I, yeah, I wanted to say I don't really like Dieter's position so much, and I thought I thought Dmitri Kolar's position is good, but apparently the computer very much uh, disagrees, which is a bit surprising to me. Yeah, because uh, humanly it looks like this knight on d5 is wonderful, but I'm guessing that some pin issues are the problem. Yeah, that yeah, maybe pin e4 connected. and then put it on f3 or something, and it's difficult to make moves. But yeah. I'm still surprised that it doesn't really feel completely fine for black here um i'm not sure why why that is peter i need a one minute break can i give you the control sure yeah. absolutely so all right uh so yeah in this position what i meant is black obviously wants to play something like uh uh, rook b8 d8 i don't know hang on a second can i move pieces please tell me i can move pieces yeah so my, my plan for black here would be to play like rook bg8 and then rook fe8 and the knight on d5 is so difficult to challenge that i'm genuinely uh, uh a little bit surprised that we're not just doing completely fine but the machine seems to suggest that uh white is maybe have, uh, enjoying a little bit of a pull and as for Dieter's position, uh, like the queen on h3 in all these types of isolani type structures is always an indication that you would like to have some kind of a play on, uh, on uh, the king side. But uh, with a knight on e2 and the bishop on f1, I don't really quite see what that play will be. And the knight on e5 is being challenged as well. So yeah, I think Francesco Francesco Sonis is uh, currently enjoying the better of it. But Ditter is a very experienced player, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Let me uh, open the chat up again. Uh, uh, Vincent is thinking too long; he didn't see it. We we don't know. Well, I mean, what Peter said about uh, you know it being quite likely that you just play it if you see it. I I kind of agree, but uh, it's uh, you know, not necessarily true because. Uh, you, you don't really expect your opponent to blunder bishop takes f7 or really to blunder anything in, in the opening as early as this. So uh, it takes some time to kind of adjust to the idea that you might be just winning out of the opening. Uh, so what's happening in the top boards? Um, this looks uh, very promising for Gukesh. And not only because uh, the, the, the engine bar says so, uh, this structure is uh, quite good. If if we could 
if we could somehow get the bishop from d2 to some kind of a uh, square on the long diagonal, I would be extremely optimistic. But even as it is, we can play something like bishop d3, ask black to decide what to do with the king side. We can always double on the g-file uh, and uh, create more pressure along the, the g-file. The one counterplay black has here is something connected with a4 and b3, which is why clearly black is not entirely defenseless here. But yeah, I, I like this for white. On board two there, uh, yeah, Hrant is going to be a bit better, but winning a position like this after something like rook c8 or rook b8 is going to be very, very difficult. I would suggest maybe borderline impossible because of, uh, yeah, uh, the structure is very spoiled. The bishop is very strong on uh, d4. And uh, yeah, black has very, very nice compensation. Board three, Adiban. I wanted to say Adiban is doing quite well, but actually uh, something like knight c6 or in particular knight bd7 coming into e5 looks kind of awkward. I wonder what he is intending to do here because uh, if he doesn't have an immediate tactical refutation to this idea, this looks very promising for black because everything gets kind of moved away. Like you have to maybe play something like bishop b1, knight e5, queen h3. And black can, for instance, play g7, g6 just to blunt, uh, blunt uh, the um, uh, the bishop on b1, and seems like a pretty decent hanging pawn position for um, uh, Tersakian. And uh, bishop e4, sorry, queen e4, bishop a6, and f5 for Gukesh. I'm being told. Yeah, this is clever. This is clever. The idea, of course, being that if you take on e2, I have a 5 of 6, and not only is g7 hanging, I'm actually going to uh, uh, deliver um, deliver mate on the on the queen side with queen takes h7, if rook takes h7 is allowed. Queen e4 is a move you should be considering uh, attacking the rook on a8 and preparing a 4 of 5. So yeah, uh, this looks very promising, and... Uh, Still feels like uh, Robert Avanistan shouldn't have very much here at all against uh, Sadwani. And seems like Peter is back, so I'll give him back the mouse. Yeah, thank you. I'm back. And what about the match? Yeah, because I was very worried. I was actually during the break suddenly thinking about the match and how I would feel as a captain. And, and we know that I'm suddenly not a captain. <laughs> what yeah. what does it mean? I mean, show me first the, the Sargis Young game because this position, I'm, I'm very worried. Yeah, I think uh, maybe you need to be quite precise here with White, but Chad suggested that Queen E4, very specifically with the idea of meeting Bishop A6 with F5, could be quite quite dangerous for ah okay but this is some very precise calculation required right mm -hmm. because now that i i came back you know my very first thought was like wow what happens if i just plays look g3 look dg1 and then crushes me on the on the g file but uh, apparently then queen e4 is the move that that is the real, real problem yeah i think this is what uh, what our viewers are suggesting and our viewers are the best viewers everywhere so yeah, but this is a this is this is a brutal computer force. I mean, this queen e4, mm -hmm. bishop a6, f5, and you cannot even play f6 because if you if you play f6, I can take on a6 and go queen c4 check and win a full win a full mm -hmm. rook, which is yeah. Particular. No, I mean basically once you spot the idea, you immediately realize that how dangerous it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just need you need to see that this exists, and, and yes. then I think you play it quite happily. And for the rest, uh, I think there should be draws on boards two and two and four. Yeah, with, with this uh, uh, terrible construction. Yes, I'm hoping because it's a pawn pawn up situation. But black is just so active, and this bishop on d4 is so strong. I don't really believe that uh, white will have any chances here. What about Tersahakian? Because this is a position that if white gets what he wants, uh, white will be pressing. If black gets what he wants. Can I play some rook a7, protect the bishop, get some d5, d4 ideas? I, I think I, I couldn't refute knight d7. And if I can play knight d7, I would like to play knight d7 on Oh, ah, wow. Even this is possible, yeah? Mm hmm Yeah, coming to e5. But how on earth did, uh, did Adiban take d takes e5? What happened here? I mean, queen f3, a6. 
Yeah, very, very typical. Okay, you it's it's always very useful. Maybe you want rook a7 protecting the bishop, but anyway, it gives you stability. And but the move d takes c5, no. I mean d takes c5. I, I can't really believe that how white is up there. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised by by all of this, to be honest. Yeah, central control and, and knowing also that Adam is usually very strong with initiative. So I mean those kind of sacrifices with like 97, 95 shouldn't surprise him at all. He would be doing it from the black side automatically. I'm I'm a little bit confused about this. Mm. Mm -hmm. So okay, then then here this is definitely double A. So I feel like my team is then at least compensating for uh, for Gabby's uh, terrible troubles. And what about Robert? I don't know. The, the engine likes it for white, but I don't quite know why. Ah, so look, G3, G6 happens. So actually now I can get rid of this pawn, right? So I think I give a check and I go rook D8. Right? Oh, otherwise I yeah. yeah. Otherwise I would be very happy. But yes, I, I think we don't take with the bishop, right? Yeah, you have a check. King H2 and then just play rook D8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you collect. Yeah, you collect. Okay, but it's it's a very specific position because maybe I have some ideas. For example, now I just want to highlight it. It doesn't work, but something like rook e3 and the rook takes d7, g4 ideas exist. The bishop is almost trapped. And, and then I will have some rook e6 invading uh, moves, but it does not seem to work move per move just to highlight that there is a lot of intrigue here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh... Yeah, on the on the topic of interest to, to all of us, Vincent did not actually end up playing bishop takes f7, didn't. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, this is this, this was like a mutual blindness, yeah? Because if mm -hmm. your opponent, opponent gives you the chance to play bishop f7, somehow you, you just don't look at th that direction, yeah? Yeah, seems like uh, neither of them saw what was going on there. And now game continues. I think he's ah, because look at one. Yeah, this is the so-called high class move in general in, in this type of positions. Yeah, that you always want to play look a one and then f to f for these are very classical ideas from, from Barayev games, I think from yeah, the 90s. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, but but bishop f7, no no classical education, just just computer spot and, and you can win. So all right. Yeah, we'll see. I mean it's still still very much a game where we, we no need to no need to be overly pessimistic about this for yeah yeah it's just a very complex big battle yeah all right what do we have what ah what happened with magnus actually if we are yeah we haven't looked at this in a while because okay he had this uh, pierce kind of position i think it's coming well wow, where is magnus Ah, yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there yeah. he is. Wow. Okay. It's uh, it's a very very double edged position. And what did he play? I'm now very curious because when you told me that b5 is so natural to me to you, I was kind of surprised. And yeah, there we go. I mean, you know this type of positions much better than me. I played a, a, a quite a bit of Pierce in my in my younger years. Yeah. Uh, so and uh, Anton once again demonstrating that he is not he is not here. <laughs> I suddenly realized that he's also Australian, which really makes it impossible for me not to, not to finish that sentence with uh, spider-related material. So yeah, he's he's not here to propose to spiders uh, and start start some play on the king side. But yeah, I don't know. It's it, it feels to me that Magnus is extremely happy about uh, about all of this. This is now very very double-edged. Yeah, and, getting uh, the bishop out to e6, uh, not being able to challenge by the by this bishop c4 idea that you mentioned, that was very very instructive. H4, yeah, white goes for an attack, black goes for counter attack, queen a5 setting b5 b4, so white has to react. A3, rook fb8, insisting on on some b5 b4. Yeah, well, clearly he he wants to go b5 b4 here. Yeah, and, uh, Anton goes bishop c5, and now Magnus goes h7 h5. Uh, clearly intending to uh, uh, force his opponent to decide on something on the king side. I think you pretty much always go g takes h5 here because if you close down the king side, I really don't understand where your future play is supposed to come from. Yeah, then suddenly black's king is super, super safe. So you are suggesting g takes h5. 
I think GH here and Knight, uh, H5. Knight H5 and, and, and something. Just continue playing. I don't know, Rook HG1, King B1. Or Rook D, I mean, for Rook example, D2 Rook D G or Rook A G, which one you prefer? I'm not entirely sure. Uh probably yeah, probably D to have some squares for my king for the future. Yeah. One one of the big questions that I had when I looked at it that we have to calculate this B5 B4 move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That where, where does it lead? For example, we take A B. Then queen a1 check knight b1 bishop a2 and then we have c3. Okay, thank you very yeah, much. All of this, all of this is kind of very, very unclear. But yeah, I think it's a kind of a dream situation for Magnus. If you consider uh, the position after move ten, uh, let's say knight d5, like if you uh, just in terms of simply, I don't know if his position is any good. But let's say if white goes bishop d3 c4 here. Uh, and, and just says, well, you know, would you like an endgame, sir? Um, it's just so much less exciting to play. I, I mean, black is not worse, but uh, simply from a, psych from a psychological point of view, Magnus could have been playing some kind of an endgame like this where nothing is happening and nothing probably will happen in this game from this moment on. And instead now he has this really, really exciting, really non-standard double-edged fight with the opposite color uh, castling and yeah bishop d6 chosen by by anton i would be interested in h takes g4 exactly i very because i don't even believe that white really wants to take on b8 then then this b5 b4 ideas will be just i mean and and knowing that magnus was playing the dragon himself uh, and and very effectively with great results a g4 will be kind of almost blitzed out, I guess. Yeah, I would be I would be very interested in H takes g4 and just with without really even calculating very much, just sort of on feeling. I, I feel like But then hang on after E G V R we have to Yeah, play yeah, H5. H5 and you have to think. But I think I'm sort of okay. The, the problem for white is that compared to all kinds of dragon positions, with the pawn on e5 for black and the uh the bishop on e6 and the white light pieces where they are. It's just going to be very difficult after, let's say, knight takes h5. You, yes, you can sacrifice an exchange on h5, but you just don't have any attackers there. Black, black probably isn't like queen d8. Ah, queen d8, not bishop e7. Yeah, it still is not. It still is quite tricky for sure. But still, it, it, it actually queen g5. Is yeah, th those were my words, so, thoughts as well, and then I was like, wow, what is going on? But uh, another important factor i believe that also after h5 we, we are not forced to react to this h5 business as well yeah? absolutely yeah i mean you, you we can pass we can also not play hg4 like hg4 yes. is not forced b5 before in the current position we can definitely also analyze uh just as we were kind of looking at this earlier it's always it's always something you can at least try just you know attempting to get to the white king on uh and, and besides, we should also mention that bishop takes e5 is not really a threat because of b5, b4, mm -hmm. so even a move like rook d8 comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty, plenty of uh, options here available to Magnus, which when, are... When maybe white is... No, but I, I can't believe that giving up the bishop just to take gh, I, I just can't even do that move because b5, b4 is coming. I believe I, I fully agree with you that Magnus should be very, very happy with uh, what he has gotten here. Yeah, and, and, and once once again, it doesn't really matter really what the uh, evaluation of the position is. It's just a fun position to play, you know, very sharp variations, and, uh, his opponent also. And this is the right approach. And uh, like in personal competitions, I I just love when, uh, when young people do this uh, and not try to play solidly against people much stronger than them on paper. Like what Anton is doing today is quite clearly, you know, he... He got a chance to play against the world champion, so he is just playing as actively and as principally as he can without really any consideration about you know rating points and trying to be boring and safe. In a team competition, it's slightly different because he is playing you know white <clears throat> on board one for for his national team, and <clears throat> maybe the team would be best served uh, by him actually trying to be safe and trying to play uh, trying to play more conservatively but you would hope that his team actually gives him the license to to play as, as he wants because you know he is their best player and a chance to play against somebody like Magnus doesn't come every day yeah exactly it's it's very very fair point 
Uh, there is also some in interesting intrigue in the other boards. I mean, <clears throat> Tari against Kuibokarev is kind of a very complex position. A uh, lot to play for. Yeah, I'm not I sure think. I like this for, for Aryan. Yeah, Aryan yeah, is yeah. A, I, I wasn't Aryan sure that, for example, this uh, Bobby Chang against John Ludwig Hammer is also a big, big mess. But feeling-wise, Black should be perfectly fine. So that's, uh, that's good news for uh, for Norway and yeah, Johan Sebastian yeah. Christian and seems to be winning in my He's view. just winning yeah somehow something has gone wrong here for uh for his opponent and yeah he's a pawn up and also has the the rooks, rooks against the yeah, queen. Versus queen advantage so yeah this is uh, looking very very good for Johan Sebastian Magnus in the driver's seat so Norway seems to be controlling the match but this uh, Kuibokanev position against Tali is kind of a slight danger for Norway. And who knows that this, this total mess between Bobby Chang and uh, John Ludwig Hammer, how it will end finally. Yeah, uh, but probably time for us to take a look at some of the things happening on the, on the higher boards. Of course, yeah. For example, Gukesh has still not made a move. Yeah, he yeah, probably he's still feels thinking. that it's a very critical moment. This is also very, very good, yeah, that he, he feels it, so he might spot Queen E4. He is not, mm -hmm. not in a rush. Yeah. He also had a lot of, lot of time advantage. It's, I think, one of the most important things, yeah, that if, if you have a big time advantage, you should not rush at all because there is no need to rush. Mm -hmm. If you feel that the critical moment is coming, then, then take, take your time and uh, you might spot even some moves that would otherwise not, not cross your mind. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, nothing, no, nothing happened, happened on the second board. Uh, no new development on the third board. Ah, actually, we are seeing this. We are seeing this. DCBC, look at D1, knight B7 happened. Queen H3, knight E5 happened as well. Bishop B1. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I was I was advocating for the move G7, G6 here, yes. just to make sure we never blunder any tactics with like knight takes D5 and the pawn on H7 might start hanging and things of uh, things of that nature. Yeah, so I'm guessing that White will play the move Bishop E1. And the big question is that will you be, I mean, how do you solve your problem with the D5 yeah, it's, pawn? It's, it's sort of hanging, yeah. It's uh it's not as safe as I as I originally thought. Yeah, it's a very strange, bizarre structure. Yeah, maybe because white is also, I mean, at the moment I'm not sure that knight d5 will work. Or it will work anyway, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 a comp because okay. If black has to push d4, then of course one needs to calculate very very carefully all this e d c d knight c e2. And if the pawn is lost on d4, then it's bad news. If it stays alive, it's it's bad news for white. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What you're saying is exactly right. Yeah. This is this becomes just incredibly concrete, and you know there's all kinds of things here to consider. Queen b6, just yeah. kind of. He's got and knight, knight g6 played. Yeah, which is another way of uh, doing sort of the same thing, right? Not exactly, but sort of the same thing. Basically, he wanted to make sure that he doesn't have the issue with the d5 pawn. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's kind of clever. And Robert Hovanesian played the move rook d2, trying to threaten d7 and, and use this weakness on g6 now. How do you deal with this? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what's uh, what's going on here, but I mean, white uh, okay, just a, just a very fun, funny line that I quickly man because first I thought like, what happens if Black gets counter counter attack with rook c1 check, king h2, and rook e1, setting rook h1 checkmate, and then I spotted rook g6. Yeah, rook g6 is kind of a cold shower here. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, very very cute, of course, because we evacuate uh, our king. We, we, we give a root and bishop takes g6 loses to this i mean maybe does not lose but but probably it should technically yeah. at least it's not it's not great yeah it's yeah. not great i mean because luckily black still has the move rookie eight so he does not have to resign on the spot but yeah this is terrible news all right which means that black is not able to go for a counter attack then he has to kind of find the way of how to how to deal with the d7 threat Okay, not the most exciting of the positions. No, not really. Not white, really. but however, white got more than what we saw at the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what what about the Abdul Satulov game? That is Harry making big progress. I think he once again 
he probably could have gotten more, but you still obviously absolutely love this for black. Like you go h5, rook h8, h4. It's going to be so difficult to uh, somehow maintain, you know, maintain your shape here and not just get completely uh, uh, blown away. I don't even know exactly how uh, Nozibek is planning to do that, to be honest. Like you can go knight df1, but I don't know if it helps. Like if we if we just continue playing this move by move h5, knight df1, I don't know if I need to play h4 first. I, let's go, uh, rook h8, f7 is hanging. So finally there is some point to, to having the screen on b3. <laughs> You know. Yeah, h5, by the way, on the board, of course. Mm -hmm. I also feel like, uh, from Hadi's point of view, it's a team competition, knowing that having everything under control is the main priority. So I, I don't really believe that he's regretting any missed chances because he might not have even thought that there were missed yeah. chances. For sure, yeah. Yeah, he, he just plays the game. He's very happy because, uh, basically, he's the one calling the shots and he, he has everything under control. And yeah. wh what about this uh, Yakubov game? Yeah, because this uh, double, I mean, we see the d6 pawn weakness, but also we see these double pawns from white side, which should kind of balance things out in general. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's. Uh... I'm a little bit surprised that computer seems to indicate that white is clearly better. Yeah? And this well, do doesn't look so clear to me. No, it doesn't look clear at all, but. Yeah, actually, I was going to say instinctively in positions like this, I tend to sort of emotionally, I tend to like black. But uh, yeah, engines seem to think. Yeah, but look at this. Uh, we did play the move that I also I thought like it's clear that white has to play the move 90. Yeah, and immediately the engine says it's 0 0 position. Uh, just, just shows that uh, how different we are to, to the engines. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a kind of a strange, strange situation, right? Because white doesn't really have any way to uh, get the bishop on c1 into the game. I think maybe the idea could be, in some positions at least, to play bishop a3 and to ask black if you want to play c5, giving up the d5 square for the knight, which you probably don't want. Or if you want to play knight c5, where, you know, once again, you're slightly just uh, kind of putting pieces on maybe... Uh, not the greatest squares in the world. Yeah, very intricate position. I don't know. I don't know what to think about it exactly. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a lot to play for. And uh, Harry opted for h5, h4. Very straightforward play. <clears throat> so if uh, we look at from from players' perspective, yeah, then we can understand that uh, the both teams think that Harry is pushing, and there is a very good chance for him to win this game. That's for sure. Yeah. which puts uh, some pressure on, on all the other players. So basically, okay, we did Yakubov. This is a double-edged position for the moment. What do we have? What else do we have? Any guys see, I would say that this is quite a solid position. I, I don't agree with computer evaluation saying that white is clearly better. I don't feel that this is clearly better. Maybe tiny bit better for white. Yeah, you, you have a little bit because, uh, uh, once again, the, like, the common wisdom says that because of the doubled pawns uh, on the king side white is you know playing a quasi extra pawn end game because white's majority is more valuable than the black majority on the king side but black has a very solid king in the center white is kind of struggling to create a meaningful passer on the queen side black currently has control over the the, the open a file yeah i don't think this is so horrible yeah this is very little at at the maximum humanly speaking and uh, the other board, Shashi Kiran, Vohidov, actually, no, 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 no. This what Shashi is doing, I'm not liking because, in fact, he didn't manage to come up with a real plan, right? It's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, still, just, he's still shuffling, yeah. Yeah, he's shuffling and he's shuffling a little bit slowly. We, we know, we talked about it, that usually Shashi is famous for getting into time trouble and he doesn't mind. But uh, in a, such an important match where the nerves will definitely come in, uh, come into play at at certain moment. Having all pieces on the board, uh, move twenty, and and being almost already in in time trouble is is not an ideal scenario. On the other hand, we know that he has been there hundred times, so it's uh, he he knows how to handle it. Now the big question that I have, Peter, that mm -hmm. with the bishop on h two, eyeing the queen on c seven plus white has played queen e three. What do you think about the movie sixty five? I. 
I know why you're asking, but I still hate it because I, I like <laughs> to keep I, I like to keep the tradition alive somehow. I don't like the idea of just sort of killing everything off. But yeah, obviously it's a it's a very legitimate option here for, for Black if you want to do it, but if I had this mission with Black, I would be kind of desperately trying to find anything else to do. In particular, and, and what, like, what would be what would be your thought process actually here? My D seven, Bishop F six, my D five is like the dream, right? This is the some kind of a setup like this. But I'm maybe finally White will be ready to play D three, D four, or something. But otherwise, like my biggest question would be why haven't we played this yet? Because this looks very, very natural and very yeah. Uh, and and hang on, just to understand what happened. So they are playing this slow game. A6, H3, Queen C7, Queen D2, yeah, slowly improving the position. Rook C8, Rook C1, Knight B8, I'm loving it. Yeah, this is a very, very nice way of regrouping. Rook FD1, Knight C6, making sure actually that uh, the C4 pawn is kind of hanging. White is not able to get the, the Malozzi bind. Mm -hmm. So Rook FD1, Knight C6, the Knight reached its destination. Queen E3, Rook FD8. And now the slightly mysterious King H1, it indicates that White doesn't have a clear plan. Slightly mysterious, yeah. I mean, <laughs> ever so slightly, yeah. <laughs> now I, H6, Black said, you know what? <laughs> do, do you really want to go G4, G5? Let me provoke you to do that. Yeah, yeah. No way it's going to work. And Shashi plays A3 now. Yeah. I, I also want to highlight, just let me jump back to, to move 8. Yeah, that Black has played the move A6, which was answered by H3. <laughs> and and after King H1, H6 was answered by E3. This is this yeah. is typical chess. Yeah, yeah, this is uh the famous the famous Karpov Khalifman Simul story, which I told too many times to repeat again, but it's uh, it's one of my all-time favorites, yeah. About Anatoly really liking liking the these kinds of non-committal decisions in when he's playing a Simul is just uh, so that he doesn't really have to think about anything. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is quite unclear, and uh, and okay, you know, I, Harry has pushed already h five h four, so probably we should uh, be thinking at least how to how to protect White's king, or or it's protected already. I don't know. Yeah, uh, the, hang on, one one very important thing that the only drawback that Black has in the position, and I had this against Alexeyenko in in the European Club Cup, where I also got the chance of of delivering checkmate at the end on the H file in time travel. But one thing that is, is a problem for black, that the bishop can't be developed. Yeah, So the rook on mm -hmm. A8 is not joining the party. So basically, there is a certain pressure on black that you have to deliver checkmate or you have to get the maximum out of your position with, without that rook. Having said that, it feels like you have such an overwhelming position that you should be able to do that. Yeah, and in the meantime, uh, I mean, these these are all very, very important matches and it's fun to discuss them, but I, I, I want to attract your attention to what's happening on, on Vincent's board because, yeah, it absolutely blew up. It's, uh, I mean, I'm really, in a way, I'm very happy he didn't play bishop takes f7 because now he's playing a really, really fun game and I'm, I'm sure he is sort of enjoying himself greatly with with this position on the board. And if he, if he, if he took on f7, he would have just won very boringly and, you know, it's... <laughs> it's more interesting to, well, I'm, I'm sort of kidding, but anyway, rook a1 was played, e4 maybe is the correct response, and here Vincent went bishop b1. Uh, rook a8 looks very natural, but the engines appear to be disagreeing with it. The, the engines, yeah, very much like what Vincent is doing here. f3, bishop g3, and just leaving everything hanging. f takes e4. Uh, both of your pieces are hanging, bishop h4, e5, continuing to ignore the fact that the rook only one is hanging. But there is a mating threat on h7 if uh, ef6 is allowed. So uh, Luca probably more or less forced to play g6. Yeah, he played g6 and ef6 on the board. EF played, yeah. And after bishop takes f6, white has, I think, a number of very strong continuations. But yeah, it looks very promising for Vincent now. Yeah, def definitely. Basically, yeah, this is, this is probably what he had in mind while calculating rook a1 and that's why he did not spot bishop f7 at all yeah because his thought process was somewhere completely different 
Mm -hmm. This is this is the typical human way of thinking, and and the computers are checking every single move. Yeah, that's the very big difference. That's why they never miss anything. Yeah. But yeah, in, so yeah. all right, okay. This this is looking good, but what else do we have on the top boards? Because yeah, we let's go. Let's go back. We yeah, haven't let's... updated the the UN, United States Iran match. Yeah, uh, Fabi was at some point the the engines were screaming that he is maybe borderline winning, but he's still better even here. This is a, a kind of a pleasant position because the king on b1 is now completely safe, and you can uh, uh, just play this uh, quietly because the king the the the, the counterplay on the king side has also been a bit killed off. I I wonder if you're supposed to just switch to some kind of an endgame, or at least try to switch to an endgame and play like queen d2 here or something. Yeah, I'm also with Black trying to take on e4 and then get bishop f5. Yeah, I definitely want to take these uh, light square bishops. Uh, however, I missed out on action just very quickly to see how did we... King b1 was the last time I saw this knight yeah, this yeah, And now, now Parham went with this queen f4, queen, queen f6, queen h4 uh, idea, which the engines really, really hate. Uh, and in this partic particular position, for instance, there were some suggestions like... But you can't make those moves. The problem is you just can't play those moves. I think the first move I saw on my screen after Queen H4 was B2, B4. Wow. I mean, definitely you're going to play B3 when you can, yeah? Yeah, and it's just impossible. And Fabi instead, he played Rook FD2, which looks normal. Uh, and here he played B3, which also looks completely normal. And then Parham repeated with Queen F6, Queen H4. And Fabi chose to go back with the queen. So, I mean, he's still better, but definitely the engines would have played this game completely differently. But... Yeah, Fabi is playing the human chess, yeah? Yeah, but he's playing, uh, yeah, exactly as, as you can expect a very, strong, a very strong human player to be playing, like keeping things under control. B3 and C4 is very, very central to what White normally wants to do in these types of structures. So And, and he's pressing. I mean, basically, yeah. he's super happy. I mean, if after the game, somebody will tell him, Fabi, you didn't play the best way, he will be shocked. Like, what? I mean, I played a wonderful strategical game. What are you talking about? Yeah. F5, and, and now Bishop takes F4. Okay, this, this move we have, to, we have to highlight because I guess here, the most natural move would have been Rook FD2, right? Yeah, I think so. But... Honestly, I don't. I don't know why it's not good. Yeah, I would. I would have been very tempted to play rook fd2 and not give up my bishop pair yet. But yeah, for for some reason, I mean, of course, they are playing the game, so something certainly disturbed Fabi. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. maybe. But okay, d6 will be. Yeah, I I don't know exactly if Black wants to keep the queens or or by trading there is some way of of using this momentum that the white rook left the d file. Yeah, but I, I, I don't I don't see it. I think this is maybe he just didn't really like the position after let's say takes takes and g5 here. And then the yes, king and, and then ah, because rook e d1 can be met by bishop g4. Okay. And then Very we important. yeah, this was this was also what I was thinking that he did not want to let this knight stay alive on f4. Yeah, and he opted for taking on f4, takes takes bishop d3. It's kind of a high class move because you suddenly, thanks to the move f5. Uh, this di new dynamic appeared that you can think about this giving the, the dark squared bishop because you know that your light squared bishop will yeah, be alive already. Now is, 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 going to be, is going to be included in the game for sure, yeah. Yeah, look so, at, yeah, this look is, at this is quite unclear, uh, but looks like Fabi is, uh, is still at least slightly ahead. Wow, and look at this. What, what is level? I mean, I have never seen this pawn structure. Yeah, this, this is quite this fun. Yeah, this is quite fun. Um, yes. But so, seems like Black hang is... on, hang on. Ah, wow! What after knight b6 g4 happened? Oh my god! What is this? I have never seen something like a knight e4. So okay, probably some very deep preparation by Amin. Takes takes. Ah, this is how they reach this position. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's it seems that. Like generally, you don't, of course, like allowing the the pawn to reach h six because h six because your your end games potentially could be a bit problematic. But in this particular case, it's very difficult for me to imagine how White ever gets to the h seven pawn. Black is sort of fully in control of all the open files, meaning that you know the the rook is very unlikely to reach uh, reach the back ranks of uh, of the blur, the the black setup. So. Yeah, I, I would like to highlight one move which, which I feel that we have to highlight. 
that now it seems like the knight on d6, knight on c6 are stuck and the black rooks are not doing anything. And Levon solved that problem with this very, very classy a6, mm -hmm. six preparing knight b5. This definitely deserves very big plays. Yeah, and he, he, suddenly you have to kind of neutralize those uh, those jumping uh, jumping horses, and uh, uh, it ended up costing uh, I mean Tabata by one of one of his bishops because you, you a four knight c three is very unattractive, so probably no no good choice. So he took on b five bishop a takes b five rook f c one, and yeah, I think it's just fine for black. I'm I I, I wonder if you are already thinking about playing for a win here maybe not just yet but but yeah it feels like you have no problems whatsoever right it's... yeah and you can also as black you can start thinking about maybe playing f7 f5 for instance first of all to gain more space and secondly to to ask white uh, you know how do you feel about taking on passan and perhaps you know creating a potential weakness on h6 for the future or do you want to allow me to gain some more space in the center? Ah, this this was music to my ears when you mentioned that the h6 pawn might be a weakness because we, we know that ever since Alpha Zero and, and all these people are getting very excited, just push h4, h5, h6, and you win. But when things change, yeah, and, and Peter very nicely highlighted this that eventually in an endgame, if after f5, g takes f6 happens. Then we are talking about maybe a weak pawn on f6 on on h6. Eventually, yeah, in in Eventually. some kind of a in some kind of a future, yeah, you like can maybe play g6, g5, and yeah. Go after I mean, it. just to just to highlight, yeah, what we are talking about, something like this. If black gets king f7 and then king g6, then we see exactly why we are thinking that maybe this pawn can be vulnerable in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So okay, Levon has things under control. Vest this game. I mean, okay, this is looking like Black has no problems whatsoever. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised he's allowed all of this. And uh, White will, you know, you will put f you put the pawns on f3 and h5, and the king side will be completely safe. And I guess on the queen side, uh, the, the pawn on a4 is very beautiful, but it kind of stops Black from being able to comfortably play knight b6 c4 because it will be hanging. So it feels to me like this is some kind of a position of, you know, dynamic equilibrium. But a4, a3 is actually a, a serious threat, at least it is right now. Yeah, exactly, because the knight on d3 very nicely protects the b2 pawn. This is the famous Karlsbad knight. Yeah, usually black has the knight on d6 and, and protects the, the, the weakness on b7. And black needs to break this structure with a4, a3. And uh, white has to get ready because the pawn on c3 is vulnerable at the moment. Yeah. It's yeah, bit, not yeah. not so easy, and and also one one of the things that Wesley is not so experienced in the cars, but I don't recall him having so many times uh, uh, the cars but structure like, for example, Magnus, yeah, who also yeah. got it from the London, from always the CD five CD five exchange uh, carols. Uh, little bit, little bit uh, worrisome for for Wesley. He needs to find a good solution here, and then he might be perfectly fine. For the moment, he needs to deal with a three, however. Mm -hmm. And what about Lanier? Because if if you look at this pairing, then then we see like okay, Lanier is the the biggest favorite to to try to win. Oh, ah, yeah, how did he deal with Queen B? Ah, he played your move. You remember your very first yeah. instinct was to play Queen B six. Yeah, and then he just continues ignoring the fact that he cannot castle kingside and just is playing with the king on e eight. He says my king on e eight is completely safe. It's actually quite interesting what he's doing here. Knight d two, and yeah, he just decided that he can completely safely uh, ignore the fact that his king is stuck and is not really likely to castle anywhere. He wants to play a5, which probably sort of semi-forces white to go a4 if you want to keep the queen on this diagonal. Uh, and now, after a4, a5, queen a3, uh, yeah, and he just, once again, just continues to completely ignore it. He doesn't, he doesn't want to play queen a7, he just... Uh, Improves his position slowly, knight of 6, h5, pushes h5, h4, puts the knight on e4. Eventually, he always obviously has queen e7 in his back pocket to uh, solve the issue of uh, the control over that diagonal. I don't know if he has anything better. Yeah, in, in any case, yeah, he has things under control. Yeah, with pawn on h4, he also created some disbalance uh, in the position. Mm -hmm. and one could argue that eventually some ideas like look a6, look g6, 
uh, might be an option, but I'm really liking White's choice of trading this uh, monster knight on e4. You you can't tolerate this knight to, for not too for very long. long. Yeah, not for very yeah. long. Yeah, and and one gets the feeling that okay, it's probably black is not yet ready. If the rook could jump to g6 immediately, then we can talk about an attack. But but like this, if you play rook a6, you're given up on the chance of ever castling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't it, feel like uh, the position really. Uh allows for it just yet. Exactly. Yeah, for example, just to highlight, yeah, that after rook h6, for example, if white takes on e4, bishop e4, white plays a move like f3, then then the king on e8 might run into some danger because a potential e3 for breaking up the center is absolutely, possible. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how this develops. Uh, can you give me, like, a couple of minutes to... I feel like today I badly need a cup of coffee, so I... Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I, I already had my one, two minutes last night. It's your turn. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, see you. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, guys, I can I can tell you, yeah, that uh, as, as Peter already mentioned, uh, commenting all the action, it's, it's very tough. Uh, on the other hand, we have the advantage that our, our nervous energy is kind of secured, yeah, because... The, the players with all the tension, they are witnessing a completely different kind of uh, pressure. They have to, I mean, every single decision can cause the match, cause, can cause the game. Uh, so in, in, maybe physically it's not that tiring yet, but mentally they are completely exhausted by this point for sure. All of them are hoping for, uh, for, for, for the rest day tomorrow. And by the way, I was also not right because physically, no, actually the, the Olympiad is, and any chess tournament physically is very, very demanding because being able to sit there and, and to focus, you, you really need to be physically in, in a perfect shape to be able to do that. And uh, all the neck pains, yeah, because everybody works with the computer, yeah, the preparation. I mean, I know my, my legs usually ache during the, during the tournament. And uh, and my neck and my shoulder is is a problem. The the neck and the shoulder is is a problem also as a commentator. I mean, after the broadcast yesterday, we we both mentioned to Peter that oh my god, yeah, our neck is aching like 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 crazy. Those are the pains that that you encounter when you you sit in front of the computer a lot. And if you have to prepare because you know that the the, the game tomorrow in the, or in the afternoon will be very very important uh, opening wise then you have to spend three, four hours, sometimes uh, till late night. And especially when you are playing all these uh, very nerve-wracking games, this is, this is very, very important that the seconds are helping you. Yeah? And uh, without the seconds help, it's almost impossible in, in modern chess to survive. Just the, the pressure on the players is just enormous. With, with the tension and also with the computer preparations and, and so on. So what did we see? Yeah, Gukesh, okay. I think we can we can absolutely forgive him for, for not spotting Queen E4 because if if I would have not been told about the option of Queen E4, I told you guys, look, GCD was my very, very first thought. And you get carried away with the thought like, do I want to play Rook G3 to, to double the Rooks? Or do I go Rook G5 trying to... Of course, I would love to provoke a weakness with, with h6 because then the pawn on g7 will be a forever long-term uh, catastrophe for black. So if we are not computers. We have seen Vincent missing bishop takes f7 instead finding some very, very deep idea and, and goes on to, to press his opponent. Now Gukesh, after spending, I don't know, half an hour, he opted for rook g5. Very logical, yeah, black plays bishop a6. And that's also the reason why we have already given up of fighting against engines, because it's just impossible. The, these engines are so brutally strong, they are spotting everything. I mean, it's like uh, fighting against the radar. I mean, the, the radar will see everything, and, and no matter how good eyes you have, you will never be able to, 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 to fight with the radar. Uh, you see, Peter, actually, Gukesh did not find the move Queen E4. And, uh, he, and I was telling that we cannot blame him because if you are not told about the option of queen e4, then just this temptation of doubling on the g file is just too big. It's just it's just much more natural to play like this. Yeah, it's uh, very hard to criticize him for for not spotting it for sure. Yeah, look, dg1, g6. Now he took and he played a five. Yeah, he's doing it sort of exactly the way you would have expected him to be to be doing it, and. Uh, it's very logical. The threat here is to at least white would hope to be able to play e5 e6. 
and to break open the structure even further and then potentially open the G file. And if all of that happens, then of course you're doing really, really well. Yeah, and also if we have all the time in the world and H4, H5 would also decide the game. However, we should not, not forget that White has also some issues with his own king. The king on C1 is not perfectly safe. Black will try to use the momentum. And we also see that the computer says that White is better, White is pushing. However, it's not that euphoric, which means that probably Black also has chances to generate some counterplay. Yeah, but I don't know, because the, the counterplay is somehow connected with some rook c6 and something on the c file. I don't see it working, and, and a4 bc also looks a bit slow. Do you spot something? No, I don't. I, this, is one my, this was my problem as well, yeah, that uh, I would be very scared with black here. I would be very, very scared, but uh, having access to, you know, what we assume is a reasonably accurate engine evaluation, which doesn't seem to be very impressed with wise chances. Yeah, it kind of reshapes how you feel about the position, but I, I still don't quite understand why uh, white isn't more, more better. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I, I, as, a, as, as the captain of the Armenian national team, I'm very, very worried because I don't have access to engine. I'm sitting in the, the, the playing hall next to the first board and, and I only see the, the dark clouds uh, targeting uh, Black's king. I mean, this is, this is very, very dangerous. I mean, e6 is coming, h4, h5 is coming and, and where is the counterplay? Because if we see the counterplay, then, then everything changes, then there is hope and, and we understand things. But Mm -hmm. I, I just don't get it yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit confused myself. I don't really know uh, why this is supposed to be uh, sort of fine. We could, of course, ask, but let's just let's just watch as it unfolds. Exactly. Yeah. Let's just assume that that uh, I'm rightly worried. Uh, let me take a look. Is there some position where I have some? Okay, definitely here I have little hope. I I understand that it's very very drawish. I don't believe that White has real winning chances, but still, pawn is a pawn. If the yeah. match situation is not ideal, you you kind of dream. But look at this. Black is trying to solve the problems by direct play. Well, you can play a3 here. I think you probably should play a3 here with yeah. White, right? But but okay, then then we we fix the structure also terribly. By the way, well, you also have ideas like rook c4 and then bishop c3, rook h4, if you want. Of course, you even don't need it. Uh, you can also just play rook c4, king e2, and then the bishop goes back somewhere, and then you mm -hmm. go rook h4. And then you start, yeah, start creating. Like, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm not, no, not a believer in, in any of the chances here. What else do we have? Third board. This is, this is a crucial fight. This is a very crucial battle because black certainly has a very, very playable position and all the pieces on the board. What happened here? Bishop b1, knight g6. Knight c2, very logical, keeping the knight on f4, queen b6. Bishop c3, rook a d8. Yeah, very classically played by, by Samvel. And now the big question after the move queen c2, which uh, Adiban just made. My big question here is, can I somehow make d5, d4 work? Maybe even right now, maybe just straight away. Aha, uh -huh. can you? Yes. Yeah? So, okay. First, let me be very naive and, and take on d4. Sure. And now knight takes a four. I can do it in the mm -hmm. other order, but I was worried knowing, knowing Ajiban. I was worried that if I go knight takes a four, maybe I have to calculate bishop takes a six. And I didn't really want to work. Like king and F then the king moves somewhere, somewhere, right? And h7 is hanging. And if I play g6, you go bishop takes d8. And I'm not in time to take on c1 because the queen is hanging. And maybe the the knight only two gets picked up. So my point was, I want to start with d4 to take away that option. Mm -hmm. You take, it takes d4. I think that's probably the only logical move you even have here. And I go and it takes a four here. Yeah, you, you force the issue, yeah? Yeah, I mean, dc5 still exists, actually. I'm, I'm slightly worried I've blundered something, but... But knight e2 is a check. And then king somewhere, yeah, and... Uh, and steal, yeah? Wow. But okay, I, I, don't, I don't really believe in it. I feel like it's a bit too much. It's two pieces. Yeah, it cannot be real. Okay, yeah, so, sure, we go sure, knight, yeah. so we go knight f4 here. No, but then I'm just doing really well, right? C takes d4. I mean, there is knight h5. I'm a... This was my problem, because I thought I... This is where I basically stopped and start talking to you because g6, bishop a5. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, and I 
I kind of got stuck because I couldn't work out how to deal with this particular calculation because my gut feeling is I'm missing something important and black is doing really well. Maybe 94 here. Maybe this is what I'm missing. Yeah, 94. But I mean, it, 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 it just shows, illustrates that how tricky the position is and, and D5, D4 on the board, yeah, Samuel, after spending a lot of time, he goes for it. This, this is the attitude I like, yeah, because if you rush with D5, D4, you might get lucky and, and the tactics work for you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, then, then it's uncontrolled. When you spend time and you see all the resources for white, you see, you spot all the ideas for your opponent, and then you realize that I'm able to handle them, and then you make a decision that's, that's, that's the way to go. Yeah, and uh, seems like this is maybe just good for black, because if you take on g6, uh, he just instantly goes with xd4, interesting. Uh, yeah, he, he wants to, he, as, as you said, he's Adivan. I mean, he wants to keep this battery. Mm -hmm. he, he just never wants to allow you AG6 and then he will not have tricks or, or some, no, yeah. not even so tricks, he, but some tactical shots. Yeah, okay. So knight f4, knight f4, cd4. If we cannot play knight h5, we have to move the bishop back, right? Bishop e1 or something. But then black is just such a fantastic position. I just go g6. Because bishop h6 also becomes a, a very serious... Like, black is just better. Much better, actually. This is like the dream position for all of these, uh, you know, hanging pawn structures. Where if you manage to push d5, d4, and you don't lose any material doing it, uh, these are these are the types of positions black very often just wins. Exactly. And now also, who attacks whom will be the big question, yeah? Because now... Suddenly yeah. the bishop on b1 and, and the queen, c, queen on c2 are, are just terrible pieces. Yeah, so somewhere gives me hope to, to bounce back because I'm still, I'm, I'm just not seeing the defense for, for Gabi at all. And what about Robert? Ah, so Raunak feels the pressure, yeah, because after Rook d2 now he has He's spent been some thinking half for an a hour. while, yeah. He's been thinking yeah. for a while. Yeah, it's, it's not, not, not an easy spot because this whole idea of provoking g6 and then sudden because just two moves back yeah black has this incredibly beautiful pawn structure where only the g7 pawn can be attacked and somehow it feels like you you can never really get to that pawn the bishop on b4 has no way of of really yes one can argue that if the pawn is gone and then some bishop f8 ideas but this is very very far away and then this rook g3 g6 brings completely new dynamics because now all the pawns are vulnerable on the king side and if yeah. one of them falls, then there is a very big tendency that all of them will fall eventually. And yeah, I, I actually had to, uh, you know, click and check myself because chat told me uh, uh, Raunak has spent 43 minutes here. And I feel like that sounded a little bit too much, but it actually is 43 minutes. Clearly, he is not in love with his position, even though uh, like the engines don't really think Black is in, in any kind of serious trouble yet. And there's a number of moves. Like the trick here is that you can actually ignore d6, d7 as long as it's not a fork. So you can play like rook c6, or you can play, I don't know, rook e4, maybe even rook c4. All of these moves. And your position still holds because d7, rook d8 doesn't actually win very much for white. But yeah, clearly it's it's time to play. Uh, it's time to. Here, I mean, rook d6 check is kind of scary. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, rook c6 is humanly more, more understandable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the point is, I mean, white's position looks very, very beautiful. But for white as well, it feels like maybe every single piece is as well positioned as it's possible. Uh, and if d7 is not an actual threat, then it's not that clear how uh, Ovanisan is supposed to make progress. Yeah, but I understand Raunak's problem that uh, basically I believe that he felt like he has everything under control a couple of moves ago and all of a sudden he has to kind of deal with many issues and, and those issues are not really obvious because no, you just feel no. like if White will be able to push D7 then, then completely new dynamics appear on, on the board and he would love to find a way of blocking it. Yeah, that, uh, So probably the move that he's really considering is, is rook ed8 and then try to, to block it on d7. But that, but allows, that allows white to get the rook to e7, right? Exactly. And, and okay, after rook e3, then of course black will play h5 in order not to g4 mm -hmm. happen, but then rook e7. And then you have to deal with this kind of demons that 
that which slightly unpleasant position you, you want to choose. And maybe one of them is perfectly fine and the other one might end up uh, being very, very unpleasant. Exactly, yeah. So it's, uh, it's understandable. And, and I think it's good that he's spending so much time here because uh, it's, it's clearly an important decision and decision that he has to, he has to you know, weigh, uh, weigh correctly. And finally, uh, Gabi has made a move, uh, the move yeah, to I, seven. I ended up cheating and, and actually asking the engine and the solution apparently, and yeah, I mean, how you're supposed to play Rook, Rook C6 here. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is, I don't know about E6, or maybe E6 for some reason doesn't work straight away, but after King B1, you need to see the move Queen E7, E8. Yeah, well, you know, actually, I I had both moves in my mind, but I did not know exactly how to get it done. Yeah, I mm -hmm. I felt like I don't know exactly what Rook C6 does to the position. And the second move that I was looking was immediate Queen E8. But I also felt like, no, it's, it, it just can't be. And, yeah. and this is how it goes. Yeah, that suddenly computer combines the, the two, two moves in, in a perfect move order. Yeah, and, and then mm -hmm. it all makes sense. But, yeah. but over the board, it's so difficult to believe. And now we see that after bishop a7, the evolution immediately jumped very, very high because this is the logical way of things developing. Yeah. And interestingly here, uh, you know, since I'm still sort of cheating, I will stop in a moment and switch back to reading our wonderful chat. Uh, if you push a6 immediately, your advantage is actually not that huge because after fe6, fg6, h6, you don't actually give mate just yet. And black will perhaps, if, if the rook moves back, black will be able perhaps to play queen c5 and get the queens off the board. And that obviously improves your chances significantly. But if Gukesh realizes that now he actually has time to make one final tightening up move and just go king b1, uh, black will just find it very, very difficult to, uh, to find good ways to continue because queen c5 now no longer does anything. I can just play like queen d3 or something. And the rook on a6, I think now the biggest problem black has is this rook on a6, uh, which seems like it's a very useful piece because it connects to the g6 pawn and maybe, you know, creates additional defensive resources. But in fact, with the king on b1 and no queen c5 anywhere, I think maybe queen c4 is a winning threat now, followed by fg6 and then rook takes g6. So, uh, yeah, if Gukesh realizes he doesn't need to hurry and he can make one more uh, quiet little move, improving his position, he will be, uh, I think, a, a good favorite to, uh, to go to six out of six. And yeah, it's amazing how well he is doing here, you know, uh, uh, leading his team on on board one of of his first ever Olympiad. Yeah, I mean, but but King B one is a very very tough move because yeah. the temptation of of breaking immediately and dealing with checkmate is so huge, right? I mean, it, it feels like mm, there is no way it's it's not going to work. Uh, if if he really plays King B one, I I will be truly impressed. Of, of course, it's also his style because uh, I have mentioned this many times on the, on the broadcast that. When, when there was this uh, incredible training session between uh, Kram, Vladimir Kramnik and the Indian junior youngster genius mm -hmm. prodigies, then uh, after, the, after the training session, there was an article and there was a question that what Gukesh find the most amazing in the, in the training camp. And then Gukesh's choice of the whole selection that Kramnik showed during that 10 days Training session was some very, very small little king king g1 to h2 in a rate against Georg Maia. Yeah, so it's very much in his his feeling. And when I read that article, I thought, like, oh my god, if if that's the move that, that Gukesh was the most impressed, then then I'm very, very much impressed by Gukesh. And and I don't know, have mercy on the chessboard because this boy will be incredible. Yeah, and I think I think we're seeing this right now. And uh uh, on the so on the topic of these of these kids being just very very good at chess, look at what uh, Nihal Sarin uh, has done. Honestly, I don't know if it's great, but it's just like this bishop on d4 was so beautiful, and he just correctly estimates that if you take with the rook on c3, he will play rook b8, rook b3, and he's completely safe. And if you take with the pawn, he will play rook c4, and then if you attack this rook you just start attacking the king so like rook f4 i think is the cleanest yeah it just immediately equalizes but the fact that 
you know, nothing, nothing is stopping him from giving up a very, very beautiful bishop, which was dominating the entire board and like just completely. And to be honest, I'm even liking the way how Malcolm Yan reacted to it because. Yeah, uh, just make who, a draw. Who, yeah, just, just make a draw. I mean, just make a draw. Yeah. Yeah. You, you immediately feel that, wow, this, this boy is, uh, is, is playing very well. It doesn't give me any chances. I don't have any chances. Let's just uh, finish this game because yeah. Rugby 2 now I'm expecting a move like King F1. Yeah, and I mean, Rugby 3 makes an immediate draw. But even if you just allow White to take on A4, it's also just a very, very easy draw. Like you play, I don't know, G5, Rook A4, Rook A2. It's just... Of course, yeah. I mean, with this post structure. Yeah. And Gugic actually goes E6. So Yeah, he goes E6 because, okay, it's so tempting to go E6. Yeah, I mean it's it's a very understandable decision. He also it's moved twenty three. He has twenty minutes left. He he cannot really you know afford to go too deep into <clears throat> into what's going on here. So it's a very understandable decision. But it's also I think a huge improvement. Not just because I know the evaluation, but simply because uh, Gabi's play will become much more straightforward. If you allow e takes f seven, you probably get mated. So you play f, f takes e. White will have to take on g6. If you allow the g file to get opened, you will get mated. So you play h6. Yeah, and well, the move that I wanted to discuss with you was rook h5 while we were while we yeah. were talking. Yeah, exactly. Rook h5 kind of bothers me as well. But I, I mean, uh, making sure that you don't get queen uh, queen c5. Yeah, but I'm wondering if I can actually play rook f5 here. It looks very strange, but I think maybe. Wow. It because I have queen e6 there, right? If you if you take and you give a check from c4, I have queen e6. And basically, I'm hoping that the best you have is to take on f5 twice. And then I get the queens off the board. Yeah, and I mean, let, I... let me just tell you, I mean, how many times I have seen you escaping like this uh, from difficult positions? Yeah, this is this is your incredible strength, spotting this uh, fantastic, you know, Counter chances, these dynamics. Yeah, I think this is the Grunfeld. I don't know, maybe the Grunfeld feeling, the, the spirit, the whatever. Yeah, I think. But you, but you have you have driven me personally crazy many times because <laughs> how many? I mean, first of all, Peter has a clear plus score against me just just to start with, and secondly, I had many many very very good positions. That is that is. But true, but I didn't manage to use almost any of them because always when I made one inaccuracy, you immediately jumped out with some very energetic, very very precise um, I'm play. I'm slippery, yeah. or at least I used to be slippery. Yeah, and I think I, I attribute it not really to the Grunfeld, but to the fact that. My first ever coach, he did his job right in, you know, instilling a lot of love for chess in me. But he wasn't really the kind of a coach who gave you a good opening repertoire. So basically, I was worse out of the opening in every single game when I was a kid. And that kind of, you know, it's a kind of a, you know, sink or swim type situation. You know, if, if, you're, if you're in trouble out of the opening in every game, you have to learn to create problems for your opponent or you will lose half of them or more than half of them and uh, yeah that that's my that's my troubled troubled childhood shining through there i think more than anything else yeah just just when you mentioned look at five i immediately got all this feeling back that i know this you know <laughs> i know this personally yeah, but okay, Gabi is also done to 40 minutes, just as we said that Gukesh had to make a decision with 20 minutes on the clock, uh, all all eyes on this game and they know exactly how important it is, a lot of tension and, and okay, also for Gabi now, how to, mm -hmm. I mean, this FE6, FG6, H6. It's not easy, yeah, not I mean, easy there's, at all. there's so many things you have to consider there, for instance, like in that position after, after uh, H6, there is a move G7, Yeah, and you have to figure out like, do you have to play rook f5 anyway? Do you have to play hg5, take with the king, and hope that there is no mate somehow? Like, it's none of these things are, you know, easy to uh, assess. And he also doesn't have very much time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and chat also showing some very fun lines after rook h5. First of all, they're saying instead of rook f5, the engine says you can even go rook f2, which is really quite quite something. Well, you know, I, I saw the move rook f2, but I felt like, okay, there is no way I'm not going to be able to deal with it, yeah? It's, yeah, uh, like g7. g7 looks like we're giving mate. Like, queen h7 check is a little bit of a threat there. So, like, I don't, I don't understand why this is not completely lost immediately. But, I mean, computers are strong. <laughs> like, breaking news, computers are good at chess. So, maybe queen f7 here, rook h6, rook f1 or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, but yeah, this is already the fairy tale <laughs> business, yeah. And actually, yeah, and they they just win, yeah, on the spot. Yeah, this actually wins for black. And also, but on the topic of Rook F five, the uh, uh, the the guys in chat told me that you can take on H six here, Rook C five G seven, and white is better. <laughs> Which is also like this is actually not as strange. This you can understand, yeah. This this I can believe, because Black will have to return the queen on g seven, and then you just yeah. But then we make a draw, no? I mean, takes we and then takes. Probably okay, probably make a draw, yeah. Yeah, this we assume anyway, that it's and, will... and it's draw and it's a practical game. I mean, the emotions play much much more of a role, yeah. That if you feel like I blundered or I missed an idea, those are the effects that impacts the the players because of course. Uh, everybody is able to see many, many things, but then suddenly your opponent plays a move that you missed and then you immediately say that, oh my God, yeah, how could I miss it? It's a wonderful idea. And then you can't think like a computer anymore. I mean, because if you give a quiet position, we know logically that we are very happy. Everything uh, has gone according to plan. Then we are capable of finding brilliant moves. Mm -hmm. We can find computer ideas without any problems. But if it's not logical, that, that's where our problems are appearing. Yeah, and in the meantime, we have to interrupt this uh, this broadcast to bring you news that Harry is now completely winning, apparently. And yeah, this is uh, this is the the position uh, after knight df1 h4. Uh, Nojek back played rook g3, which was maybe not the best move in the position. Um, kind of driving his own rook to to g3 but he clearly had it like connected it with this idea that he's showing right now sacrificing everything trying to open the g file 93 and black has to take on e3 this move i think is not difficult but after rook e3 uh white actually has a threat of uh, rook takes g4 and the second rook coming to g3 and on my screen i don't know if it's the only move but my screen says king f6 here and, no, and it's ah, we don't know. I, if do, it's I only. don't know. I don't know if it's the only thing that works. I can explain why you have to play it because Rook takes G four was a threat, and we are dealing with it. But no, actually, pretty much any king move is good. So okay, then it's not uh -huh. so difficult. If if F six was the only square, then you could maybe you know imagine uh, not finding it or not believing it's any good. But uh, it's just the strongest. But also H seven is winning. H eight is winning. So it looks like Harry is. Uh, very much in control. And I think the big issue here for white is that f3 is actually not a threat. Like if you go king anywhere, like h8 doesn't matter after the capture. f3 just, I think, immediately loses to knight h3, right? Yeah, and, then the, the, yeah. and, and, and that is and basically what that means is that after the king uh, departs from the g file, you do not actually have a single threat for white. You have to start playing like queen takes b7, but that never is going to work because black is just a pawn up. And eventually black will once again start giving mate on the king's side because you have exactly, so, many, yeah. so many pieces there. So <clears throat> your hope here as white would be to immediately have something uh, something happen uh, with the pin along the g-file, but there is just nothing, nothing there that you can do. So it looks like Hari is extremely favored to, uh, to win. Uh, what's happening on other boards? Yeah, we did uh, Jakubo have its uh, strategical uh, development. I mean, I'm also loving Black's uh, kind of setup that he makes sure that White will never have knight f5, knight on f7, protect the d6 pawn. And he says like, all right, maybe you are better, but I'm just super, super solid. I can go yeah. maybe rook d7, rook d8, maybe eventually I'm a bit surprised. f5. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised c4, c5 is being allowed, but I guess it's not really such a big deal because then you can trade a lot of things along the d-file. and the Yeah, and also the knight on f7 protects the d8. I mean, yeah, this, you can this just knight is wonderful, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is actually a very kind of a harmonious setup that uh, Nodebeck has going. Maybe we play queen g3 and we try to provoke some weaknesses, but... A knight h5 exists, okay. Queen g3 is completely empty because knight h5 exists. Yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, black has really... Put up a very, very solid defense. What about uh, Sindalov against Arigaisi? This now is actually kind of unpleasant for black, potentially, right? Yeah, the, the bishops are traded. Pawn on b5 is weak. On the other hand, okay, white has this weakness on... The, the question is, can white somehow enter, yeah? Exactly, yeah. That, that would be... The, the biggest question I have right now is, does rook b7 do anything? 
If black has a good reply to rook b7, then I don't think it's so horrible. But if rook b7, rook a7 forces black to go on the defensive, then I don't really enjoy this so much. And the reason I'm asking is that rook, a, rook b7, you can try playing rook d2. Yes. And then if you go rook a7, I have rook e6. And I think I'm immediately fine, maybe. Yeah, I mean, this rook so, d2 is the, the, the key counterplay. The big question is that can I eventually somewhere play king, but it's too, too risky to do, it, to, to do it here? Actually, we can continue the line here, rook a7, because I realized the king actually runs away. Rook e6, I take on 7, I go king g3. This might not be very good for black, because rook takes f7 is actually a bigger threat, I think, than rook takes g2. <laughs> so, and the king will be safe on like a 5 f6 and so on. If you continue mm -hmm. driving me forward with checks, I will very happily take all of your pawns. Yeah, and unfortunately, I can't run out yeah. with my king, yeah. Yeah, and this is this is the big problem, yeah. I thought king, king g7, king h6, but unfortunately, you you, you actually run into, uh, into mate. Yeah, all right. I mean, okay, here de definitely Sindalov has some, some chances. The big question is, is it, is it in general terms uh, better or it's just that he has this one chance and otherwise black is uh, holding? Yeah, this... yeah, hard to say. Like, if the king was already on b3, the white king, I mean, white would be much better, but it's yeah. not. And b because of that weakness on c3 that you were talking about earlier, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I mean, it's about as good as you could have expected out of this opening, but... Maybe still not enough. We will. We will yeah. See. Well, the two very important dramatic games. So actually, Harry did take on easy. So we are expecting now, heartbreakingly, if if the king moves, because okay, basically that will have a devastating effect to 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 the game. Indian fans will be very very happy. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Uzbek fans will be very very disappointed that Harry finds uh, the right defense. It seems to decide the game in any case, and what this about? Game, yeah, but the, the match is still quite unclear because yeah, there's the, the match messy, is absolutely unclear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Messy position on board two, kind of. A but messy but hang on, I I felt like you know in Gukesh game also things happen because after e6, Gabi actually, as we said, probably he will not take f e6, and he did not take. He yeah, now, king now he's in trouble. Yeah, now he's in trouble. And now Gukesh, of course, immediately played king b1, g takes yeah. f5, and this is the current position. Yeah, and once again, uh, you want to know what the best move is? <laughs> After GF5? I'm, I'm, I'm back to cheating and I'm, I'm very much enjoying what the, what the machine is telling me here. Well, I mean, okay, you know, if, if you ask me like this, then what, Bishop C1 or...? Huh? Bishop takes B4, you don't even need to spend 10 <laughs> Ah, wow, okay, yeah, because Queen G2 is coming, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, Queen G2 is just winning, yeah, you just need to get to G2 in the game. Well, not ends, but you are pretty much winning. Queen g2, and basically, if the queen goes to d8, you have e7. And queen d3 check, you can go. I don't know why it doesn't. I, I guess there's some perpetual. Ah, you queen can, c2, then. Yeah you, can, yeah, you can play queen c2, yeah. And, yeah. and then rook g8 check, and that, that end game probably is completely winning for white, right? Yes. Wow. So basically, then one move away from, from winning the position if bishop b4 is, is played. Yeah. Other, I mean, it's not like it's the only move that wins, but it's the move that pretty much finishes the game if he finds it. He is much better after he, he takes f7 and like it's difficult to completely spoil the advantage here for, for Gukesh, but the way to really put everything everything to bed is to play bishop takes before here. Yeah, exactly, because uh, the, the move that I mentioned, bishop c1, I, I, I said it out of, uh, out of fun purposes because for example, rook takes e6, and after queen g2 already, rook g6 cements yeah. the position and you, finish. You, you Black is the one you, you who can't is winning. Be so slow, yeah. You, the, yeah. you had the right idea, but you cannot really spend the full tempo on on something like this. He has 17 minutes, and he is obviously like uh, as is what one thing that kids that age probably have generally have no problem whatsoever with is precise precise tactical calculations. So I'm expecting him to. Uh, to spot something here. Yeah, the well, game Malcolm Jans Niha Salin ended in a draw. That was expected. Uh, what about Adiban Sakyan? Because this is the this is the hope that I feel like uh, mm -hmm. Armenian no, Adiban, team can bounce back. Adiban is in trouble. Yeah, Adiban is a pawn down. Queen takes Sivan is. I think the biggest threat Black has maybe is actually Bishop f5. Or in like in more general terms, if you give Black the move. Just g6 kind of wins because if you play g6, there will never be any counterplay anymore. But 
Yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, definitely, Adiban needs to be very, very careful here because there, there seems to be no particular counterplay. I thought maybe knight d5, but if knight d5, I think knight e4 is very, very effective. Yeah, but now also queen c1 because the knight. Oh, is yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. Queen c1 just wins, yeah, of course. Yeah, just to highlight because before white had queen f1 and we were not sure if we want to play this endgame at all because we wanted already more, but now with knight on d5 hanging. This is, of course, an elemental win. So, yeah, that's why White doesn't have this tactical trick. Uh, okay, maybe he would love to include, but HC Bishop F5, you also mentioned, yeah, that Black is also setting mm -hmm. Bishop F5. Yeah, yeah and Gukesh... in a lot of, lot of troubles. Yeah, and Gukesh has opted for Bishop B4, of course. Yeah. Good player, good player in good form, you know, on a high, knowing that he is playing well, you know, playing confidently. He and just... also ex everything logical, yeah, because he yeah. felt like he needed to use the momentum with e6, so he played the move e6. After the middle, he played king b1 because he, he knew that he anyway needs this move king b1, and after gf5 then finds the tactical shot with bishop b4. Mm -hmm. Queen takes b4 is played. And, and still, because the point will be this e7 tempo, yeah? So we can just mm -hmm. play queen g2 and then queen e4 takes, takes e7 and... Yeah, it's exactly the same, yeah. You, you still win in exactly the same fashion, pretty much, yeah. This is, of course, the heartbreak problem. Maybe from, from distance, Gabi simply missed that, that this e7 will be there. Mm -hmm. Possibly, yeah. Or maybe he just couldn't find anything better to yeah, do. Yeah, that, that's the other thing, yeah, that you just couldn't find. So, all right, this is uh, Gukesh is crushing through. Adiban is in some kind of a trouble. And what about the Sadvani Hovanesian? Because this is then also very, very important. Yeah, it's a, it's a becoming a more and more important game with every moment. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, ah, rook d7, g4. This is the point. Yeah, ah. rook d7, g4. So... Yeah, this just loses on the spot. You can't do this at all because G4 just instantly collects everything. Yeah, there is there is a lot of pressure on Raunak as he's done to six minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and the Armenians are fighting. This is exactly the true Armenian spirit that, yes, uh, Gabi, Gabi gets crushed. Gukesh is just unstoppable, but uh, the, the other boys uh, are, are fighting for the team. Absolutely, yeah, and we, we, that is not the suggestion that we switch, but I, I, I'm keeping an eye on the, on the women's boards, and it looks like India will win quite convincingly against Georgia. We'll look at it later, but uh, that match stands really, really well for, for the Indian team. So, uh, But look at this, we have been talking about for Hari to, to move the king, move the king, he finally opted for the most human approach. No, I mean, okay, let me just cover the g5 with knight g6. And after bishop e2, he wants to go f5 or something, yeah? And just give mate on the h file or something. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah, bishop e two and then f five. Yeah, this is the e f queen f five. Oh no, bishop e two, bishop e six. Whoa. Ah, <laughs> just simple. Yeah. Yeah, f five doesn't work at all, but bishop e six uh -huh. wins. Yeah. <laughs> queen e six, queen g three, or queen e three, whichever like whichever one g three. Yeah, because otherwise. Yeah, I prefer to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I prefer to take this one, yeah. Yeah, well, this is the, this is the human way of uh, of dealing with problems. Yeah, this is very nice. Yeah, just just total control. Yeah, so basically, Harry, I can't even imagine any any dramas here. It, it looks like it's a very very comfortable victory. Mm -hmm. Wow! In in the vivid game, it it featured exactly the move C five mm -hmm. as, as you suggested. But I'm not sure if it's an aggressive move. It's maybe also for, for Vidi just time to, to think about how to secure a normal position. Yeah, I think, I think he's probably just not better here. Uh, yeah. Because the, Black has enough control over the dark squares that, you know, the, the, the absence of the bishop on g7 is not yeah. really... And, and uh, the news is that exactly, of course, bishop e2, bishop e6 on the board by Harry. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I think that uh, designation come at any any moment because... Well, he will take on b7, he will play on for a little bit, but... Yeah, well, but I mean, it's point because you are also getting checkmated, yeah? It's, yeah, uh, it's, it's not good, yeah. It's, 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 it's not clearly. just a piece, but it's a, it's a losing position. So this also explains why Vidit, I think, is thinking that instead of playing some murky, uh, unclear middle game in the time trouble, it's... It's safer to just uh, clarify the situation. Yeah, but uh, if, if we're looking for hope for the, the Uzbek youngsters, uh, Sasi is not doing great on the last board. Sasi is definitely uh, in, in, in some trouble. 
uh, because yeah, black actually got the bishop all the way to d4, and I mean it's not a horrible, horrible position, but black has the pair of bishops. There is this kind of a tension on the queen side, which could get resolved at any point, and the position could open up. And if the position does open up, uh, the two bishops will be uh, quite valuable. It's also importantly black to move because I thought maybe bishop g1 right now would equalize, but it's not white to move. Yeah, please. bishop g1 or knight e2. Basically, the, mm -hmm. the both ideas. Yeah, be because but yeah, thanks uh, to the pin, I'm also setting them bc5. Yes, yeah, so, mm -hmm. but it's black to move. It's black to move. And interestingly, uh, they followed what we were discussing in the game between Sindarov and Erigaishi. And King Ivan is very strong, apparently, because the idea, I think, which, and what I missed, is after Rook B2 here, you can play Rook D1 and just completely kill off that counterplay with Rook D1, D2. And, uh, and then White actually starts threatening Rook D7 very, very strongly. So Rook D2 may have been a mistake. So this might be this might be a, a, a live game for for Uzbekistan in terms of hopes for uh, equalized. Yeah, well, actually, I've seen this. Yeah, that Sindarov lost, then Abdusatov equalized, and and now if Abdusatov loses, then then maybe Sindarov will save the match. Uh, but as 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 you said, yeah, Shashi with uh, with three minutes on the clock, move twenty six in a position where he's slightly slightly maybe worse mm -hmm. is uh, is is also not a dream spot. Absolutely not. No, against. Uh, I mean, uh, Shamsidin Vahidov is arguably sort of the the, the lesser known uh, player in this team. The rest of them are more of a kind of a household name. But he is also clearly very very good. Twenty five fifty, and uh, you would assume he is a very good. You know, kids generally are quite good at like blitz and uh, you know exploiting people in time trouble and and practical play uh, in these types of spots. Uh, yeah, I think I have heard him being quite successful in in these rapid uh, online events. Uh, so I'm I'm guessing that his rating 2550 is only 2550 because he haven't played enough games. He's probably clearly yeah. stronger. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's generally how how these things work for sure. Yeah, Eddie guy she opted back to to look d7. Yeah, he wants to yeah, he avoid any of these false lines, right? Yeah, he realized what was happening and went all the way back. But even but here, he's done to two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and and the position might actually be objectively quite annoying now. Like I can go rook d1, for instance, and if you go rook e7, because I assume the the end games without the, the that pair of rooks are quite poor. Yeah, ju let's just show for our audience why we are worried of this trade. Yeah, that it looks like okay, okay. I let me put king e8, not to get it's still king c2. c2. Yeah, it's just very very annoying. I mean, and here it's just lost, probably not yeah. annoying, but simply lost. But yeah, it's uh, those types of positions are just strategically incredibly risky for black. And but basically, you... like ten moves ago, or maybe five, six moves ago, you already highlighted that if the white king would not be on f2, but it would be on b3 or c2, we would be claiming almost winning advantage. Mm -hmm. And and with king e1, white is on the right track. Yeah, he's getting yeah. closer to that route. Yeah. Um... So I'm interested in Rook D1. I don't think it's the only move, but I, I, I'm definitely interested in trying to calculate Rook D1 here. And as I said, like Rook E7, I want to give a check from D8. And after King G7, I want to play King G2 and claim that once again, I am very much improving. I'm now threatening Knight D4, which was something that I could... Ah, Rook A6 exists. Yeah, okay. Not so clear. I plundered Rook A6 completely. I thought I was safe, but... Yeah, suddenly some can't play. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, still lot, lot to play for. But yeah, White is White is pushing in the game. Shashi, some. Uh, yeah, he 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 chose a very interesting option here. I, I was I was thinking about this. He played b five. I assume with the idea of meeting knight e two. Uh, I guess we go b takes e four, d takes e four, and then we go f five. Yeah, I mean, also trying to make use that the bishop on h2 is completely shut out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, something and, and like a breaking. And, and we start breaking stuff up. And yes, white can now get rid of one of the bishops, but the cost of that would be to give us a very nice protected passer in the center. And that bishop on h2 is just ugly. <laughs> it's just not a good piece. Yeah, BTX C4 on the board. I'm also very, very worried in general for white because mm. with two minutes on the clock, if black gets, you know, all these moves very quickly um, by played by hand and uh, you are left with this very passive position and maybe with some very precise concrete moves, computer moves, you can hold it together. But but humanly speaking, you feel like you are under very serious pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not fun at all. And the the clock situation makes it 
uh, e even more problematic for for Sasha here because yeah, it's it's bad. Well, uh, yeah, it's it's lot of tension at, at the moment. Also, it's clear that uh, yeah, Harry, this is the comfort of of India that uh, Harry is winning. Uh, with it now, the the question of with it is that. For example, seeing that Eligaish is under pressure and Shashi might be in danger, then then it, it might not be so easy for him to, to decide what to do. Yeah, this is kind of the, the tricky spot. Mm -hmm. That that should he now, for example, trade queens or should he keep the queens on in, in order to generate some some play? But okay, he's experienced enough to, but for example, just to highlight, for example, a move like Queen is an impulsive move that Let's not trade queens in order to, and then the knight jumps to e6, and the knight jumps to f4, and all of a sudden we are dealing with all kinds of knight forks. Yeah, it's a, uh, in particular in time trouble, but there is not much time trouble. But honestly, in these types of endgames, yeah, I just expect him to get the queens off the board because I think all of us have this, not even, I want to say irrational, but it's not very irrational to be honest, the kind of a fear of the, the queen and knight combos. And here, you, there's not an, even one knight, there's two, and the, yeah, they do jump. Uh, but this endgame, like I go king e6, king f7, king e6, maybe even I go immediately f6, f5 somewhere. It's just not very much. Yeah, I mean, it's completely equal, but I think it's it's perfectly fine to to acknowledge that it's equal mm -hmm. and, and not be fooled by it. Because maybe Arigaishi will hold the position, maybe Shashi will not even uh, have problems. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to highlight yeah, that this is a, the, the constant kind of problem. Yeah, Rook D1 played by Sindarov. We, we might be seeing this Rook E7 line. Yeah, we could be potentially, yeah. Yeah, and, and what about Gukesh? Because, of course, yeah, Gukesh... Yeah, Gukesh is, yeah, I think... He, he, I mean, you don't resign, but it's bad. Even the pawn on A5 is now gone as well. Yeah. Because I mean, see. everything went along the lines uh, we discussed. Takes, takes well, E7. No choice. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah everything is forced. Takes, takes E8, queen. King G7, queen E5, check. Rook F6, queen G5. Rook G6, queen takes A5 in order to have queen E5, check. Yeah, yeah, in order specifically not to lose the pawn on E3. And now he'll go king C2, king B3. And yeah, it's just, it's just very, very bad. Uh, this being a team competition, you of course continue playing, but uh, yeah, there is not much of an expectation you can hold this. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. So basically, Gukesh is winning, and it means that Armia needs to bounce back in one of these uh, mm -hmm. Borsi Borfo games, and it seems like they are having chances. Yeah, Bishop A3. Ah, finally, the move Bishop A3 had been. Ah, white played queen c2, yeah, trying well, to Yeah, I mean, Ajiban, and, and also, like, this is this is such an impressive decision. I don't know if it's the best move in the position, but simply, like, you have this situation uh, before he played queen c2, Ajiban is sitting here thinking, okay, I'm a pawn down, you know, I would like to have some counterplay, I would like to, you know, preserve some hopes of playing actively, creating some tricks. And then he spends some time, realizes there are no tricks, and in fact the queen on d3 is vulnerable to some bishop f5 ideas. And he just calmly offers a queen trade, trying to simplify into a very, very bad endgame. Uh, and such decisions, just from a you know, psychological, practical viewpoint, they are actually quite difficult. Because, you, you know, you, you hate voluntarily simplifying into bad endgames. Nobody likes that. But sometimes you just have to do it. There is no choice, and uh, that's what he's done. But yeah, he's in trouble, clearly. Yeah, he's he's in trouble. The clock situation is kind of normal, that none of them feels like this is a terrible time trouble, because the position is relatively easy. And then it all comes down, because, okay, there is very good chance that uh, Samuel bounces back here. And and the position between Robert Hovannes and Raunak, and look at this, the computer bar is going crazy. Raunak is down to 41 seconds. And apparently somehow losing, yeah, or almost losing, yeah, maybe. Yeah, G well, I mean, there is also this bishop c5 problem of, of oh, actually getting oh. checkmated. Okay, you still have b4. Luckily, you have b4, but... Uh, oh, but then, then your king is also becoming like a huge target, right? I think, yeah, that, that probably wins, yeah. Because the, that's the trick now with look on e6, you, you can never actually block on, on the seventh rank. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I've completely missed bishop c5, and yeah, it looks, it looks crushing. Bishop c5 before, we can even include rook d4 there, for instance, like try to maximize everything, <laughs> try to actually give mate on the, on the queen side 
might force you to play king b5 and then i will take on b4 and i will have additional checks available later in the game like it's just horrible yeah yeah this is it's just completely horrible yeah but it 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 felt like yeah that the position is fine until nothing happens and then suddenly something happened around now spend a lot of time i know it for myself that mm -hmm. actually if you spend more than 40 minutes it's a very bad sign usually you don't continue on in in the right way it, it means that you are just terrified and you don't know you lost your direction yeah yeah absolutely yeah be, because people might think like ah okay you, in, in 40 minutes then you can't know in 40 minutes you confuse yourself all the more yeah that's uh, yeah more than anything else yeah you you start overthinking things and overcorrecting and uh yeah, basically every move which disturbed you a bit, uh, you, you already eliminated that I have to find the better one and then your mm -hmm. brain suddenly all the good moves you have calculated and then you end up making a, I have done it myself. I, I don't think that you ever done it because you, you are not famous for thinking for 40 minutes. Well, I've, I've, I've definitely, yeah, I, I, have, I have personal experience with this for sure. Yeah, I've, What's your record, by the way? Well, 86 minutes against Levon from Morelia, and I know this exactly because he hit me with this queen A4 novelty in the English with A33, this G3, queen B6, knight DB5, knight EG4. And mm -hmm. then I can take queen takes F2 and he played queen A4 and I almost fell from the chair. <laughs> and I spent 86 minutes and I have the score sheet, I have the proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think my record is actually from a tournament when I was like 12 years old. And I still haven't beaten it, which is like 63 minutes on one move. Uh, but I, but I have to tell you that the, the, during that 86 minutes, at least I calculated a lot. I feel like then I, I at least made a lot of sense out of it. But yeah. when I'm calculating for 40 minutes, then then it's finished. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that, all right. That so what do we have? So Adiban yeah. is fighting by trying to trade the rooks because Black's rook is very strong and and always the back rank issue is a big problem. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I like taking, taking and playing g5. Even because like I, this. So you give me knight d3? Yeah, and then I want to play bishop c3. I want to make sure I don't lose this pawn on c3. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm forcing you to put the knight on g3 because from d3 it's very difficult to attack my pawn on c3. And then you also want to pin me with bishop f5. Yeah, and that as well. Yeah, this yeah. is why I was... Uh, I mean, it's very promising for yeah. for Samuel. It's uh, I I don't know if it's already winning or not, but it's definitely very very promising. Uh, yeah, and then like, Bishop C5 like B4 you... on the board in in the Homan yeah. Young game. I'm guessing almost anything here is extremely strong. Like I like I like Rook D4 for kind of aesthetic reasons, but I don't think it's forced or or required or anything. I think it's just a kind of a cute move, and I like I like a. Yeah, and, and what a dramatic match. I mean, yeah, it, it looked like, yeah, Gukesh is winning a very important game against the very, very experienced and very powerful Sargisyan. And then suddenly on board three and four things escalated. Yeah, it, they, mm -hmm. they looked more or less normal. And okay, Adiban was in some kind of a trouble after his uh, initial aggressive intentions backfired. Uh, but Raunak seemed to have had, uh, had things under control. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but now no, not anymore. Yeah, not not anymore. Yeah. Okay. Rook a seven check played, king b five. So probably a takes b four and then rook a five check or. Yeah, I guess that's his. Honestly, but, you can yeah, take also bishop, bishop yeah. takes. Yeah. yeah, you can also take with the bishop and continue chasing. chasing. Yeah, because then the king will never be safe. In fact, yeah, mm -hmm. this bishop b four. Yeah, looks... in practical terms, you kind of never save this. Now it feels like because. You, you have a weak king now, the a4 pawn is probably gone if white wants, and the pawn on d6 is continuing to be a huge problem. So maybe like our, our original uh, assessment was a little bit too uh, naive. And, yeah, uh, well, actually, I, I have some, some feelings from yesterday. Yeah, this uh, Lagarde, Maxim Lagarde against Moranda, yeah, when, when also Black's king was in a lot of trouble. Yeah, there is definitely some some parallels. Similar, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I mean, basically, yeah, uh, it's it's obvious that uh, India too will get the get the lead, but uh, actually they can even lose the match. It's uh, yeah, any, it's, anything is possible. It's now possible that they lose. Yeah, which which sounds which sounds very strange. Ah, actually, Gukesh is now winning a rook, or so Gabi has yeah. to design. Yeah, Gabi, Gabi will just just resign here. Yeah, 
because uh, you, you have no squares. If you go to the G file, queen G4 wins, and otherwise queen B5 wins, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this okay, con congratulations for Gukesh for this incredible win, and then, of course, for six out of six, because this is yeah, six truly, out of six a, truly astonishing. Something. Yeah, quite something. All right, so let's maybe take a look at the United States. Levon has drawn his game. Mm -hmm. uh, Vesli saw Idani Puya game has also ended in a draw. So all for all eyes on Fabi. Yeah, all eyes on Fabi, but Fabi is seemingly completely winning because Bishop B4 wins, right? Yeah, that he's doing, and also he still has 11 minutes on the clock. So yeah, it. Uh, Bishop so, B4, D5, though? How do we win? No, ha hang on, just so that we know exactly what mm -hmm. happened very quickly. King b2, queen h4, rook g2. I mean, just a very little, little move, but very important one to getting out of this diagonal with the king. Queen b4, rook f7, bishop c2. Queen d8, rook g6. And rook f6. Wow, so he was forced because the pawn on d6 was lost otherwise. Yeah, yeah sl slowly but surely he improved to such an extent that, yeah, uh, Parham was forced to go for this. And obviously, b takes c4, rook b6 is the trick here, but... I, I guess bishop e4 provokes d5. I think instead of d5, there is no move there at all. And now we just need to find a way to, to put this to bed somehow. Um, also, we have... Ah, queen b7, rook c7, still protect. Rook c7 yeah. is the only move there, but... Yeah, that I mean, is also I mean, this geometry. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah maybe... The, <coughs> sorry, maybe this endgame is actually completely lost as well. But I'm also wondering if, you know, maybe I can play something like... I just. Help me choose a square, like king a3 or king a1. I don't know which one do you like better. Okay, maybe king a1 now, yeah. because the queen on d8 uh, maybe disturbs. Yeah, and my, my question is, how, wait, like, which move can you even make here with black? Queen b6, maybe. Yeah. Or queen f8. Queen f8, rook g1, check. Yeah, you... Ah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, this g file is open. Oh <laughs> yeah, my I, have, I have all kinds of, I have all kinds yes. of little tricks there. No, yeah. actually, Fab even opted for queen d2. Apparently, computer agrees because he, it's... Ah, yeah, okay, yeah. The, yeah. That, that, that is clever. Yeah. Just yeah. give me... No, okay, it's, it's just this. such, I mean, when black had to play the move gf6, then, then it was clear that the game is over because without the pawn on g7, this structure is just hopelessly lost. Yeah. Yeah, it's he smart. just checkmates. And, and this is what we have been talking about, that, yeah, Fabi is incredible. I mean, who cares about the rating at the moment? He, he fights for his team, and after winning this game, and I'm pretty sure now that he's, he's winning this game, uh, he, he gets himself into the right uh, mindset, and things will be so much more easier. Yeah. It's it just so important psychologically to, to win that, that first game. All right, so he wins. So what is? But okay, there is no way of yeah. Then United States wins the match basically because okay, th this is just a draw. Yeah. I mean, and, I would uh, I would even go that far that if, uh, for example, Lenny would know that this is important, he would still maybe try to pretend somehow. Yeah, but, but it's very difficult to pretend here. Yeah. yeah. And in the meantime, yeah, some more drama in the Norway match. Uh, it's not very important, but I want to show you one specific position because uh, as someone who, you know, is friends with and I have worked with, with Arian uh, in the past, I uh, always kind of care a bit more about Arian's games. And uh, Queen B6 is a huge blunder and he is now lost. Uh, hang on, no, 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 it's not here. Uh, slightly later, yeah. This is still fine. Ah, they already continued after Queen B6. Yeah, it's uh, it's continued. Hang on a second. Let me let me find my spot. Because also here I see that the evolution bar screams that it's over. Ah, uh, yeah. Move move uh, thirty three. Uh, move thirty three. Yeah, in this position, uh, Arian decided not to take on B two, and the evaluation went from zero 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 to minus nine. Wow, but I mean also that after queen b2 you are not getting checkmated, it's like... Yeah, but uh, this, is, this is what I... And, and I thought, okay, if, if it's zero, 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 and there are four pieces left on the board, I will be able to calculate why. And I can show you, like queen b2, obviously queen g3 check, king g1 only move, queen e3 check, king h2, rook f1. So we are now currently, you know, under the threat of mate in one with queen g1. There's only one check in the position, right? So we give that check, king h7. Only one check in the position. We give that check. Queen c2, yeah? King, king, king h6. And this is where I got completely stuck. Because we don't actually have a check from b6. It's controlled by the queen on e3. 
Ah, but this one, yeah, or what? And the draw is, and I think the only draw actually, is rook h8, king g5, rook h4. Rook h4, oh my god. And ah, then, because otherwise we have queen h6, yeah, against rook yeah, h5. And like... Oh my god. And I actually, I still don't quite understand why... Ah, okay, we have a check from h7 and then a check from... Whoa! From, from e4, yeah? This is so beautiful. Yeah, the point is we have g3 in the end. G3 at the end, and then we are winning, yeah. We have g3 at the end. It's just... And I mean, yes, it's a huge blunder in terms of the evaluation. But I'm assuming he had like maybe two, three minutes at the time. And you have to see rook takes h4. If you don't see rook takes h4, there are no more checks in that position. Rook h5 doesn't work. Yes. Rook h5 we take and then we have queen h6 and the checks completely stop and you resign. So, I mean, it's a big mistake, of course. And it will probably cost him the entire... No, but game. hang on. Now, Black what? has played the move queen. Ah, he can play queen f6. This is this is quite shocking that this look and... Yeah. Ah, can, the king yeah, on h2 is locked. Yeah, the king on h2 is completely locked. Oh, so my so. God. But this is so easy to miss in time trouble. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he opted for check, but now the pawn on b2 yeah. is protected. Now, now, now you're... Yeah, you, you like your, your king is much less safe and you're, there's a pawn on b2. You're always losing this. Ah, yeah. But I mean, okay, this I want to highlight that this is... I mean, usually such look and games, you would say like from 1,000 times, 990 times are dead draw because the look is behind the pawn. Yeah, yeah. You have your own D pawn, but just to illustrate what is the problem that we will be zugzwanged. Yeah, the, you, and also a 4, of, I mean, a 6, of a 5, a 4, a 3. Yeah, also. this is still yeah. also a problem. Yeah. yeah and, uh, wow. I mean, okay, yeah. So basically, Adrian is losing. What is Magnus doing? He's winning. Yeah, Magnus, that was a very fun game as well. And yeah, he is winning, but, you know, in human terms... It's not still, yet over, yeah. Yeah, this is still a position you can fail to win. Uh, because uh, the king on f6 is <laughs> not very safe. But yeah, I'm expecting him to convert this, of course. But but hang on, so Johann Sebastian is winning. I mean, he was winning uh, throughout uh, since mm -hmm. we saw. Uh, and John Ludwig Hammer... Okay, yeah, this can go either way. This is a very tricky position in time it's trouble. It's a very sharp position in time trouble, for sure. And then he played his last move with two seconds on the clock, yeah, because he's back to 32. Yeah, Magnus wrecking. must be really enjoying all, the, really enjoying all of this, yeah. Uh, and also, yeah, another topic that I just wanted to address uh, that I, I see being mentioned in chat uh, about uh, Gukesh's current performance when he, he is six out of six. Until he makes a draw, nobody really knows what his performance is because the performance calculations just get completely uh, screwed up when you're in 100%. Uh, so, yeah, it's currently probably saying something like 3450. Uh, but until he makes a draw, uh, you can... I mean, it's very impressive, but we don't know what the figure is, basically. The, the formula gets completely screwed up until, until it's not 100%. Uh, wow, I'm also seeing that yeah, Anish Giri has won his game. Jordan yeah. Fanforest has also won, so they are leading 2-0, but Van Madame lost on the last board, so everything depends on the on the third board. Okay, B Benjamin has things under control, so it seems like uh, the Dutch team should win. Yeah, they're 2-1 they're up and, and, and uh, Benjamin should be completely safe. Like, I don't know if he is better, but he should be completely yeah, safe. Yeah, we, we haven't had a chance to even look at the, the match between uh, Serbia Radek, and uh, Poland. Radek apparently blundered something. Yeah, at some point I was uh, I saw in chat that people were saying uh, were saying that Radek blundered. But it seems... Ah, ah this is like this study. This is like, like very much like that... Hang on. We Hang on. Explain this to me. Uh, I thought Ivic wasn't even in, like from our conversation earlier, I had the impression that Ivic isn't, isn't even there, but he is, yeah, he's playing. No, today. no, he, he is there. Yeah, oh, he, okay. was, he just lost the game and then he did not play, but I, I did not understand. I still believe that one has to put him no matter what. Yeah. Um, all right. So he's putting pressure against Radek and what about Duda? Well, I mean, Jan Shishtov is uh, fighting for survival. Is much worse. Like this rook ending, like I can take on h5 and then on a5, and this is like that. Uh, Should be winning, yeah. Caruana Abdusatorov endgame. Yeah, it looks. Okay, there it was three passers, but. Yeah. Uh...
<laughs> but I mean, uh, two, two are good enough. Yeah, so okay, basically, enough, yeah. very, very tricky situation. And on third board, also on third board, actually, the Serbian team is doing great. Wow. Okay, this is a yeah, very Serbia, tough match. Serbia could, could, you know, create a reasonably big upset here today yeah, against, yes. against Poland. Yes, and then Spain, what do we have? So, Shilov drew with Quezada. I think that that was the maximum that... Uh, Shilov could hope for from that game after being surprised in the opening. Probably, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nino is three points down? Yeah, no, he's pawn up, but it's tricky, yeah? Oh, okay, sorry, he's white, yeah, yeah. But it, actually, Ruxi 2 is... Ruxi 2 provides so much counterplay that maybe he's yeah. not even better, yeah? Yeah, so. exactly. The evolution bar also says it's 0-0, zero, zero, and uh, Santos Latasa drew on board three, and board four, we have some big mess. All right, so then, then Cuba versus Spain is also a completely open match. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the engine says this, this really weird position is much better for Black somehow, but yeah, who knows. And what about Fabi? So Fabi is about to... I mean, if this is no checkmate when, when you, you target Black's king with queen and the rook, and your king is perfectly safe, then that yeah, you can be also, just You can also throw in Bish before at any point, like you, you, you have... Uh, a lot of leeway here. Yeah, so basically, okay, we are expecting Fabi to win this game and win the match. And wow, I mean, we have developments because Sindarov seems to have missed his chance and... Yeah, something happened here, yeah. And okay, th this case now, unless... Well, I don't... This is not in time because we have King E8 after Knight no, H7. No, it's just a draw, yeah. This should be a dead zone. What about Shashi versus Vahidov? Wow, this is a problem. I mean, the bishop on h2 is stuck completely. Yeah, we take with the f-pawn, I guess, right? And we force you to choose. I mean, d5 is also probably good, but I would like to take with the f-pawn and make you open the c-file, and then I would like to kind of... Well, to me, it wasn't so obvious. I mean, also, d5 is smiling on me so much. Yeah, that... I mean, it's a very pleasant position, but how <laughs> yes. do you win that? Oh, very, very difficult. I mean, for example, for me, this would be a terrible spot because just I love both moves so much that uh, making a choice is, uh, is I, difficult. I agree, I agree with you in general, yeah, but I'm still like, I would like to, to end the game now, in particular against 30 seconds, but it's move 36. Maybe it's not as important. But yeah, like the position after FE5 is just so horrible for white. You, you, you probably have to take on D6, and then I can just take on D6 with my queen and then put the rook on C2 and start attacking from every every side, like there will be rook c2, queen g6 ideas, and the pawn on e4 is always very weak, and the, the rook can go to c3, and and there's still no counterplay anywhere. Like, why yeah, does no counterplay. Okay, does black actually play? finally opted for d5. Okay. Yeah, okay, white at least now is more or less safer. Yeah, he, he tries to get his rook to f3, protecting on, on the third rank, keeping an eye on, on f5 move. It mm -hmm. will be a long uh, regrouping position because I thought like maybe I have to get then later a5 in and and try to get something on the on the yeah, last. This actually there. makes a lot of sense. Just play a5, maybe even straight away because b takes a5 is never going to be a good move. And then we go like rook c a6, put the bishop on c6, put the other rook on a8, and eventually exactly. yeah. and eventually open the a file. And once the a file opens, we have our avenue of uh, you know. Uh, Ingress. And we forgot to mention, but it was so obvious that yeah, Hari did win his game. And Vidit versus Yakuboev. What is this? I mean, now I feel that with these double pawns and exactly night end game, maybe Black has some kind of chances. I don't know. There is two options with G5 and F5. I can try to break the position. For, for example, if I can get knight C5 and I can get F5 in. This, this yeah, together would I, be very unpleasant. Uh, this is not really going in the direction Vidit would prefer. You, you assume that such night endings still should be holdable, but yeah, this is not, this is definitely not going uh, according to plan for Vidit for, for sure. Yeah, and it's move, move 38. Yeah, still two more moves to, to be played in, in time travel. Maybe try to move this knight and then try to get the king to easy. That, that would give some safety. But then you have to deal with some king d6, king c5 ideas. We did opt it for h4, at least stopping, at least stopping g5 ideas. But f5 will be still there. 
All right. So yeah, in Abigaishi game, knight a7, king e8 happened. Uh, in Shashi's game, black played the move a5, of course. Yeah, rook f3. Yeah, the question is, like, white wants to be able to at least hint at the move before b5. Like, if you play rook c a6 here, maybe we play immediately something like queen d3, and we start asking you, can you control before b5 so easily? Because otherwise, yeah, he played rook a6, yeah. I think Sashi should play something like... But the problem is, like, queen d3, black will play queen c6, yeah? And yeah. block everything off, and then continue with, like, bishop b5, and then we double on the a file, and then we open the a file. Yeah, I think it's just horrible for white. I think, actually, the more I look at this, the more I like your approach. Uh, yeah, because this bishop can never, ever enter the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that, that's the safety safety approach. Yeah? <laughs> okay, yeah. <I> just <laughs> making sure nothing happens. Yeah, so, okay, still anything can happen in this match as well. And what about the Armenian match? Uh, Adiban against Ten Sahakyan? Resigns, yeah. Resigns, yeah. This is finished. So basically, Armenians equalized the match. And there is only one more game, the, the Sadvani game against Robert Hovanesian. And Robert apparently is completely winning according to, to what we see on our screen. And, uh, and now the time control has been passed, yeah. So he has all the time in the world to, to think. The king only three is not a very promising piece. I still don't really understand why it's so completely lost, but I guess you just combine the threats to the king on e3 with the ideas of pushing the deep one, and it's very difficult to coordinate against it. Yeah, look, see, ah, he opted for look, see one. Basically, it shows confidence that he's not even slowing down despite the time table being over. I think he has calculated already a fourth win. Ah, king, king, king gc, look, one is like a checkmate idea. Yeah, yeah. I was actually kind of planning to start with king g3 just to take away some squares, but rook, uh, rook e1. You're also like right now we're threatening uh, rook e1 check, then rook d4 check, then bishop d2 check, and I guess we just win by force. Yeah. So yeah, very clever idea by by Robert, and yeah, Robert seems to be uh, uh, seems to be very much in control here. Yeah, I mean, okay, if we are talking about underrated, underrated, look at his rating, 25.91. I mean, I think yeah. he had 25.91 uh, some seven, eight years ago. And then <laughs> he was a very, very stable 26.30, 26.40 with the potential that, I mean, for example, in the Grand Swiss tournament in, in Isle of Man, I believe that in the last round, he was fighting with David Anton. Exactly. I think he mm -hmm. was like on plus, plus three or, or plus four. They were still fighting for something. And then David Anton went on to win that game with White. And uh, that's why he had this incredible tournament. But yeah, Robert is a very, very tough player. Always very well prepared, the, the one, yeah. one has to say. But, but simply he lost like 30, 40 rating points in one tournament in this European Individual Championship in March. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ivan, I, I still haven't entirely refuted uh, rook e4 here, which I think is the only move you can even make, because it creates at least a threat of rook takes before. Uh, no, if Sorry, you, which I, move? Rook e4. Rook e4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think probably you can just go like rook e1, rook f1. And then, like, I don't believe king g5 can be any good because rook d5 looks very strong, right? And then bishop d2 or g4 or something. And if you go king e5, you are maybe one move away from relative safety. But I think g4 just wins. Because mm -hmm. then bishop c3 check and the king actually gets chased down. Yeah, probably. It, it really looks very, very bad. Yeah. Wow, I mean, okay, yeah, this is this is how it goes. Yeah, that uh, it, it looked like India too is doing brilliantly and then suddenly there is a chance that they might lose this match and yeah as a captain that's life yeah, yeah as a captain I, I feel I feel very very uh, uh well I mean it's too late to be worried I am like panicking here as, as a captain for uh, for the kids and yeah I mean it's it's a very I think on in a match on four boards if your top board wins, you don't often lose the match after that, but seems like uh, the Armenians are once again showing just how uh, how strong their you know quote unquote tail is. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, this incredible incredible fighting spirit, and and when they feel like they are fighting for their country, the national team, it it gives them some wings. I I just 
Uh, because everybody wants to fight, yeah. <laughs> but mm. but often when you want to fight, it puts some some extra pressure, and then you maybe even perform uh, less effectively as as otherwise. But but for them, it just doesn't work like that. They just start to play like monsters. It's it's really incredible when when this unity also of, of the team. But it's still very early to say anything. Is the sixth round? There are no guarantees whatsoever for anything. Yeah, uh, but still extremely impressive because uh, I mean. Our Armenia has a fantastic pedigree when it comes to doing well in Olympiads, so it, it shouldn't be such a surprise. But this is a much diminished team compared to previous years, simply if, if not for any other reason, simply because Levon is now playing for one of their direct com com competitors. You know, imagine the same team, but also led by Levon on board one. Uh, but they're still, I mean, it, currently as things stand, they will likely go into the rest day on 100% which is a tremendous, tremendous uh, result, of course. But, you know, actually, I had this conversation with Arshak. We were talking about this, that, yes, of course, on one side, it's, it's a terrible blow to, to lose Levon from the national team. On the other hand, now suddenly all the players who were, like, behind, yeah, and they never got a chance to, to really uh, to challenge Levon, yeah, because, okay, Levon mm -hmm. is one of the very best players. They suddenly might take more responsibility, yeah, they, they suddenly open up and they feel like, ah, this is the moment when we can also take big responsibility. So for, for the team itself, of course, it's a big loss. But but I see also these psychological things, just like Vishina not playing in the Indian team and and he's opening up the way for the for the youngsters. Yeah, this uh, is a good point, it, yeah. it's always always a, a tricky mental spot. It's a, it's a good point because yeah, it's a it's a chance for the new generation to really step up and to really show what they're what they're capable of. And so far, they are delivering you know in spades. It's fantastic what they're doing because I mean on paper. They're they're a very strong team, of course, but they they shouldn't really be uh, crushing everybody. But they are. Yeah. Well, actually, there is a very very big question. If, for example, as it stands, they manage to win this, and uh, United States team uh, wins as well, we might be seeing Armenia versus United States. And I'm very very curious. This is a very big question for me. That will Levon play against Armenia or not? But when it comes there, we, we will be dealing with that issue. We yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, obviously, it would be you know on a purely emotional level, and considering how deep you know how deep the bench is for the American team, they don't really like quote unquote need him in that match. They can play without him. It would be easier for him, of course, not to play against his home country. But yeah, well, yeah. If basically, if it would be my kind of guess, I would almost give like hundred percent that he will not play uh, against Armenia. But okay. We will see that later. For the moment, still, Armenia has to win this game. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and of course, the Indian fans are hoping for a miracle because, okay, mm -hmm. it's, we have seen it till it's not over. It's never over. Who knows? Maybe some yeah. some incredible things happen. Yeah, but with the time control uh, uh, behind us, maybe we can take a look at what's happening in the women's because we've we've done our bit uh, in the beginning of the show and haven't returned since. Yeah, I mean, uh, India will will win. I think pretty pretty certainly. Like this is a very very winning position for Hampi. I think rookie seven followed by C seven. You probably win all of the all of the materials. Uh, and as I stupidly like to say, uh, yeah, one game I really hopeless, yeah, with this yeah, one game I really wanted to show you by the way is game three in this match because I briefly looked at this. And yeah, the game is over because yeah, Knight of Seven is about to come in, so uh, completely lost for for Black. But we left it specifically on move sixteen, and after Bishop F4, I was advocating for Knight of Five, and instead Leila played Knight B7, and I thought, okay, Knight B7, fine, why not Knight B7? Because it will come to C5 next move. Look at the reply. Wow, amazing stuff! Yeah, look at the reply. This is this is so sexy. I mean. You just give up this entire this in a very very quiet position. You just give up a full exchange, and it turns out that those pieces on a six and b seven are so completely stuck that there is no way to get them out, and you you lose the bishop on uh, on a six. And uh, uh, after that, Vaishali went on to very uh, very uh, comfortably uh, uh, convert convert her advantage into uh, into a full full point. Yeah, and then I see yeah that the, the, on, on the other two boards with black pieces they drew quite comfortably. Yeah, Batsyash with the Harika game ended in a draw, and also uh, Melia Salome Tanya Sajdev game ended in a draw. 
Yeah, it's a very important, I mean, a super crucial victory. Yeah, we, we have talked about that. These are the two monster teams. Whoever wins makes a giant step forward. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, of course, not, nothing is clear yet because, okay, Ukraine is there who is also hoping to, to, to be in the fight for gold. And if, for example, Georgia beats Ukraine and Ukraine beats uh, India, then everything kind of uh, equals Equal out. Right. Yeah. But, of course, if, for example, India can win another big clash against Ukraine as well, then, then it's an uh, incredible step. Yeah, and in, in, in the match between Romania and, uh, and Ukraine, which is hugely important as well, there is this endgame, which <laughs> this was another thing I wanted to talk to you about, because this is just such a rare endgame. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this before. And uh, interestingly, I think the engines think this is closer to a draw than it is to a white victory. Well, for a human eye, I think it's just a completely winning position for white. No, that, that's, yeah. that, that would be our take. Yeah, but I think, first of all, maybe it's important, actually, that we have some counter threats, that this rook on h3 is preventing the king from, let's say, going to c3 before c5. But also, I was trying to figure out what I think about this in kind of more general terms, and I thought maybe the reason it's not entirely winning is that uh, if you imagine uh, black actually trading the light squared bishops, which... Currently, I don't have an immediate way of doing, but let's say it happens. Let's say I go bishop d7, you go, I don't know, uh, b4, bishop c6, we take, take, you go a4. I mean, okay, we, we, yeah. I should not just, care just, about blundering, yeah? Yeah, yeah just, just to put the position on the board and discuss it, yeah. I think maybe the reason this is not immediately winning is that it looks horrible, but because it's a dark squared bishop, I can very actively try to trade my rooks for the pawns on c4 and b4, right? Because it's a wrong, it's a wrong corner. But still, I, I can't believe it ever happening, yeah? Because I will push b5 and I'm going to push the pawn to a6. Yeah, I'm curious. This is how many? This is two, four, seven. Hang on. Isn't this available already? Yeah, cool. I mean, if, if this is not, uh, then, then I basically stop playing chess. I mean, I, I, I really feel like if this is not a win, uh, I, I perfectly understand your reasoning that, yeah, you are active. Yeah, that, that's what really disturbs me, that I might not be able to start pushing my pawns. That, that's my main concern. Yeah, it's too many. I <laughs> Obviously, I was a little bit too, too hopeful. I mean, the... I'm pretty sure the seven-piece table base already exists, but it doesn't exist online. It's a little bit too large to exist online. I think it's like I will I will make a huge mistake with the number, but it's like I don't know two hundred terabytes or something. It cannot really be hosted online. Uh, but okay, first of all, anyway, let's just uh, check out the match situation. Yeah, that yeah. Anna Muzichuk has won her game, so they are leading. This this gives the the chance to to tolerate that terrible position because yeah, Maria's position maybe it's holdable maybe it's escapable but it's it's a horrible position however ukraine is leading on board three uh natalia buxa managed to make a draw okay that, very safely uh, very safely hold, held this position yeah no, no that, that's that's fine and uh osmak yulia is should be around equal i mean it's equal yeah. material and yeah uh, should be equal so basically everything comes down to to win us game against maria yeah so actually, that endgame is going to be hugely, hugely important in the context of the match. It will be very interesting to watch what happens. And let's go further down a little bit. So uh, Kazakhstan uh, playing against Azerbaijan, draw on board one. Uh, board two, Bibisara is actually in trouble against uh, uh, Govar uh, Bidulayeva. I don't know if it's lost, but it's definitely not very, uh, not very fun. Yeah, yeah, this one is uh, this one is terrible. And, uh, and by the way, Nova... yeah, uh, let, let's finish uh, the, the roundup here. This is I thought white must be in charge, but actually, it's difficult to uh, add more pieces to the attack. So maybe black is kind of fine. And in the meantime, I just want to say that Satirius, who has access to things I don't have access to, has checked that endgame we were discussing. If the bishops come off and the pawns all reach the fourth, it is winning for white. So. You okay, can't. luckily I can continue playing chess, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was... Uh, okay, I felt like I'm not risking much, but still, I like to keep my word. Yeah. And this is, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Uzbeki 
uh, the, the, the Kazakh player uh, losing on board four. So currently, Kazakhstan is just in a lot of trouble because yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Azerbaijan won on board four, is better on board two, and board three is quite unclear. Next match is uh, Poland against uh, uh, Serbia. And actually, Serbia is playing Poland today in both, in, in both sections, which doesn't happen very often. Uh, yeah, Alina Kashlinska is just, it might look unclear, but it's just completely winning for Black. Yeah, this looks winning, yeah. The way the pieces are, you can't stop a4, a3, basically. You just get uh, you just get crushed by the threat of a4, a3. You can't really make a move that stops a3. Uh, so... Yeah, so Alina will win. What about Mon yeah, Monica is also winning, so Monica Poland winning. might be crushed. Crushing, yeah. Olivia really has already yeah, they're, won. They're basically three nil up with, uh, yeah, and and better on board four as well. So yeah, Poland, Poland. Is. Yeah, it, it can easily be four zero actually. Yeah. Wow. All right. So Poland is is crushing, and we have uh, the Netherlands versus France. I see that uh, France has won a game. But France has also lost the game, so it's 1-1 one, one at the moment. So let's take a look at Alina, Alina Roberts. You remember I told you that she is very, very yeah. gifted, very talented. She and she's actually winning, winning now. She was completely busted out of the opening. I, I actually, because of what you told me, I, I, I checked this game out earlier and she was in a lot of trouble uh, out of the opening. The engines were saying that she was more or less lost, but she is now seemingly completely winning because the, the g pawn is too strong. Yeah, she's winning uh, second board. Okay, this we already saw that uh, the Netherlands team lost, but on board three, they won. So this equals out. And board four, what do we have? Uh, Black is completely winning. So yeah, in fact, they, then, they then, then, has all then the, the Dutch team is in total control. Yeah, yeah Dutch team will do will do well. Uh, well. Uh, German Israel. That's that's a big duel. I mean, Elizabeth, ah, what is the situation? Wow, actually, Israel has already won the match because uh, Dina Belenkaya has won on, on board two. Mm -hmm. And uh, on board three, they have also won their game. So on, on the top board, Elizabeth Pitts is, uh, but it's also a very drawish position. It will be a draw, yeah. It will just yeah, she, draw. she can't even strike back. Yeah, so Germany goes on to lose to, to Israel. And Armenia what about the Armenian playing, team? Yeah, Armenia is playing against uh, England. England, yeah. Uh, Yavanka is just completely lost against Elena Danielian. Uh, on board to Armenia is also in total control. So, yeah, it looks like Armenia will be comfortably. Hang on a second. Actually, board three and four aren't that clear. Oh, no, but I mean, okay, it's uh, no, it's Armenia black here. Uh, it's right? Armenia, yeah, okay, yeah. Armenia, Armenia will beat England. The question is with which score, but potentially maybe even a large score. Uh, this is uh, Slovakia versus. Yeah, let, let me quickly check out on the Hungarian girls. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the our young big hope uh, Joka Gal won her game, so we are leading one zero. The top board was a draw. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's a very very funny pairing because. Uh, uh, Huang Trang Trang, uh, who is uh, playing for Hungary, of course, she is Vietnamese, uh, plays against her own country. She made a very, very solid draw. On the second board, Galatizia is in... Wow, I mean, okay, it's it's complete madhouse because the bishop probably never moved in this game, but yeah. still like, goes on to win. I'm checking, yeah. Seems like it's it's been on a fade the entire game. <laughs> no, it moved a little bit. It moved back. Uh, it moved, yeah. Moved a little bit, but, but yeah, unfortunately, it seems like uh, winning. And and on the second board, this is a this is a probably lost look and game. Yeah, with white to move, I guess you win. Yeah, you go rook c six here, and uh, I, yeah. I assume I assume yeah, you yeah, win. rook c six just wins because the no, we we, we you have probably it. no time to get the king because the pawns are winning. Mm -hmm. Wow! So despite Hungary leading, it's it's a very dangerous spot. I mean, we can very easily end up losing. It just like the the Indian two youngster team, yeah, that they they were leading, but they might lose the match. It's 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 very tricky. If, was there any particular match that you still wanted to bring up? There's some there's some drama, people, because obviously, uh, I, I guess because of Magnus playing, people are very uh, interested in the Norway match. And in the Norway match, there's a lot of drama because we we showed the Tari game. Yeah, uh, Arian has resigned by this point, 
And apparently, uh, Jon Ludwig lost on time on uh, move 38. Ah, uh, yes, but it in was a, also... In a very unclear position. Yeah, very yeah. unclear, yeah. In a very unclear position. You remember we mentioned that he he played his last move with two seconds and he, he overdid it, yeah? Yeah, he, over, he overdid it. Yeah, that's at least what, what we suspect. King F1, uh, yeah, Rook F8 was not the best move in the position, but it's playable. It's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but then he, uh, yeah, we, we think he may have uh, uh, lost on time here. So despite Magnus probably winning his game again, uh, they're fighting for a draw in the match. They probably will make a draw in the uh, match. Because, yeah, Arya lost the game. Yeah, Arjen lost. Uh, yeah, Magnus has already won. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, so all eyes on Johan Sebastian. I mean, Johan Sebastian can equalize the score. But I feel like a little bit the position is more complicated than we expected back then. Yeah, no, it, I, I really I really didn't expect it to take, first of all, to take this long and secondly, to be so unclear. And yeah, there was a, definitely there was a point in what, at one moment where he was just completely, completely winning and... Still, uh, still, I mean, okay, it, it should be a win, but uh, yeah, we expected it to happen earlier and any other dramas somewhere? Uh, let me briefly check. Um... What happened actually between uh, Germany and, and Italy? Also yeah, let's, good... let's, check, let's check that for a second. Also a big question, because actually at some point I saw that Vincent is in a trouble already. Well, he's oh. not better anymore. Maybe he, yeah, like, yeah. clearly he's bishop on e4. And kind of weirdly, he uh, sort of straight out, straight after the position that we were discussing, he could have gone for, like, mating. After he have uh, bishop takes f6, he could have gone for some ideas of, of going for mate, and instead he chose to win this exchange, which, uh, I mean... Ah, some... because, okay, yeah, it's also very tempting, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Queen b3, and yeah, the problem for him is that there's this rook a6 fo followed by bishop b6 exists. And yes, you do win the exchange on a6, but you improve black's position. Strategically, black is much, much happier now with this very strong bishop on d5. Yeah, but probably he hoped that he will have some very quick bishop cc and the pawns will be vulnerable. But yeah, black is so happy that he's alive. Yeah, he, he gets counter play. Mm. No, pra practically, yeah, you should never give this option for black. Yeah, he, he plays e4, of course, you have to get rid of this weakness, open some... Yeah, and... Some files, th but think, yeah, this is, probably, this is not very unpleasant. Yeah, he probably ends up making a draw, but uh, yeah, it's it's not much fun for white anymore, clearly. Yeah, it's uh, clearly... Uh, although, okay, black clearly wants a draw because uh, Luca has been repeating. Yeah, Luca Wow, has... I mean, okay, this means that the match is uh, completely cl unclear, yeah? Yeah, so what's happening in the match? Uh, ah, no, okay, this is wrong. This this is this yeah. has nothing to do with reality. I mean, I this think this probably, game just ended in a draw, yeah. Yeah, this probably has been a draw by this point. Yeah, yeah this was a draw. What wasn't... about Nisipian? Because we were worried for, for Dieter. Dieter was at some point better, but now it's not very clear anymore. I mean, he, I don't think he can be worse, but it's definitely not clear if he is. But it's a very fighting position, yeah. Okay, so this is... I mean, I'm trying to make sense of, of Vincent playing for a win in that... I think ah, it's because, because of, of this one, yeah. I yeah, because, because of, of this, this one, one. yeah. This, but, this, because if this game would end in a draw, believe me, I mean, what is your take? I mean, only black can play for a draw, yeah, yeah. I mean... In, in Vincent's shoes, I'm, I'm taking the draw instantly. Yeah I, yeah, I don't think I can be better. Exactly, yeah. But now, now I understand, yeah, this is the problem, yeah, that on board for... Germany is in a lot of trouble. I almost said automatically we are in trouble because, yeah, I'm, I'm of course rooting very, very much for the German team. But, uh, yeah, okay, so tough. This, this yeah. is the Olympics. None of the matches yeah. are easy. So many dramas are happening. Ah, Radek is, Radek is escaping. This is good news. For... Okay, yeah, I mean, maybe it's still tricky, right? It's a little bit tricky still, but he should make a draw here, I think. Yeah, he should make a draw. Yeah, okay. With king on e5, yeah, this, yeah, this is I mean, important. With the, king on, with the king on e5, yeah, he should make yeah, a draw. It, it was all tempo-tempo, because if white gets king e4, king d5, then then who knows? But yeah, with mm -hmm. king on e5, it's a draw. Yeah, but Duda is in, Duda is in trouble on board one, and uh, uh, Kashra Piron has already lost, so... Yeah, yeah, this is... I mean, they will lose the match. They, they have no winning chances anywhere, and they're on minus one, so... Poland will lose to uh, to Serbia. What's happening in uh, uh, England's uh, England's match? England match. Uh, just a second. 
Yeah, yeah, England against Austria. Of course, uh, Rager, yeah, Rager is a monster for Austria on board one. He's a very good theoretician and a fantastic player. Yeah, he holds his own against everyone. Draw McShane on board to draw as well. So we have two draws. Yeah. Bloberg, yeah, my, my favorite player has lost to David Havel. Uh, so England is just in control, right? Because Wayne on the last board probably isn't losing this, is he? Like no, he might be losing to to he might be, yeah. and, You know, I I feel like uh, Dominic plays so well that I have to make a research uh, after this game. I I gonna find out where he was born exactly, what are all he because of course he's Hungarian, but I think that he was already born in in Austria and probably his parents are are Hungarian. With Ho name Horvat, of course you are Hungarian. Uh, so far, he has really been outperforming. He has won already many many important games. Yeah, it's it's interesting that like the bar is suggesting this is easily winning for White, but how exactly? Yeah, and, and the last move was G5. Yeah, very, very important by, by Gavin. He wants to break the structure immediately. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm very... hang on, but I can put my knight on HD, protect the F4 pawn, get the king. Ah, yeah, that makes... And actually, you even have the bad pawn, so you can't hope for any stalemate with the H pawn as well. But I go and then knight f3 is a straightforward win, basically. And I can do the same also by, by eliminating knight takes this. No, then it's just uh, ah, just to win. Yeah, it's just winning. Yeah, okay. Wow, then it's going to be 2-2. Two -two. I mean, this Austrian team, it's uh, incredibly tough. I mean, they are putting up incredible resistance all the time. And apparently, yeah, just briefly returning to that match, yeah, Dieter is now just... If if the transmission is correct, Dieter is suddenly completely winning. Yeah, that's what I felt like. Yeah, rook e7 seems to be... But he winning. wants to go rook 6 d7. What did he miss? Like, why is this suddenly so horrible? But, okay, queen e5? Oh. Yeah, this, <laughs> I mean, is game, this is just game over. Yeah, just like we come in and we, we collect it, everything. It, yeah. it should be, yeah. Because, for example, even rook e7, rook e7, rook g8, we have ideas like rook e6 with rook e6 and the pin. I mean, okay, if this is not a complete win, nothing is. Yeah, rook, rook d6 wasn't great. Yeah. Instead of rook d6, uh, the suggestion was to play uh, either d4. d4 is like the most logical move in the position, yeah. Or bishop b5 somehow was holding. But, but, but to be honest, at this moment, I already felt like, because knowing that, that Dieter is very strong with initiative, I, I really believe that he might win this. Mm -hmm. But still, it's a, it's a kind of a very, very large mistake there. Uh, and I mean, Queen e5 is completely winning. But the, the, the thing is, even rook takes d7, rook c takes d7 is also pretty much completely winning. So it's just a, such a strange, yes, such a strange yes. decision by Francesco. I, I guess he just kind of panicked. Uh, perhaps his sort of slight lack of experience uh, being, you know, yeah. suddenly... Well, suddenly... actually, the, the good news for me is that I'm, I'm very happy if Dieter wins this because maybe then, then Vincent will stop playing for a win where, where he has no right to play for a win. Yeah. I mean, I see the evolution by says that White is... Un, I mean, White is perfectly... But still, I mean, I just... My human eye can't really believe that White can play for a win in this position. Yeah, it's it's strange to me that it suggests uh, suggests White could be better here. I, I don't really understand why. On the other hand, I know that, yeah, Vincent is a very uncompromising player. You know, I often tell him, yeah, just make a draw and but he no, no way. He is not the type of guy who... who for some reason, he, he hates the draws. Yeah. Which, which probably the, the public loves, yeah, because he has so many decisive games. Uh, me as a trainer, I love his fighting spirit, but sometimes he, he drives my nerves to, to the maximum, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, back to, back to the top boards, right? Mm -hmm. What do we have? Is, is Raunak escaping? Wow, King on F2. Uh... It, it's... Uh... I mean, it's it's tricky because if you don't get mated, then at least you are provoking your opponent for something, yeah? Yeah, but has to be, I mean, has to be lost somehow. Well, yeah, I, I saw I mean, the I just, I just bar is, is screaming that it's it's busted, it's finished. I just, I just go... I mean, if I, if I move the rook away, bishop d4 is a mating threat, but you have king e3 somehow by, by miracle, right? Um, 
well, let's not forget that I'm I'm team captain Armenia. So uh, basically, I'm just very very happy here, and I I believe that my player will find the win here with 18 minutes on the clock. For sure, yeah, it's a, that's a reasonably safe assumption. I'm just I'm trying to figure out like why I considering how winning it is according according to the engine without seeing what the engine says like you just feel extremely frustrated that you cannot work it out in three seconds but i am still struggling like if i go rook c1 or rook b1 yeah he's going rook b1 king e3 played immediately of course because otherwise bishop d4 was as i mentioned just mate on the board but now what like how do we how do we end this game completely king e3 Rook B beats you. Okay, Rook B beats you. Okay, I'm done. I I found it. <laughs> ah, and because now, it's double attack, right? Yeah, it's, I just uh, attack everything. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that's it. Um, wow. I mean, okay. Then then he's winning, and Tersakian has already won. So basically, we are almost we are one move away from from sealing the match for Armenia. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty. Much. It's it's. I mean, he will play bishop c4 and continue for for a bit longer. But uh, yeah, you know how that movie ends. Well, then there is also also the other question that do I even want to take that exchange? Ah, uh, hang on. No, I can just win after bishop c4. Your bishop, yeah, because. Bishop c4, bishop d4 check. Yeah, yeah, it's it's bad. Yeah, I'm not yeah. arguing. Yeah. And and Chad is telling us that actually king g1 is even even stronger because after king g1, the threat of rook e1 is just completely decisive. Ah, yeah. Which is quite quite a sadistic way of of doing the exact same thing. But but it can actually easily be played in the game because it's uh, very much in the spirit that black does not want to let the king escape. Yeah, yeah, it's a, King G1 is a very cute move here. I like it. Yeah, it's a it's a very uh, tasteful decision. Uh, is Vidit in trouble? I think that he is in trouble. Yeah, I mean, uh, but ah, know, okay, the, knight d4 will the knight comes to d4. Yeah, he is he is just in time with this counterplay with knight c2, knight d4. Very very important because actually, yeah, what is happening? So Harry got the lead. We have drawn board three. Board four, Shashi is in lot of lot of pain. Yeah, his bishop got back to the game, but I mean, this is still a big pawn, yeah, as, as we call it. Yeah. Yeah. Now the question, like the real question here, is exactly how you're supposed to win this with black. Like strategically, you are obviously completely in in a very very dominant position, but I guess eventually you'll have to push a five, right? Without pushing a five, it will be difficult to convert. But with the bishop on before now, no longer really attacking the pawn on the five at all. I guess you can quite safely actually push a five, and there is not really any. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm really worried for it. the The good news for India is that they don't have to worry really about uh, losing the match because yeah, Vidit has things under control. So, in in worst case scenario, which can easily happen, is it it will be two two. Mm -hmm. it, it can yeah. be two two. It's and, uh, and, and, actually and it's amazing, yeah, that on both India one and India two have won a very very important game on on board one. And they still not managed to to win, and they might even lose one match. Yeah, and uh, briefly, if we go back to Avanisian versus uh, ah, Rook BB two happened. Yeah, Bishop D three is much stronger than Bishop C four, and apparently, yeah, okay, he's gone, he's gone Rook D one, which is the only apparently the only move that wins, but it does win, so it's uh, uh, it's all sort of under control. Uh, yeah, but yeah, he has was... also kind of blitzed it out, yeah, because he only spent one. He saw it, on... yeah. He he clearly saw it because yeah, yeah, he didn't miss bishop b3. I missed bishop b3 completely, but he didn't. And we have to we have to absolutely have to go to the Muzichuk endgame because maybe you have to quit chess. Oh <laughs> my god. Oh well, not really. the question is: Do I have to quit then the commentary as well, or that no, no, no? I, I, I think it's unfair. I think, I think Chad is incorrect about this because I think your your proposal was specifically about the position when the bishops come off, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, and with the, the bishops, bishops, yeah, yeah, yeah with the course. bishops still on the board, it's not really the same. So, also, I don't really understand why this is so horrible now. Maybe king e six and then rook h two or something. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, because this is what we spoke about, that the activity is the problem and that maybe I might will not be able to start pushing the pawns. Yeah, King, yeah, King, D7, D7, King D7, very good square. And now the A2 pawn is gone, right? Because you can't stop Rook H2. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this is uh, th this was the problem. Yeah, that how to how to move this, these pawns. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, yeah. but this would be an incredible save because it would actually mean that they are guaranteeing the, the win of the match, I believe. Yeah, bishop g1 is still playable actually, as chat informs us, because rook g4, bishop h3 exists. Ah, wow, okay. This is. <laughs> but, uh, huh. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't really. Like I just want to watch this endgame. I don't really want to discuss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's uh... it's it's too difficult for me. I don't I don't want to state any opinions on this topic. I just want to watch how it happens. But basically, it means that uh, yeah, nothing nothing is decided yet. Uh, Osmark Yulia is yeah. It we, we see that it's according to computer some zero zero position, but with a knight on f five, jumping around Black's king. Uh, there is some kind of uh, intrigue in the position. Yeah. But on the other hand, yeah, this pawn on a4, if this pawn would be on a2, I would actually uh, start to be a bit more optimistic. But with this vulnerable structure on b3, I, I don't see any winning chances. Yeah, so okay, this is going to be a draw, I believe. And and Magnus has won. I don't know if we have mentioned it yeah, or not. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have. Yeah, Magnus has won. And and it's all yeah, all depends on on Johann Sebastian of of converting this. And I mean, but it's just so unfair if this is not not easily winning. Yeah, the, the two rooks are wonderfully protecting the only weakness on f two, targeting the clear weakness on f seven. No way, Johann Sebastian is not going to win this. Probably, in practical terms, probably not, but there were a number of spots in this game where he basically could have just finished the game altogether, like specifically around move 36, 37. Let me just show you some positions. Um, mm, no, I think it's... Yeah, like Rook of 5, Rook of 5, Queen C2, yeah, there. In, at that moment, he could have gone Knight H4. And... Now the, the rook g4, rook takes h5 is a threat. And if you go knight f6, we go rook df4. And basically everything just collapses. Like you, you can't really even continue much longer because you have to give up either the, the knight on f6 or the pawn on f7. And if the pawn on f7 goes, your position just immediately disintegrates. Uh, so there was one moment, and there was one moment slightly later where also like one precise move and we wouldn't really have a game anymore. Uh, I still feel like he will win, but well, it's. Uh, I think for some reason, Machine says instead of rook e4, rook h4 ends the game because knight g7 is for some reason completely unplayable. I don't know why exactly. Yeah, but this is exactly all the, the time trouble phase. Yeah. yeah. Rook h4 or rook e4, those were the move 40 moves. So basically, yeah, I, I feel like also move 38, knight h4 was, was the time trouble move. It it might have been a blind spot because we see that uh, Johann Sebastian opted for rook g4 in order to go knight d4, yeah, protecting yeah, he, the rook and protecting the pawn. He, he probably did not notice that knight h4 is is legal. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 possible to miss those things very very easily. In in sure. time trouble, yeah. But we we also had, Hova, yeah, and we are having Hovan Esian on our screen. The very, very important game, Rook D1, because we see the compute evolution that it's it's finished, but but look at how he is how he's thinking. I mean it doesn't look like he, he believes that this is completely winning or what. Well, he is I mean uh, Ranak knows that it, it it's all on him. He like if he loses, they lose. So he is obviously going to spend as much time as he has. Uh, available trying to find some kind of a miraculous uh, miraculous save here i just don't think it's there because like if you if you move currently the threat isn't even bishop takes e5 the threat is basically rook e1 rook f2 and then you give exactly the yeah. King, yeah yeah so but but you know honestly if uh, i think you will also do the same when you feel like it's it's done i'm i'm winning then i i want to get up i want to walk around a little bit to calm down myself and by sitting at the board and, and focusing so much, I, I have the feeling that you you might be taking over the opponent's nervousness also. Yeah, that, that's why bit, I, yeah, but I like to distance myself as mm -hmm. much as I can in such moments. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree with this. But 
it's it's very personal. People approach this spot differently, and uh, it's obviously not a mistake to stay at the board. He's gone bishop c4 in order to at least give himself the d3 square for the king. Ah, and hang on, because we were lagging, we were behind, so probably bishop c4 had been already played. Maybe, Robert yeah. is thinking. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh... And, I mean, the temptation might still be to, to, to look for mate, but the simplest solution is just to go rookie one check here and then take on e5 twice, and you pretty much always win that. Well, the other line that I already calculated in the, the other position was something like bishop d4 uh -huh, check, yeah. and if you go king e4, I have bishop b6. Ah, this is very nice. I mean, the, I was ah, very happy, is... but maybe you can go to f4 and then you still have rook e4, I don't know, but... Uh... This is also tempting. Yeah, it is also very, uh, very cute. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now at least we understand. Yeah, that why Robert is sitting there and, and thinking because otherwise, yeah. If uh, usually it's much better to leave your opponent with his his misery and uh, don't don't try to get all this uh, nervous energy from from your opponent. Yeah, and, and now that we have a slight lull in proceedings, I want to you know make a bit of an official statement on a on a topic very important to me. So uh, yesterday uh, during the round, I made some statements in the Twitch chat on the topic of, uh, you know, Jersey not being a real country. Uh, I would like to say that that was obviously not a very serious statement. I know that Jersey is a real country and, uh, you know, Dodgy is coaching them. So, you know, how, how can I not know that uh, Jersey is a real country? And I wish the, the team of Jersey all the best in the world. Guernsey, on the other hand, that clearly is not a place. Like we know, we know Guernsey doesn't exist, right? Sorry, what doesn't exist? <laughs> Guernsey. Ah, no, this, 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 this I have never even heard. Where, where is this coming from? Uh, it's a. Don't worry about it's this. It's a long thing. discussion. Yeah. Okay. Good. It's a, yeah. It's a bit, then, then uh, it's no shame that I don't know, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, bishop d4 check on the board. Yeah, I, yeah, I think this is the most. I mean, it, if you if you can play like this, uh, you are just very very happy. Yeah. yeah. And king check. f4. I think the problem with king, the biggest problem with king f4 is we can go like uh, he's gone king e4 now. Bishop b6 is very very clean. Yeah. Yeah. This this I very much like. Just bishop b6 here and uh, game probably finally stops. I mean, I happen to know Robert quite well because before the 2015 uh, World Team Championship in Sakhkadzor, I went to Armenia to, to Yerevan already a couple of days in advance and I played a couple of training games with him and with Gabuzian. Mm, and uh, well, the reason why I, I asked them to, to play training games with me because I already knew that they are kind of strong. And they also had two different uh, styles, yeah, that... I ah, know he actually took on e5 strangely enough. Why it's, still, it's still winning, yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> but still, I mean, it's uh, it's it's shocking, yeah. A little bit. Okay, if but... he has calculated, then it's fine, yeah. Yeah, he's still gonna win this very comfortably. He just goes, I don't know, just simply go d7 here. Yeah, he goes d7. Yeah. Yeah, so let me just finish that. I already knew that Robert is a very, very good theoretician, so I wanted to practice some openings with him. At the same time, Hovanesian uh, Gabuzian is, uh, I mean, Hovanes uh, Gabuzian is uh, a player who is famous for not knowing theory very well, but he's an incredible fighter. Yeah, so I felt mm. like it's a very nice kind of mix of, and uh, Robert goes for Luki one check just to drive his captain crazy, I not guess. Not really, because if you take on d6, you lose the bishop. So he's actually, everything is completely under control. I go rook d2, rook c2, right? It's just over. Ah, okay. Yeah, this this case, yeah, in this case, it's fine. It's just over, yeah. It's, uh, everything is everything is completely under control here by, by Robert. He He's calculated things. In order not to lose the bishop immediately, I think you have to play king d4 specifically right now. But then, I mean, d7 wins, anything wins. Yeah, King D4 on the board. Of course, yeah, Raunak will try every single try which does not lose on the spot. That's all what he can do now. Yeah, Rook B, I mean, I mean Rook B4, you, you barely, barely even not lose. Like, you, you have to play King D3. I can take on A4 and just continue. Yeah, it's it's hopeless, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and we, we, we see on us. Resigned, yeah. Resigned after, uh, after uh, Rook B4. 
So India finally loses loses a match. Yeah, India two. I mean, India two uh, goes down to Armenia one and a half, two and a half, and uh, uh, Armenia will go into the rest day uh, in sole lead of the Olympiad. There will be some teams on eleven points. One of them, uh, certainly the U.S. And maybe actually only the U.S. because Uzbekistan versus India one might be a draw, right? And Cuba versus Sp uh, Spain might also be a draw. Yeah, well, it depends on this. Uh, I mean, what what is, what about this crazy position? I mean, white is still two points up, but black is so incredibly active, and and white king is in some kind of a mating net. That's why black is a... Ah, it's already a draw. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I just noticed. I guess after rook b3, you just can't make any progress. And they've already had this. Yeah, they went yeah. rook b3, yeah. bishop d1, rook d3, and it was a draw. Yeah, And we're being informed by chat once again. I don't know how how real that is, is that uh, Johann Sebastian actually missed something and it is now a draw. What? That oh, no, very, come very on. Okay, no, this cannot be true. I mean... That would Johann, be very. Johann very Sebastian hard. already so many hard breaks. Don't don't tell me. I I know him very well, good friend of mine, and rooting for him. What? Yeah, I was I was worried oh. of this knight jumping to, to oh, b6 dear. and g5, but oh dear. Oh my God! Oh no! This is so. He after knight c6, black played a five, and. Clearly, the idea was to go knight 7 knight of 5 here, and then suddenly knight 6 came, and you have to move one rook away, and then the other rook gets attacked, and you cannot actually, like, there are no discover checks that make any sense. Rook ff4, you will get hit by knight 6 again. It's just a draw. It's just a draw. I mean, even uh, you, you can't play because the a pawn is still on the board. Yeah, and... Uh, Wow. Rook h4, rook h4 instead of rook g4 may still have been winning. Chat is informing us because I guess it's important to have the check from h8, right? Rook h4, knight g5. We go. Uh, I guess rook f4 first, and then after knight e6, we give a check from h8. We give a check from d6. Yeah, well, I mean, I even can't can't think. Of, I'm I'm just nice. Yeah, it's just it's shock. just heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah, I'm also kind of in shock because yeah, this is just this having... is because I I mean we also know what it means. Yeah, Magnus is sacrificing himself. He's playing all games with with black. Also, everything the they but 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 probably Johann Sebastian just feels too much pressure. I mean, okay, th these kind of things are are just not chess related. This is just uh, yeah. You have to assume that this, this is psychological by this point because yeah. yeah, I mean he is just much stronger than this and uh, and wow. Uh, On the other hand, I mean okay, what a happiness in Australia, right? I mean okay, saving this match. They will win. What do you mean save? They will win. Ah, uh, what? Oh my, yeah, they, yeah, of course, because John Ludwig lost on time. Oh my, yeah, this is unbelievable. Not not winning that and losing on time here in the. Okay, unpleasant position probably, but but still all to play for. They lose. Yeah, this is. Yeah. All right. Well, then then even hard to continue yeah, I mean, talking Magnus, about. This. Magnus must be. You know, it's a it's a difficult situation when you are kind of hard carrying your team like this, and uh, uh, and I mean they they're clearly all trying their best. It's not like nobody else cares, and Magnus is the only one who cares about uh, about the Olympiad. They all are obviously, you know, heavily invested. But in in fact, I think because they're so heavily emotionally invested, exactly. Yeah, it uh, it it kind of gets to them. So what's happening in the German match? Uh, yeah, in the German well, I mean, I'm I'm just see, uh, thinking like things are happening in the Vincent game like I'm expecting that only black I mean uh, Rook is already on b4 I, I yeah, just I can't don't, even I look don't at like this. this yeah and and uh, Dieter has already won so. Dieter has already won yeah this is exactly why I'm saying that okay you you can't be so emotional like I have to play for a win if I mean okay it's practically much easier to play with with the black pieces there in in Vincent's mm -hmm. position and and maybe also Dimitri Kolars is escaping but he's completely yeah. fine now yeah he's, yeah he's absolutely fine now I guess he's not even worse, really. Like you go knight d 
five. Yeah, well, I mean, if he can block on e6, it should be an element uh, draw, right? I mean, I mean he, if, if he could play king g7, king e6, he maybe would be better. But uh, but king g7, king e4 is kind of a problem because king e6, we lose the pawn ending. We can go g4 here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can always sacrifice the pawn. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I would like to, you know, at some point I would like to inquire if maybe I can play for a win a little bit. With yeah, I, I guess understand. I, yeah, you know, I understand your your thoughts, but yeah, this this case now I'm very very worried. Yeah, because okay, now uh, Vincent is down to four minutes. Of course, no, I mean you you just can't. This is the this is the unexperience. You feel like you are young. You have to try to rescue your team, whatever. But I mean, no, no. If you don't have a right to play for a win, you don't have a right to play for a win. Just by suiciding, you will not help your team. Yeah, I think. Uh... Exactly that. It is slightly, you know, inexperienced kind of uh, kind of showing through here because yeah, he feels as a, as the top board of the team and as somebody who is sort of uh, supposed to 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 show the way and to lead the way. He is. Uh, uh, I think he'll just take on c six now, though. I think. Yeah, I, I he... hope so. But even this is very unpleasant. No. Nah, I think it's a draw. No, it's it's a draw. Yeah, I I, it's... I, you know that I'm worrying always too much. I I don't know how I'm I'm working as a. I, that's why I feel like being a commentator. This is exactly the the best job for my my health. Yeah, this is this is how uh, and, I feel. Uh, I mean, by the way, uh, uh, there is there is message in in chat from uh from Bratan three sixty saying that uh, there is a Twitter post from Schachbund. Uh, with the Swane position, because we assume that the Swane game is completely over and there is nothing happening there. But apparently he is uh, in trouble. Let me... Ah, oh, wow. That, so the game is in progress and How would that trouble. be? Like, how how do you get into any trouble in this end game? Like, I expect it to be over by move 30. Like, what? Um, yeah, I also thought, like, okay, probably White has captured on d5. Yeah, look d5, look d5. And I can't really expect any miracles here. Let me let me actually check that. Yeah. So okay. A picture of Gusti being very bored. And uh, uh, so this game is still in progress. Yeah, Vincent has opted for Queen takes C six. Okay, come on, Vincent. Yeah, just just hold it somehow. I mean, okay, just. Oh my God! Avoiding repet move repetition in that position. This is just insane. Yeah, and it looks like uh, it's uh, somehow this got into a queen ending with White having an extra. I assume it's the B pawn. No, it's probably the G pawn actually, considering uh, that Dieter was White. So it's a G like, but how? I just I don't I just can't can't figure out. Is it? Hang on. So we know. Uh, Let's put up the position of move 23 on the board. Let's make some kind of a, you know, retro, retro analysis. So what happened here, I'm guessing, in order for what I'm watching on my screen, on, I still don't understand. Can you actually lose the pawn ending after everything gets traded and white goes rook d1? Yes, this is because you get your king to d4 and I'm getting only to, yes, so rook d5, rook d5, rook d1. Exactly. This is what I was calculating. Okay, but you are not supposed to. Yeah, because this is this is the only way I can imagine this not being an immediate draw. But yeah. and, and actually, these these pawn endings are quite tricky. But I would okay. Assume... We we have to mention that yeah, if if the king is on d7 and king is on d5, then it's winning for white. That, it that's probably clear. is. Yeah, you just know. Yeah, I I don't know for sure, but I suspect it's winning. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I saw Kramnik win it, and I saw Hammer win it against the very, very young uh, Vincent. Also, so yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, at at least that that was the thematic of a game why Vincent had to go for a very bad look and game instead of that uh, pawn ending. So yeah, King D six, King D four, and all kinds of. But but still, it's. Uh... Yeah, because if I understand correctly, like the tweet says. The current position is something like white has a king on g6, a queen on e6, and a g pawn, and black has like a king on d3 and a queen on d4. And in practical terms, those types of endgames with the uh, with the g pawn, they are drawn with best play, but it's so difficult to show that best play. And eventually, like you 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 go down to increment, and on increment you start making mistakes. And I think in practical terms, you very often lose them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, no, no, this what you were mentioning, and also Black's King on DC is not not ideal at all. You you don't have many checks. 
And the G-pawn is very, very nasty. Actually, this G-pawn has, uh, in, in practical terms, very, very, uh, very, very dangerous to, to hold. There was a game, what it was, it was Gelfand versus Jobava, I think in 2007 or 2006, 2006 Dortmund, where Gelfand went on to win with the G-pawn against, uh, that, that's when I realized that, wow, I mean, this, hmm. this G-pawn is very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, so while we're discussing this, we also got some uh, actual updates on that game from Satiris. So it is actually the B-pawn and not the G-pawn, but it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, there you see on your screen that, that picture. I just... No, but that... No, 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 no. I think you're wrong, uh, uh, Satiris, because Rasmus is black. So that's King D3 uh, and Queen D4. Yeah, this is, this is the picture I meant, but it's... Uh, he, he is playing. He is black, he's playing the black pieces. So uh, it's clearly king d3, queen d4 against king g6, queen e6, and the pawn on g4, uh, which is uh, yeah a problem in practical terms. Very very difficult to hold those end games. Uh, extremely difficult. Yeah yeah, very very difficult. Uh, on the other hand, okay, it's it's kind of possible. But then, what do, does it mean? Yeah, that okay, Vincent. If let's suppose he will make a draw, um, if Rasmus loses that game, then probably it's going to be a draw because the, the match is going to be a draw. This, yeah, Br Brunello versus Dimitri Kolars. I mean, I'm expecting some fortress on, on, on e6, yeah, yeah, just going Something like, like 98, going 96, like and uh, yeah, you, you, you don't lose that. Uh, Brunello did find a way to you know to make sure he is never worse, but. You, you like the, the moment you, you get the blockade on e6 going, you're you, you're always completely safe. I don't think it can be uh, it can be shifted. I mean, honestly, it's a kind of a emotional match for me because I'm I have played for two teams uh, really seriously in in club chess. One of them is Padova, where I've been teammates for many many years with, uh, and I'm still uh, I'm I'm still officially representing Padova. Uh, with Daniel Avocaturo and Sabino Brunello from, from this national team and, and from the German team, of course, with uh, Dimitri Kollers, with Vincent and also Matthias Blubaum. Uh, we, we have been playing for Dead Zau and, uh, and we, we are still playing there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lo lot of emotions in this match for me. Yeah, black is going 98, 96, super solid. Yeah, this will be a draw. Uh, Vincent is now also going to, you know, very comfortably and yeah, nobody's playing for a win anymore. Kind of a strange decision to go rook c4 here because the a-pawn wasn't actually being picked up. I don't know why. <laughs> <Yeah>. just... <laughs> like, I mean, now no, I can smile a bit. Yeah, now the, yeah, draw, is, like, the draw is at the corner, right? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, uh, it's weird, yeah. Uh, why, why would you not play rook a2 here and just play the same position but with the pawn on a4 being alive? It's kind of a curious you, you know i feel like okay arbiter and the captain should go there and stop this game draw finish i mean it's <laughs> enough, enough is enough yeah yeah people people seem to be going a little bit crazy here so yeah just 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 cut it out cut it out yeah so uh, what what else do we have what is shashi doing i mean is he yeah let's take a look yeah 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 Fa fabi has i mean we did not maybe mention the final that yeah fabi won but it was so completely winning that that was uh, no question about that. Not and really. Fab, I mean, Sassi. I mean, Sassi needs to to hold this miserable, terrible position. Now we also see that King on H2, Rook on G3, he's kind of voluntarily entering some kind of pin. Maybe he's trying to provoke F5 and... Um, but okay, yeah, after Rook I think F5, F5 is now coming. You can't it's really coming anyway, him. yeah. Because after Rook F1... If I if I want to make sure it happens, I guess I can go rook b seven. Sorry, queen b seven, and after rook e one, I can just play f five now. Yeah, because I mean, rook g four. Ah, rook g four bishop b five. Yeah, you you can't even play rook g four. Um, yeah, such so, a sad position, and and Shashi is down to to less than a minute. Down, yeah, down to forty six seconds against twenty. He's gone rook g six. Rook g six. Yeah, I mean, he. Ah, has that's to... actually kind of kind of clever because he wants to have at least the d six square for the rook if f five happens, but. Uh... And also, he's hunting at some kind of counterplay on the h. I mean, okay, wow, this is some kind of a miracle that he 
managed to how ah no his look was on g6 for a long long time already ah okay yeah, it's uh it's been wow there. okay this is so in fact all this look g6 bishop d2 happened already yeah all of this all of this yeah but i think uh Shamsidin is also doing the right thing in kind of shuffling and continuing to ask small questions and you know he is playing against this will now be a perpetual time trouble for sasha there will not be i mean he can't really get up from the board and like go for a stretch or go to the bathroom uh this is going to be you know the one minute he will have until the rest of uh the rest of the game so i think in practical terms just not giving him anything specific to calculate for as long as possible i think is a very good uh very good kind of a uh practical uh practical decision in all of these types of uh, situations yeah, and also because the, this first match has finished where we have been playing captains. So please chat and, and please uh, our viewers leave your comments to, to know if we should carry on in the next uh, couple of days also with this uh, new invention or, or you think like it's, it's not needed. Yeah, just... Uh, I like maybe... it. I like it. And in particular, if we can maybe agree slightly earlier than, than, than 10 minutes before the match, we could maybe like... If we agree in the evening which cap which match we are captaining, we could, for instance, try to guess what the lineup. The lineup, be. yeah, very yeah, well. This... I'm I'm all in. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm I'm all in, and I think it's also the right to to pick one match per per day. Yeah, because... I think I think more than one is just completely. Yeah, equal. because how many hearts you can have? Yeah, and how <laughs> how many teams you can captain? Yeah. Yeah, Sassi is going for Bishop. D I mean, he, especially with 50 seconds on the clock, he needs to 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 create some threats. But the big question yeah, is: the question is, can you play King King H7, Queen G3 without losing anything? Yeah, that's the big. Still question. doesn't really create any threats. But the question is, can you can you even play this? Because I think if the rook goes somewhere, like if you if you move the rook away from G6 instead of Queen G3, I think a five kind of wins. Because like, not only do I play a five, I also play E4 straight away. Pretty much straight away. Yeah, yeah. And then everything and then everything just kind of collapses. I can take on a five first and then play e4 next move. It just looks completely and utterly lost if you do this. So he he will kind of have to play queen g3 there and uh, and hope that this is somehow not not losing by force. But yeah, it just feels horrible. All of this just feels horrible. Yeah. I mean, it's uh... okay. The good news is that the match is kind of safe. I I don't think that Vidit is in any real danger. Probably slightly, not. slightly unpleasant. I mean, look at this. If it would be a comfortable yeah. draw, Vidit would not be done to five minutes on the clock. Yeah. It's, and by the uh... way, it seems like the the table bases at least maybe five or ten minutes ago when I saw the chat were suggesting that Maria is back to being losing in. Uh, being lost in the uh, Ukraine versus uh, Romania match. Yeah. Whoa. What? Ah, two bishops. Okay, this is... What? Ah, and this is... What? Is this a draw? What? Wait up. Th I mean... this, is, this would be the most incredible draw scene, but this one maybe... This I actually... can actually check because this is only six pieces. This I yeah, can check very, And very... this can actually be more tricky, yeah, because now the... Yeah, the... And actually gave me a link for the seven-piece table base as well, but okay, this is black to move. Uh, black to move. Uh, yeah, best play, you lose in 90 moves. <laughs> Wow. Okay, but these things are very tricky because also it requires brilliant uh, defense. Yeah. Yeah, but also it requires a lot of very very careful play from uh, from White because obviously the reason it's not completely completely lost. Like if if the pawn was on the B file, you just resign, more or less. But with the pawn on A file, if Black somehow manages to trade the rook for the bishop on B three, it's an immediate draw, which is why it's tricky. But yeah, the table base suggests it's. Uh, but interestingly, I want to mention something to you. Uh, if it was white to move here uh, in the position you have on the screen, uh, if it was white to move, uh, somehow a two a three is a draw. All kinds of normal moves, all kinds of normal moves are winning. But if you play a three, for some reason, this is a draw. After ah, that. well, I mean, okay, then uh, probably you will be able to sacrifice on b three somehow, yeah. It, it, we go king b5, and for some reason this now holds. But yeah, this is all incredibly mystifying. And uh, yeah, but uh, to, to be honest, I was so happy when I saw this construction. Yeah, that we can 
uh, just to highlight that whenever black, for example, tries to sacrifice the look on, on BC, then you have A takes BC. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of very, very important. Mm -hmm. But that's the only I mean, thing that I understand about this endgame. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Um, but obviously, nobody, nobody in their right mind ever plays A3. It's just a completely unnatural move. But I thought it was just so funny that you, you, you make this one slight adjustment and uh, the option of taking on B3 just makes it an immediate, immediate draw. Yeah, and and we also still have this last board. I mean, what is this? Wow, you see, look at this. White is apparently making some kind of a progress. But, uh, okay, at least he got rid of the weakness on B3. Yeah, he managed to push B4. But now Black is starting to create counterplay with D3. What is White really doing here? Why is this computer saying that White has some chances? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe computer is just trolling us. I don't know. <laughs> Very possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. In in the fifth hour of of play, you see that Black is ready to to start uh, playing some playing for counter chances with DC D two. I don't know. I, I definitely don't feel like White is now having the right to play for a win. Yeah, it's a uh, it's tricky, right? I mean, yeah, it's tricky. I don't know because we, we Rook D three is basically a draw for at least because I can go Rook F seven and force it back. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and if you allow D three G two, yeah, I mean, why why are you supposed to be better? Maybe we go. No, but that doesn't work either. Maybe we can go King E two, King G two, and this somehow holds. Yeah, but I mean, okay, it's also in a team competition to try to block this pawn with the king. I I don't know. It's uh, very tough. And Irina played the move Bishop E six. Wow. So she wants to give Bishop D seven check. So Rook E four, Bishop D seven check is the idea. Yeah, she wants to kick this king away from b5, yeah, because this king on b5 is very irritating. Yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm really very curious to see how this works out in a practical game. I, I have no idea. I mean, what, what is your take, for example, that it's practically more easy to, to hold this or more easy to win? What, what is your take? I really have no idea. I, I get yeah. the feeling that this will be one of those end games where, uh, y you know, if you are so inclined, you will be able to kind of laugh and point fingers, bec fingers because, like, the evaluation will change from white winning to to draw. If you study the table ways, like they will they will go back and forth between draw and white winning, like every three moves or so. Uh, but that's not because they will be playing badly. It's just because it's just an end game you've never seen before. You have no roadmaps. You you just don't know what you're supposed to be aiming for. You have no idea what like the the winning plan is. Like where are you supposed to drive the black king? Are you supposed to push the a pawn quickly, or are you supposed to wait and somehow drive the king away from the a file? I would be completely lost. You just play it move by move, and you hope to not blunder something. Uh, and eventually, somebody blunders something on thirty seconds. Yeah, I, I basically have nothing to add because I have exactly the same thoughts. I have no clue what is going on. Okay, basically, if I would be playing from the white side and I would have the two bishops and, and the pawn, I would go crazy. I would go completely insane if I'm not winning the game because of what happened during the game. I was pressing and, and basically, logically, it looked like I deserve to win. On the other hand, we know exactly that in chess, it doesn't work like this, that what I deserve or what I don't deserve. Black is also deserving a draw if he's able to, to hold this position at the end. Mm, yeah, wow. Actually, you, Yulia opted for this uh, king e2, king d2, so she has nerves of steel. Yeah. Okay, luck, luckily, or, or okay, she has, of course, calculated very precisely that all this d2 business... Why doesn't this work, by the way? Because knight d3, I have rook d3, rook takes rook e3. Rook d3, right? exactly. That, that's why I suddenly stopped uh, <laughs> commenting, yeah? <laughs> like, why doesn't this work? Maybe bishop c3, we just go king d1, and we really do have nerves still. <laughs> like, we just yeah, go maybe, back. but uh, I mean, I was... 
I was already starting a speech and I want to finish it, but uh, yeah. hang on, can we include rookie eight check? But what does it give us? King h7, right? I don't King know h7, what, yeah. What we have achieved, yeah. And in the meantime, while we're watching... Yeah, bishop c on the board, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I think she just goes king d1 now. Mm -hmm. Because uh, with the bishop on c3, you cannot play d2. The bishop is hanging. Knight e7 check is a threat. So we have actually maybe, quote-unquote, achieved something with white. You know, we've provoked some weakening. You know, actually, the big trick is that I was completely going crazy that I forgot that the rook on e4 protects the, the mm. b4 pawn. Because I thought, and, like, uh, all right, so I'm going to take on b4 and I'm covering the e7 square back. Yeah, but it's it's not the case. Look, protects the pawn. Yeah. Yeah, king king d1 played, king h7 played as well. Yeah, and king apparently, actually... look at this. The evaluation bar is, is jumping a bit for white, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, d3, king d1 was much stronger than king d2 and apparently gave white a significant advantage and d3 check was a mistake. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck with all of that. Yeah, well, to, to be honest, I had King D1 on my radar, but since I, I was there already blundering everything anyway, so it wasn't, yeah. uh, wasn't by any means uh, precise based on precise calculation. And I wanted to bring something up because there was a long but kind of a sensible, which is not always the case, a long but sensible question in Twitch chat uh, about... Uh, whether there should be some sort of a qualification process for teams to participate in Olympiads uh, so that the Olympiad is a little bit more streamlined. Let's say, I mean, the number that was given in the question is like 30 to 40 teams. And uh, uh, so that basically the uh, you get a much more compact competition with, with fewer underdogs, with fewer teams who are uh, sort of objectively weaker. And I don't know what your opinion is, but we, we sort of have competitions like this uh, to a degree. I mean, not exactly like this, but if you want an uh, elite national team competition, you have the World Team Championship, which is a 10-team ten, ten round robin, uh, which there is a qualification process to. And uh, uh, those, the, I mean, those, those tournaments are very, very, very tough and very uh, uh, hard fought. But I think it's kind of uh, against the spirit of uh, of the olympia to uh, to limit participation exactly because it's like a big uh, big festival yeah it's a big happiness big social gathering all around the world uh, the people are coming so basically just unimaginable even to to think about something else yeah and and we know all these incredible happy faces the the, the countries are coming they are able to participate uh, taking away this incredible joy from them, yes, I, I, I perfectly understand. Actually, about the, the World Team Championship and the qualification process, I have to say a couple of words that it's so difficult to qualify to this to this World Team Championship. Yeah. It's, I mean, I remember that with Hungary, we took a silver medal at the Olympics in, uh, in 2002 in Bled. And still, because that Olympiad actually did not count, and then in 2004, when I did not play because of the World Championship match, uh, against Kramnik, then Hungary missed out on the 2005 uh, World Team Championship. And and I felt like, okay, come on, we were second in the Olympiad and we are still not in, yeah? How is that possible? I thought it was a top five, top five Olympics. No, team. because uh, see, they, they, there, there weren't some uh, Team World Championship at that year. And then the, the, this uh, Olympiad was just cancelled. This result were not taken into account. Oh, okay. Know? Okay. Yeah, it, it, it was a shock because I, I really wanted to, to get to the World Team Championship yeah. with Hungary. I think, but... I'm not sure exactly what the formula is, but I think it's top five from the Olympiad and then maybe uh, some regional, like maybe the European teams also uh, provide some qualification spots and then maybe uh, a couple of teams by rating. I'm not entirely sure what the formula is actually. Yeah, it's uh, the one thing is clear that it's very tricky to... To, to get, no. yes, and every second Olympiad, yes, every second Olympiad is uh, qu qualifying to, to the World Team Championship. And, uh, if, you, if you compare the, the, the chess Olympiad with the, uh, with the uh, uh, sort of the proper Olympiad, uh, one thing, uh, like the, 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 the uh, Winter and Summer Olympics also don't limit anybody from participating, but you do get 
uh, qualification, like there is a, it's not a, a Swiss. Uh, you get like a qualification and then a semi-final and a final, let's say in, in, in track and field. Uh, the, the final race, which determines the golden medal will not have every single country in it, of course. Uh, and I think the chess Olympics, uh, I haven't played in those years, but I think, uh, at some point at least, uh, there was some, some way, like there were pools, right? At some point in the past, there was historically, there were like a pool, there were pools and people would like first half of the Olympiad would determine which team goes into which pool. And then there was, uh, a split in the field, but in general, uh, uh, limiting the field from the beginning just feels completely wrong to me. Uh, and then maybe you can make an argument that uh, uh, somehow you could maybe try to uh, create a qualification process inside inside the Olympiad. Like you, uh, I don't know, you play a Swiss of five rounds and then you cut off, I don't know, the top 30 or the top 40 and then, and then they play their own Swiss. But I think it just makes things unnecessarily complicated. I, I don't think it's needed. You yeah, could the, the problem that I, I feel with the Olympiad is, of course, at the, at the present, that uh, the, the pairing system has a very big impact on, on the result. This, this is the only thing that I, I feel like is somehow a, a problem because there are too many so-called weaker teams, which means that many weaker teams play against each other. So the weaker teams are also gathering a lot of, lot of points. And then at the end of the day, like, for example, yesterday, Hungary played against Dominican Republic, right? I mean, it was the fifth round. And, and the average rating of that team was like 2100 or something like this. It's basically one could argue that in the fifth round, the team of caliber of Hungary got a free point. I mean, we know exactly that it's never easy, but uh, compared to any other pairing in the fifth round, of course, it's, uh, it's a luxury. And th th those, those kind of things are very, very specific in, but um, otherwise it's, it's such a big fiesta and actually who, who cares about the world team championship? Everybody pays attention to the Olympics, yeah. right? Yeah, the Olympics is just yeah. so much more important in terms of like the, the attention people pay to it compared to the world teams. For the players themselves, as you mentioned, like for you, it was always uh, like you wanted to play the world teams. And we always like for, for, for me, I played a couple or maybe three of those over the over the course of my career. We always cared about them. They felt they felt important that uh, they are a very, very interesting competition for the players in it. But in terms of interest from outside the, the you know, the, the specialist press, nobody really cares about the world teams. I don't think it gets reported on even like people just ignore it. Whereas the Olympiad does get does get a lot of mainstream attention, or at least some mainstream attention, and and the people are always very happy to play uh, in it. Is Young Shishtof saving his game? This is, uh, by the way, this is Duda. Yeah, let me let me get there. Looks like he actually saved that game. Yeah. Did he? Yeah? Somehow, yeah. So you give how you give a check and then you go rook a7 you give rook b7 and, check yeah yeah rook b7 check very important yeah you force the king to come to the c file then you go rook a7 and you go king e6 yeah exactly not king g6 and you start pushing wow what what a save does it mean anything to the match let's take a, no no they are losing anyway regardless because because marcus robert has well the hungarians are on on fire yeah because uh, Markus Robert winning a uh, very important game for Serbia. Horvat Dominic uh, has won his game against Gavin Jones, so they tied the match against uh, England, the Austrians. Wow, and, and Jan Sistov Duda is... Ah, but hang on, he played the move Rook B7, check King D6, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it's, we just continue now. giving checks until Rook the B6, king is on yes. a bad square. Yeah, we just continue. We need the king away from the D file, basically. And it's it's no matter if it's king c7, we go rook a6. Yeah. But and it we, doesn't mean... Yeah, we just need to be able to play king e6 in this position. Yeah, without the king on e6, I'm pretty sure it's lost. But with the king on e6, we're just in time. Yeah. King and then G6. after check, we are coming king g6. We have king g6, yeah, just in time. Yeah, tempo, tempo by tempo, but we are probably saving this. All right. All right, yeah. So actually, what does it mean? Yeah, the, the Spanish match against Cuba ended in a 2-2. Poland will lose to, to Serbia. That's kind of a surprise. But yeah, the Serbian team is also very, very dangerous. Big, big fighters there. Uh, 
what about what about Shashi? I mean, all eyes on Shashi. He okay, needs now, to. Okay, now he's lost. Yeah. Now, finally, what what was always going to happen did happen, and yeah, once once you get that those pawns, yeah, the, White has a passer on a six, but it's not going anywhere at all, and you just get completely destroyed on the king side. King G one, I think the simplest is just to go rook takes G two. Oh no, no, mm -hmm. hang on, E one is protected. No, no. So after King G one, what do we do? Maybe just D three, D two, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just just not to lose the nerves. Yeah. Yeah, you just need to need to yeah preserve preserve. Yeah, basically, um, yeah, this this yeah, Rook G one is played by Shashi. He he tries to at least. Yeah, but also okay. even, even here D three is just completely yeah, it's, it's completely right? hopeless. Yeah. I mean, he probably wants to go D three A seven, but then I can take on A seven, give a check from a four, and play D two or something. It's just completely lost. Yeah, in incredible. I mean, we we see that ratings don't matter at at all. The, the the players are fighting like crazy now. Abdul Satov losing on the first board two days ago. He was the one who saved the match for 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 the Uzbek team. Now it's gonna be probably the fourth board. What, did, did he not win against Sam Shankland? I hang on a second. I think that was a different player. because I think Vahidov and Vahidov. I'm I'm always uh, I, I have to apologize. I'm still yeah. This is a, this is a this is a different uh, this is a different uh, Vahidov. Yeah, the, the the player who who should have beaten Sam Shankland is not playing today. Yes. Yeah, and uh, okay. Now the the game between Vidit and Nodia back can be. Yeah. Okay. This is this is going to be a draw. Yeah. Quietly. Yeah, concluded this, that it's draw. We know we know this is going to be a draw. So it's going to be most probably it's going to be two two unless some incredible miracle happened here. The hard to imagine here yeah, with twelve minutes against the minute yeah. and completely completely winning position. Very hard to imagine how you how you fail to convert this into a full point. Yeah, and the, it would actually mean that uh, Uzbek team has already passed India one and United States. It's uh, it, it yeah. shouldn't be underestimated. Yeah. And, and we can more or less. Tell our viewers what the standings will be after this round. Armenia will be on 12 points. The US actually will be in Seoul second on 11. Nobody else is on 11. And then on 10 points, we will have Uzbekistan and India who drew today against each other and also uh, the Cubans. So a tie from third to fifth. And then there will be a very, very large group of people who will have nine out of 12. Uh, I'm not going to list all of those teams because that will be a very long list. I know that uh iran and uh spain will be on on nine but there will be a lot of people who had uh seven before today who will win no but hang on there were many many teams with eight points and uh oh, yeah, they... no, no, yeah 10 yeah there will be more there will be more teams on 10 for sure yeah, yeah for sure sorry yeah yeah, yeah because be... because even all this germany against uh, uh against italy are also fighting with eight points yeah absolutely okay. so poland serbia so serbia will be on 10 uh, ah, but then, hang on, look at this. Yeah, okay, it's uh, yeah, so go on. what it's written that Rasmus actually escaped. I mean, it's written draw as a result. I don't know how I don't know how this this can be a draw. I I don't. Maybe it's three four rapid. I don't know. Let's okay. Finally, we we got the board. Uh he got with his king to a two. Okay, good. Yeah, but still, best. you you still you still lose this position sometimes. But it's important, and yeah, what Peter what Peter is just kind of remarking upon without really any explanation is something that uh, all the all the endgame books will will tell you that against the g-pawn your king has to be in the opposite corner to minimize the chance of your check being met with a with a counter check when your opponent uh interposes with the queen yeah so they kept on playing this forever not really forever. They could no. Yeah. I mean, ah, okay. But look at this. Queen B three check after Queen F seven. King A one was the defense. Yeah, this exists. Yeah, this is a this is wow, a, In incredible. A... So King G seven, Queen D three, Queen E six. I mean, I'm trying to understand that. Was there really some threefold repetition or no? I don't think so. I think it's missing moves. Ah yes, yeah. I mean, okay. otherwise uh... it's just impossible that. That it what? ends like this, yeah. Why is why is Winston why is Winston an exchange down? Why did what? Yeah, I mean, okay, it's it's a dead draw. I remember that Chucky saved the draw against me like this in Steve versus two and also Hikaru, but uh, okay, yeah, so he, he he actually did not take on a five. Uh, what is going what, on here? Like 
he he decided he doesn't want rook a5 rook c2 rook g1 because it's too passive or something but i mean i i just uh, i was even thinking about it but i mean rook g1 then we go king h2 look back to a1 and we start exactly, chasing yeah, like... or ah bishop e4 rook b2 and then okay okay so he chose not okay. to play this but yeah i mean the position he's playing right now is a pretty comfortable draw but yeah still quite a Quite a decision there by... Ufa, good that we missed out on this sequence of moves because yeah. <laughs> I would be going crazy here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, so finally. Ah, wow, this is this this is really nice. And let's not forget, Vincent was also low on the clock. So all the more reasons for me to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is this is nothing. But I don't understand. Why is he leaving the corner? Because I think King on H2 is just perfectly fine here. No, not know. that it matters, but still. I think, yeah, I think they agreed, Drew. Yeah, on, on our screen right now, they just agreed to draw, yes. Ah, okay, good. Oh. So the teams on 10 points, uh, yeah, Serbia, Netherlands, uh, Germany, because, uh, yeah, Dieter won and everybody else uh, survived. I know, hang on. Swane is still playing, apparently. I mean, it says draw everywhere. and I No, but look at the screen. They are still there. Ah, ah okay. Ah, yeah, and yeah, then the screen okay. was wrong. Yeah, uh... Uh, France has beaten Switzerland, uh, so France will be on uh, on ten as well. India three will be on ten. They beat Lithuania three and a half half today. Uh, Peru Croatia is so far a draw with only one game going, but in that game, uh, Emilio Cordova is completely winning against Ivan Sharic, so uh, Peru will be on ten points. Uh, Kazakhstan will be on 10 points. Ah, Kazakhstan. hang on. Sorry, because you mentioned Peru. I was wondering that where is Kori? Actually, where is Jorge Kori? Because I know that he's usually crushing the Olympiads. He is, he is like an incredible... Uh... Not not in the lineup, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because her his sister is, is here. So I was like very, very... I mean, there was no information, at least, that I heard why he's not here. Yeah, he's not, he's not in the team. Yeah, I checked the lineup. He's not in the team. Yeah. But they're still on 10 out of 12, even without him, which is quite impressive. And, uh, okay, so Peru, Kazakhstan, and uh, and that's it because Philippines, Israel drew today, uh, meaning that the rest are already below. Yeah, and Norway losing this match, of course, is just quite something. Yeah, this is this, this is shocking. Uh, Magnus won with black, and and Johan Sebastian was winning throughout the game, and at the end, he did not manage to win. John Ludwig Hammer lost on time, and um, and yeah, Tari went on to lose with white. Yeah. yeah, nerves, nerves, nerves. Absolutely, and this 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 queen ending could <laughs> could go on for a while. In particular, you know, it's going to be difficult to cover if we don't actually have access to the moves. And we yeah, I, I don't know if and the camera is too far away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We can't really zoom in properly to watch it from uh, from the camera view. I think. Yeah, I, I got some uh, news from Sotiris that basically this kind of position and here if Black plays the move Queen C two, so probably the last move was no, but it, it definitely wasn't Queen C two, but something like this position they have on the board. Yeah, and. Uh, while we're waiting for some news on this, I will I will uh, do a bit of a roundup about uh, of the the women's section. India ended up uh, winning uh, three one. Uh, Tanya made a draw today, but uh, Hampi won and uh, Vaishali won in game three. That very nice game with B two B four after night B seven. There is uh, the Ukrainian match will still go on for a while. Uh, uh, last board should be a draw, and uh, Ukraine is plus one because Anna Muzichuk won on board two, but that endgame with two bishops against Rook, two bishops and the A pawn against Rook, that will go on for for quite some time yet. Uh, in the meantime, Azerbaijan uh, won 3-1 against Kazakhstan, Poland is 3-0 up against Serbia, so they will win. Netherlands are beating uh, France. Uh, Israel has won their match against Germany. England is uh, getting completely blown out of the water by Armenia. Armenia having a very, very good day today in both uh, sections. Uh, India to so far uh, equal after three matches, three draws and a game in progress on board four, but should also be a draw. Uh, Bulgaria is winning against Peru uh, and uh, 
Vietnam versus Hungary. Well, uh, this is this is the dramatic position that I'm having on the board because just one move ago it was a it was a draw. And, yeah, and uh, uh, I mean, now being the Hungarian captain, the Pop Gabor will go completely crazy because it was already just about to to make a draw. Yeah, just go rookie eight check. here. Yeah. Just go rookie eight here, and it's a draw. Yeah. Yeah, and and she she they repeated, and after King D five, okay, or I mean, but but rook, rook G one, and now rook A eight wins the game. Just yeah, completely ends the game because rook F eight is basically it's not even a rook; it's made. So you have yeah. That's why the king on on d five. Yeah, it, if if black would have given this this rook rook d one check, of course. I mean, okay, just kick this king away, and and afterwards you and and the game is a draw. Yeah, or simply put the rook on the back rank and and go a two, and it's also just a very very simple try. Like, go rook yeah. Here. yeah. And and the white player Sidonia had like three minutes against uh, half a minute for the opponent. Yeah, it, the, this this are the nerves, the tension, everything, and now the match mm -hmm. will. Will be in fact lost. Yeah, yeah they are I losing think, the I think match. They lose because of this. Yeah, they lose. They, they lose the match because. Oh my of this. god! Yeah, this is because. So yeah, uh, in terms of stuff, stuff still to watch. We have this uh, endless endgame with two bishops against endless endgame with two bishops and a pawn against rook, and also kind of an endless endgame with a queen and g pawn against queen, uh, which we can choose to uh, try and observe somehow. But I don't know exactly how. Hang on a second. Uh, Yulia Smak is now lost. What the wow, she 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 was just rook c3, rook c4. What are yeah. you what? She, oh my like... god, and then then what what is what does it mean? Yeah, that they already equalized the match. Yeah, and then then if Bulmaga wins, R Romania yeah. actually beats Ukraine. Wow, but now it will be incredible pressure on Maria to defend, knowing that yeah, and that's it. That's just an end, end of game. Yeah, you just resigned here. Osma Kyulia just over pushed. Yeah, and she, like, it was a very, very easily equal position for, yeah, like, move 30, 65 or somewhere, I think it's just, you can make a draw at any point. Yeah, of course, no, it was clear that, okay, she's trying to win, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's how you end up losing. Ah, oh, yeah, basically, knight c4 is not even a mistake, but after rookie 6, you go, you go to the f-file, you don't go to g1 at all, like, you go king of 3, and you, you, you run no risks whatsoever. Yeah, just to, just to do and now losing and okay, this is now very tough. On the other hand, maybe it will soften Irina because before Irina was fighting to to save the match. Now that she notices that the match is saved, who knows? That yeah, and also will, I think if you, if you push yeah. a four, I think this actually makes it simpler for Black. Now I can go rook a three. Exactly, then, I'm not a fan of a four at all. Yeah, and then rook a two. Yeah, this should. Uh, this, this looks should to be... me like it should be a draw, but I mean, nobody knows. It's uh, it's very difficult, very difficult to judge. And Satiris is providing us with live updates of the position and the queen ending, but I don't know if we can reconstruct it. We could basically looks like we can take Satiris's dictation, but uh, yeah, let, I mean, let's let's try at least. Yeah, yeah, let's try. So, so in in the position, uh, seventy five queen c two for some reason doesn't matter why. Queen c2, queen e5 check. Uh, king b1. Sorry, after queen c2, what happened? Queen e5 queen check. Five check. Yeah. King mm -hmm. b1, queen b5, king a2. Uh, a6, b1. b6, a2. So this seems to be the current position. Ah, this is the current position. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I assume it's still a draw by table base, but you just. You, it's just so, so unenjoyable. Actually, to, to me, the. Ah, we are get yeah that we we skip some moves, but the position is correct. Yeah, queen e6 the, and b1. queen e6 king b1. The big question yeah. for me is that I actually noticed and and the way how Gelfand won it. Of course, he's the big professor of all these end games. Was that he started coming backwards with his king? Yeah, that's that's actually the method. The big question is that the the young and very very talented uh, Lorenzo Lodici from Italy does he know all these classics? <laughs> or he will only know it after this game. Yeah, he will. He will have to learn afterwards. Yeah, because because this is the one, and I do remember losing to my very very good friend the uh, home game against Sergei Grigoryans in this position. He has beaten me, and and it was like 
probably the last game, and it was about that he already has to leave. And I said, okay, come on, we are playing 400 moves this position. It's it's low. And then at the end, he tried this, and I collapsed. I, I remember that this this king march yeah. backwards drove me crazy, and I I collapsed. And he actually he he's he's done something. I mean, I understand what you're saying about bringing the king back, but he also very cleverly he goes king g8 now. And there are no checks at all, like there are zero checks. So he will he will get to play g7. Yeah, and afterwards he starts to... to and then you start back, going yeah. back, yeah. And once again, the engine probably holds this, like, laughing, laughing all the way. But for a human, for a human player, yeah, you... You are not really having any fun. Yeah, I, I really have to say that... Uh... It, it's nice to see what we are witnessing from from the Italian team. I mean, there is there yeah. is now Lodici, there is now Francesco Sonis, uh, two very and of course, yeah, pardon me, Luca Luca Modoni is also still very very young. I guess he's like twenty years old at this moment, making nice progress. And the, it's a team. I mean, it's it's a team because yeah. uh, also Sabino Brunello yeah. has the experience, uh, Vocatudo has the experience. No, not an easy team to beat at all. Wow. I mean, okay, yeah, this, this end game is total hell. And yeah, it looks like the, uh, the the bishops versus rook end game did finish. Pro I mean, we have to assume it was a draw, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, she just uh, allowed the the trade of the rook for, for the light square bishop and the king is getting to c8 very, very comfortably. So, sorry, a8, not c8. So yeah, yeah then, could... then I then I got it right that basically Irina was no not Irina. I mean the the white player. Yeah, was, Irina, Irina Bulmaga. Yeah. yeah, Irina. Yeah, Irina was uh, pardon me. Yeah, Irina was kind of relieved that the match is saved. Yeah, and and when she saw that that uh, Black actually won that game on board four, she immediately willingly pushed this pawn to a for like let's get over with or something. Yeah, it it, it almost felt like this. If if not for that result on the fourth board, I think she would have shuffled like 30, 40 more moves before mm -hmm. ever pushing this pawn. Yep. Or slowly she was running out of 50 move rule. That that could also be the case. That could also be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. We didn't consider it, but it's very, very possible. She just felt she had to make a pawn move. Yeah, in any case, Romania escapes with a 2-2 against Ukraine. Great result. Great save. And by the way, I because probably we have a little bit of time, let me just very quickly update what happened in, in the Greece versus uh, Belgium match. Apparently the game is still in progress. Maslovas is about to win, yeah, because the opponent game will be winning against Data. Yeah, you just go King B6 and you take yeah. B5, you go King C5, it's very, very clearly winning. Just not a problem at all. We have already discussed about, and there is also another Maslow Vasilis uh, Atanasios also playing. Okay, this is going to be a draw. Yeah. And uh, Banikas has already won, and you're, you're okay, so the match is won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Match is won, so Greece is striking back. Yeah, there really isn't very much left. I've been I've been looking at uh, at uh, uh, score sheets and. Uh... Uh, hang on, Romania. Wow, I almost, because uh, Deak Bogdan uh, has beaten Eric Hansen, so it felt like, okay, this case then definitely smoothly Romania going to win, but no, two draws and on board three, partly last lost to, to, to Noritsin, mm -hmm. which means that poor, poor uh, partly last has lost two critical games. Uh, two in a row, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> oh my God, I know the feeling, yeah, that this is, this is always terrible. You you start to feel guilty and it will not make your participation easier. Yeah, it just adds to the not, pressure. Not at all. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. So yeah, in in the in the in the open section, it seems like in order to find the live game, you have to go all the way down to the to the. I mean, apart from the queen ending, you have to go down to the uh, uh, Greece versus Belgium match, and those end games are not very exciting. Yeah. Well, just an update because I completely missed out on on match. 17 Hungary has won against uh, Montenegro two and a half. It was a oh, yeah. very very hard fought match. Uh, Banos Tommy bringing in the the victory there. Okay, it's a it's a relief. It's a relief. Sign of life. 
<laughs> for for Hungary. Okay, yeah, it's I, I know that it's it's never easy. I mean, they also lost Benji, uh, Peter Arch is, uh, as as a captain. I mean, he was not supposed to play. He's a love lovely person, and I think he's a very very nice captain. But it it wasn't expected that he has to now yeah. play so many games. It's difficult. Yeah, and Azerbaijan has uh, beaten uh, Slovakia. No, three one because uh, both three. Slovakia did win a game, but but it was just enough to to get a point. Yeah. Shakri Amamedyalo won his game. Mm -hmm. uh, Gusainov has won his game, and Avasov has also won his game on board four. Yeah. So three one there. I yeah I've, I think we pretty much covered everything, and really uh, yeah that that green ending is the. Uh, I know. Hang on, Philippines versus Israel. We haven't covered what. I th I think it's two it's... two. It's two two. Unbelievable. Nobody has lost to to Barcelona mm -hmm. on board two and Postni Evgeny Postni won on on board four and it's two draws. Yeah. Well, also not a result that that we would otherwise expect. Pro probably not. Yeah. Although I mean the Philippines are always a very, very uh, yeah very always dangerous. underrated and very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Certainly. So. Ah, India three has crushed uh, the Lithuanians. L Lithuanian, yeah, three and a half, half. Yeah, I, I briefly announced all of those results at some point. Yeah, but I'm just I'm looking for live games to watch, and really, there's only this queen ending, which we don't have the moves for, unless we want to, you know, try to guess them from the live feed, which I think yeah. is probably not very helpful, to be honest. I understand it's a very you know important match, and. Uh, um, if if we had access to the moves, I I would probably, you know, very seriously consider covering it until the bitter end. But I think trying to do it from the video is uh, a little bit too challenging. Yeah, yeah, we kind of uh, we kind of had this position that White had then Queen on E6 and White played King G8, then got mm -hmm. the pawn to G7. I'm guessing. I mean, okay, probably we have to stay on air because uh, this is very, very important to wait for the final outcome of this of this match. Yeah, but but yeah, we unfortunately we can't cover the game. Yeah, we. I mean, and and then it really like I'm. It it, it might look like I'm trying to to get off air here, which is probably because I am. But uh, really, without without the moves, there's not very much we can say about this position apart from what we've already said, which is. It's a draw, but that doesn't mean that Rasmus will make it. It will be basically a test of nerves, a test of uh, you know cleanness of calculation. When uh, uh, you know when the chips, uh, you know, at some point they will both go down to basically playing an increment. But okay, now fine. I, what I wanted to say: where is where is King Luke and and where is Young Gustafsson when we need them the most? I there mean, is, the, yeah. They should be suffering there. I want to see them sweat. And and going crazy from from all the nerve wracking tension. Gusti, I can see on our screen right now. Yeah, Gusti is standing there to the right. Yeah, that's that's. Ah, the... and Luki also appeared behind. No. Ah, yeah, and that's uh, the, yeah. That looks like Luki's uh, haircut. Yeah, I mean sure, they yeah. are listening to our broadcast immediately. Yeah. They appeared, right? I mean they yeah. were there waiting for the right moment to to interfere. They feel that the pawn got to G seven. This is a very critical moment now. Yeah. So okay, let's assume I'm I'm making a move like King B two, and you push the pawn to G seven. Yeah, G7, apparently Queen D8 check was played in response, which is kind of... A ah, queen, ah, okay, so so Queen D3 was played instead of King... Uh, yeah. Instead of King B2? King, yeah, King, King, Queen D3, G7, Queen D8, and this is the current position, yeah. And this is the moment when probably you start coming back with the king. Yeah, H7, G6, you give a check, uh, or H7, H6, and then, yeah, it gets tricky. It gets tricky. And, it gets uh, tricky, yes. Yeah, I'm zigzag and... Uh, Okay, luckily for black, the king on b1 is is very well placed, but but still we see that the danger eventually some queen g6 or queen f5 interfering or even mm -hmm. maybe queen e4 at some ah yes I think the 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 way I lost it was something like the king was coming all the way back then at some moment I was giving uh, for example okay some queen g6 check and then queen, then g4, queen g4 appeared. And then queen g4, and it gets and, and queen e5 yeah. loses to queen f5 check, and uh, the clock ticked out, and the pawn yeah. is about to queen, and I blunder something and lost. Yeah, yeah, this is this is generally how how you lose if you do lose in these types of positions for sure. Yeah. yeah okay. Still, now, 
Gusti looking like we could only really see him from, uh, you know, only the back of his head was properly visible, but he looked kind of tortured. Yeah, exhausted. Yeah, he I mean, okay. I, I don't think that he's used to. I mean, he he was uh, the the captain of the Dutch team, but I still believe if you are captain of your home country with a lot of expectations now from from this young team, a lot of pressure and a lot of media coverage. I mean, uh, the German Chess Federation Deutsche Schachbund also uh, brought extra person for for more media coverage there. To to the mm -hmm. Olympics, uh, all the videos are done. A uh, lot of attention in Germany, so I can understand the pressure. Yeah, so let 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 them cover it. You know, let them post some more tweets with pictures. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I mean, I can't, I can't leave. I'm suffering here as well. I haven't had any lunch. I basically, if if someone knows me, I hardly have any breakfast because I'm only eating fruits at the in at the morning. Usually I'm waking up like at 11, 11, 30. So I eat fruits to survive till lunch, which I'm having like around 2, 2.30. That's my usual regime. And now it's completely up and down. I'm waking up at 9.30. I'm having breakfast at 10, 10, 15. And the usual breakfast, just the same, these small little blueberries with a little bit of some, some oats and dried fruits. I'm starving. I'm dying here. But I feel like, okay, I have to do it for... For, for both, I mean, both teams for this, this fighting spirit. Okay. I mean, I, I have to suffer with bo both of them. I, mean, I, 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 I can if, if you want to have a five minutes break, whatever, you can come back. But I have to, I feel like okay, I have no, to. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not abandoning you, of course. Okay. I'm thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, the, the, this is always what carries the, the broadcast. Yeah. This, this team spirit also. So this is, um, is a person that he says we can finish whenever we want, but, but he's also ready to continue. Then let's just suffer here with, with, with the teams. Any news after Queen D8 check? Okay, King, King H7, H7 will, seven will be played, seven I guess. Played, yeah. Sotiris is probably right. Yeah, King H7 played. Okay. And King C, I mean, Queen C7. Okay. Rasmus is being much, much more clever than I was in that, that Blitz game. He's trying to, to, to pin the pawn instead of giving all this nonsense. But we can get the same position, right? We can go King G6 now. Only check is from G3. I will play King H6. Yeah, we are getting yeah because again I'm pretty sure we get, we can we can get the same position yeah losing after queen f5 so queen g3 king h6 yeah you have to give a check from I mean doesn't matter I will f4 I go to h5 h2 I go to g5 ah you can go queen h4 but anyway ah, you did that no? g3 h4 and then g3 and I cannot get to the fifth yeah but king f6 maybe yeah. And then queen know. h4 back. Yeah. And, and then uh, king f7, queen f4. Yeah, and we can we can play queen f6. I don't know what it does, but we can play queen f6 if we want. Maybe it does something actually, because now I can go, go queen g5 later. Yeah, I mean, whoever wants to find out the truth should not listen to our broadcast, but open the table base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, that's, the, that's the safe bet, but we are also trying to give some human perspective. Yeah, that this is very important idea that black, I mean, white is trying to get back with his king. Yeah, that, that's kind of typical. The black king has to stay on b1 or on a2. Those are the best, the best squares. Very, very. I yeah. mean, By the way, since we don't really have moves, can we actually find out how they got here? Like uh, out of what I assume was a pawn ending. Yeah. How did we like? Why? Why are we playing this queen ending? No, but Peter, don't torture me to death because <laughs> I mean, finally, I have it on my. If I move okay, okay, on okay, this okay, game, okay. I will lose all the notation back here. Okay. okay. I I just don't dare to to go anywhere, and I I have to stick <laughs> stick. You know, I have to be glued glued here and okay and uh, not move. Least, at least for my for my OCD, can you promote this line? How do I promote it? Right click. Ah, so just by the, ah, okay, okay. Then right click. It's this is wonderful. Yeah, uh, just just to make me just to, and one more, one more time, and we're we're gonna have this as a main line, right? Which one? Any, anywhere, one, you just yeah? anywhere, yeah. Okay, you told me some incredible no, but uh, queen e six is the main line, yeah. Then oh, we don't. Yeah, hang on. No, no, no. King with the uh, no, no. Where is this? Yeah, g six. Yeah. Okay, king. I, I think yeah. This, this is now. Yeah, this is now. Yeah. 
Thank you, because in, in Chesby's, of course, I know that right click and all this, but I didn't know that in our life you were also. All right. So Rasmus is signaling the right, right kind of impression that, you know what, I okay, understand I, you are playing it, but I, believe me, I, I know. I'm a mathematician, I know, but it's not true because it's Matthias Brubaum who is the mathematician. Yeah, mm. I, I, I took a look at the clocks and now I am... I am really, really, um, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, tell me, I have no idea. Ah, okay. No, 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 I, I, ah, okay. I, I, it's, it's working. Yeah. Tell me. Okay. This will go on forever. No, the correct time according to Soti, this is three minutes versus 222. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah. It's so it, the okay, clock that is, we are seeing is wrong. Yeah. This is at least slightly more cheerful because I imagined Rasmus actually having 10 minutes here and I thought, <laughs> hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will be here for forever yeah forever. luckily actually, tomorrow is a rest day yeah uh, actually give me a minute <laughs> yeah yeah i mean please give because me you are not missing out on any action i mean la la let me talk i i know that this i take it on my count i mean this is these are my teams germany versus italy uh rooting, rooting for both of them of course now White is trying to win at all costs. Black is trying to draw, and and this is what why you know I'm I'm always very very upset when people are saying that okay chess is chess no chess is chess it's just incredible I mean all this amount of of fight um, you you have to be I mean this has to be covered I mean it has to be covered otherwise it's very easy to 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 close the broadcast and then afterwards. Uh, say like okay what happened and and we we have to feel we have to feel the pain we we have to feel the tension everything queen queen g3 check and and okay i can imagine king luke and and young gustafsson they also had been buddies before i remember young gustafsson no it was how was it that was Jan first helping luke van veli in in dortmund and afterwards uh, vice versa in in any case yeah very very good friends and and now in a situation where yeah that their their teams are fighting till the bitter end any updates unfortunately i'm not getting any updates yet so ah hang on after queen c7 queen e4 was played after queen c7 queen e4 was played okay so let me promote i'm learning from peter he's much more experienced in in classical broadcast i i haven't been really doing all this much this long analysis queen e4 and king a2 of course yeah that 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 was obvious that black will always put black will always put that that king on a2 or if he gets checked then then king gets back to b1 and and one thing is for sure, if you, for example, in this position, feel like you have a kind of defense which your opponent was not able to break, then you have to stick on that. I mean, you should never out of panic suddenly move to something else because that's how usually you blunder. And uh, yeah, king a2, queen d5, check on the board. Insisting, trying to lock... Or, I mean, lure black's king to, to the dark squares. Please play king b2 or king a1. Maybe at some point the, the dark squares will be much more important. But I, I'm expecting Rasmus to play king b1. And by the way, Peter is already back. Exposed by our own producer. Yeah, I wanted to eat in peace. Like, I, I, all this talk about dried fruit, I wanted to have like my two slices of dried apricot. And I had to do it on stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. Yeah, so I'm expecting the move king. What? King a1 played. So I was just uh, explaining everything that stick to your defense. But for some reason, uh, Rasmus feels like... I don't think like... it matters. I think, I think all of those squares are kind of okay, right? I don't think it, you, you absolutely need to be on the light squares. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand that with queen, king b1, you, you are also crazy that why this all these queen f5 in, intermediate moves are... But let's say, let's say we you. talk about this position. Yeah, I go king g6. You, you, you probably give a check from g3, right? Yes. I go king uh, f6. King um, f6. It gets, it gets weird, right? It gets weird quite quickly. 
I mean, where do you want to? Yeah, King King A1, King G6 happened. It's and uh, people have actually been saying that the queen should be on on d4. So uh, from the engine viewpoint, I think supposedly it was much better to give a check from d4 first and then leave with the king. Uh, ah, and... okay. Ah, so here it was very important. Ah, that's yeah, why I probably we prefer not to not to allow this with check. Yeah, yeah? queen d4 apparently is a table based win, and king g6 is back to being a draw, mm -hmm. but. This is another one of those end games where, yes, people are kind of, we, we can't stop the people in our chat discussing what the table base says, but it has very, very little relevance to, to what's going on on the board. And not because these players are bad, but because it's just very, very difficult to play this perfectly. Even though I think as a general principle, you can sort of understand why having the pawn on g7 protected could be useful for white, because then Let's say in this position with the queen on d4, we could be playing king f5. Exactly. Now, yeah. now we cannot, yeah? Exactly. This is a very good point. But actually, that's why maybe it's even uh, for for understanding these queen end games, yeah? Because if someone only looks with table base, I think it doesn't help because it's just too random. If yeah. you only work over the board, it's also not enough. Maybe it's the ideal scenario that there is a game, someone... Uh, comments yeah we are we are seeing all this video of it so we are excited about this end game and while we are witnessing this then then we are checking with table base yeah this could be a very interesting interactive way of learning this queen end game that otherwise nobody really wants to to study yeah and even even if you do study it properly i think that the the issue is if you're lucky you can maybe discern some patterns which will allow you to maybe make slightly better practical decisions but most likely you will still not be able to play it perfectly because uh you know put the queen on a slightly different square and things change quite quite dramatically but i feel like i've already learned something today because people in our chat continued insisting that the queen has to be on d4 so if ever I am in this position and I'm likely to be the side with an extra pawn and not the side defending, you know, which is kind of important, uh, I will know that uh, my aim should be to get the queen to uh, to d4 or e5. Yeah, this um, is super important. Yeah, actually, this is a very very vital information for the for this end game because we we need something that we can work on humanly yeah this is super mm -hmm. important and yeah now we are seeing queen f4 check king g6 queen g4 check king f7 queen f4 being played and white is having this trouble that his pawn on g7 is constantly i'm a little bit surprised he hasn't played queen g5 why hasn't he played queen g5 uh after we yeah, have one move we are here i would be playing queen g5 so happy to hear i think so I'm I'm guessing queen e4 check. Yeah, now I go king. I think on f5, I'm I'm sort of happier with this queen on f5, closing down some of the diagonals. You have to give a check from g2, I guess, and then maybe I can uh, like play king f6 and then king g5, and then queen g4. Maybe I do want to like bring bring it all the way down to like. H2 yes, exactly. Yeah, this is this is kind of the method that that mm -hmm. we are we are kind of having in mind as a way to improve yeah but he opted for for king g6 queen g4 king f7 and queen then f4 king... check and king e8 he's going the other way around he's going the other way and this is also kind of smart because uh uh oh, hang on no 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 he he will not be able to go to g7 though uh, he wants he wants to go king e7 after the check from b8 because king g7 queen a7 you actually have lost your <laughs> have lost your passer. Once again, the queen should be on d4. Look at this. Yeah, this is another illustration of why why the queen needs to be on d4. Yeah, so so king e7 would be the move. And yeah, we are also getting the information 108 for for white and, and 2.30 seconds, I mean, 2 minutes 30 seconds for black. Yeah, this is where I really miss my very, very large screen at home, which I could have used to maximize the video and to also have access to this because the way my setup is right now yeah i really can't see the clocks at all yeah 
Yeah, the big question, of course, is uh, what move number this is, because what we have is the correct position, but absolutely not the correct move. So we don't know if this is like move 95 or 100 or 105. But there is still a long way to go, because I think G7 was played... Somebody Exactly, meant, only 10 moves ago. Yeah, G7 was played very recently. So whichever move number it is, uh, they still have 40 moves to go until uh until the the 50 move roll becomes in any way relevant yeah queen b8 checking e7 played yeah i guess yeah, ba basically i i think we should also mention that if for example tomorrow there, there would not be any rest day then i feel like both players who are fighting this out should have been uh, rested yeah i mean yeah. you you just can't uh, let your players play tomorrow or demand them to play tomorrow after playing such a queen and game because you are just going crazy yeah queen c7 chosen which i think is correct um yeah f6 f4 is the position we've had already so he plays queen d7 queen e5 i assume other checks probably are also playable but why not give a check from e5 here it would, would be strange not to and then king f7 yeah yeah queen f4 and what yeah, really changed okay now the queen protects the pawn but on the other hand we can't interfere yeah yeah uh, he's gone to f8 but i don't i don't know what that does it doesn't really change very much instead of f7 he's gone to f8 Ah, and apparently it's now you can actually double click and it will give you the yes right. yes exactly now i'm i'm very very relieved i'm super happy yeah it fantastic. was fantastic queen e5 check and now the clock situation is also absolutely fine so down to 20 seconds lorenzo yeah i, I understand now it's it's so difficult i mean because he he doesn't have so much choice yeah the, the queen on d7 is misplaced yeah. No, I think he actually missed quite a big trick by not playing queen g5, move, move 85. I think uh, now he's back to being uh, sort of very far away from uh, what is the uh, the way to trick your opponent. Like, he had a, a table-based win, apparently, but that was some time ago, and now there's really no coming back maybe to that position where he could have played queen g4. But even without it, I think that idea of putting the queen on the g file and then coming back, trying to come back with the king towards like h3, g2, and so on, was the way to uh, uh, to, to at least create practical problems. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay, this one game means so much, yeah, because if Rasmus manages to hold, then then Germany gets to 10 points and carries on the, the momentum. Yeah, especially after losing to Austria, it was very difficult. We have seen German team was suffering against Ireland on the very next day. Just uh, it, it shows how difficult it is to, to bounce back after the loss. Uh, at the same time, if, for example, Italy saves this draw, then, then it will boost the moral of, of the Italian team because they are fighting like, like crazy and looking, judging at the, at the match, well, maybe, okay, Vincent missed the chance at the beginning, so I don't know who deserves what, but yeah, let's, let, let's just wait and see how it ends. Queen C4 check. Yeah, it uh, seems now that with the Queen on D7, it's going to be very difficult to avoid, to avoid the very simple, uh, very simple checks. Yeah, King H7, he will give a check from H4. And then but the on the other hand, usually in this endgame, one has the feeling that white can always shuffle or shuffle and then start from, from scratch, but maybe he won't be able, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think the claim I see in chat that on, on move 106 you can claim a draw is just incorrect because G7 was played very, very recently. Exactly. No, no, this is... This, this is... Yeah, definitely not 106. Uh, yeah, one twenty six maybe, but uh, yeah, like I, I think actually like one thirty six is likelier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Apparently, move move eighty eight was G seven. So uh, yeah, one uh, only eighty eight. Yeah, one thirty okay. one thirty eight. Yeah, one thirty eight is some way away. 
Ah, yes, yes. Move 88 was, was G7, yeah. Yeah, be, ah, because we had the other notation and, and back yeah, in our now, notation now it was correct. 70, yeah. 70 now something. Okay, since you're not showing me this, I will actually look it up for myself. I need to punish myself some more. <laughs> uh, I need to know how we got to this queen ending. Um, ah, now actually that the, the board is corrected. Yeah, I, I already dared to, to move somewhere, but... Ah, okay, hang on, hang on. Yeah, now, now I have the game. Okay, sorry. Then just very quickly, so this is the... Position. And I can tell you that uh, h4, basically he could have just stayed, and f5 is a very large mistake. Yeah, yeah. That, that I wanted to say that f6 is a very clever move, because with b6, f6, he, he might just... But then he moved f5, yeah, it's n nervousness. Yeah. And then white was completely winning, and then it was a draw again, and then white was winning again. So, like, king c4 is a... It's a bad, bad mistake here. Instead of king c4, b4, and then a4 is just winning for white for some reason. After king c4, uh, uh, g5 now is a draw. Oh, wow. No, okay. Yeah, but it's... g5 and fgf4 apparently holds. And if you manage to trade one pawn, obviously you get more counterplay on the king side. So g5 was a draw. And then after a6, white is completely winning again. And then uh, uh, for... Yeah, and then uh, this is how it. we reached it, yeah. Yeah, and this is how we reached it, yeah. yeah. And uh, the total torture, yeah, and it comes mm. with a check. Yeah. All right, now now back to back to the game. Yeah, King G4, Queen E4 check, yeah. I mean, I'm so happy that we, we covered this game because now we know about this Queen D4 check being the key motive, and also that after white is uh, Combining queen d4 check idea with bringing the king back. Yeah. Is the right and, way to go. And I, I, I want to say something. Like, you know, Chad, he's not even kidding. You know, he he, he actually is very, very happy. Who? <laughs> you. Ah, I'm, I'm super happy. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm not playing chess anymore, but, uh, but I'm very happy about everything that yeah. is chess related. I wanted to just... Queen e5 check. Yeah, and also, I, I feel like, you know, whoever watches our broadcast also got much more clever. Yeah, Th thanks to our chat. Oh, Th thanks I to mean, the players. With this, I'm not entirely sure, <laughs> sure about. But... Well, whoever wants to be super clever should should study the, the table base very carefully then, yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. Now we are seeing that... Uh, the, the king has moved to h4. King h4 has been played. Mm -hmm. Trying to escape. Trying to, I think, mainly confuse your opponent because, like, I don't know, it really does anything. Queen h2, I guess. Or queen h2, queen h3, maybe, yeah. Queen e1, yeah. He is actually very carefully now not allowing... The queen uh, to interfere, yeah? The queen to interfere at all, yeah. He is not giving a... If he has a choice, he is not giving any checks which allow uh, 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 for the white queen to interpose, which is a smart choice. Hang on, I had a, I had a queen and game with each pawn against San Segundo, Pablo San Segundo in my very first Olympiad in, in, mm. in Moscow. I don't think, I remember it was played on forever, but I don't remember, oh no, it was against Gerhard Hertnack, against Germany. I think I, I had the H pawn and it was 150 moves. And probably it was a draw. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, this kind of queen and games you always play on forever. The h pawn it gives, of course, much less chances. I, I think it was against Gerhard Hertnack, yeah, in, um, in Moscow. Queen e1 check, king h5 played. So queen e5 check will be played automatically because just in case you mm -hmm. are hoping for some c fold repetition at some point. I guess queen e5 check has been played because Rasmus has made his move. No, not yet. King is on, queen is on e1. Queen is on e1. Yeah, I, I see how, how much I'm driving you crazy yeah, with my excitement about this position. Yeah? Not, um, no, no, I just, I just wanted to uh, 
Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, actually, the, to, to be honest, the position does not drive me. I mean, it does not excite me so much, but it's, it's much more that it's German against Italy and, uh, and the importance of this game. That, that's what carries me. I think he actually claimed the draw, people are saying. I think oh, he wow, saying, he, he claimed the draw, but... I how think did... he's saying Queen E5 will be a threefold. Ah, hang on. Okay, then then let's. Yeah, it looks let's like it's correct look. as well. Yeah, I can see three of them already. Yeah. Yeah, one. We are saved. Two. <laughs> saved, I tell you. Yes, queen e five three times. Okay, and and this is gonna be a correct claim at, <laughs> at least as as we see. Yeah. So. Wow, I mean, what, what a relief for all of us, and of course, mainly for Germany and 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 Jan Gustafsson, and the teammates. Yeah, but I mean, we could if if the PGM is now correct, I can see it. I can see it very clearly on our screen that there will be a third a third time he goes queen e five check. So yeah, very very nicely saved in the end for uh, for Rasmus, who um, I mean, sort of created all this trouble for himself. But these pawn endings, if we go back, like while while we're waiting on our screens for them to confirm, it's a ah, uh, hang on, the arbiter is coming back. Ah, oh, yeah, there there you yeah, have it. Yeah, and the handshake. We have just seen the handshake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, confirmed draw. I mean, we learned a lot. We have witnessed all the drama, everything. Yeah. And now our watch has ended. And and Peter, do you do you still want to study the phone end game or just leave it? Yeah, no, yeah let's really just not. leave it. Let let's say that it was an incredible really. scene and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we will somehow make sure that. Uh, Actually, that would be actually kind of bad. We have to do it privately. I was going to say I can maybe tweet uh, the match we chose to be captains of and our lineups. But I think me tweeting our lineups <laughs> gives gives some hint of what we think is correct, which I think is kind of interfering with the Olympiad. So that would be incorrect. But uh, we will make a record of it. And we promise not to lie to you about what we will uh, decide on. So yeah, this will this will continue. Uh, yeah, and I think we will always pick uh, the match number one, right? That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, probably makes sense for yeah. us to, to always pick the first match. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, this show. Tomorrow is a rest day. I don't know if there is a Bermuda party planned for either tonight or tomorrow, but I think it's planned for today. It, it was written yeah, normally in the regulation. Today, yeah, yeah. To have to have people, you know, to, to give people a chance to recover from the hangovers and everything. So it's it's very important. Uh, so yeah, good luck. Good luck to all the people participating. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching us, and uh, we will be back after the rest day with full, full, fully charged energies. Absolutely. See you there. Yeah. Bye bye. 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 Field is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 Nidorov. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. No, it's just to move.